meeting. Uh, sustained. What was the, what was the first act? Objection asked and answered. Sustained. Um, how do you remember the first act of violence? Uh, well, you never forget it. That's how I remember it. It changes your life forever. You never forget the first time someone hits you like that. I just had the date wrong. Okay. And how, do, how is it that you think you got the date wrong? Objection calls for speculation. Overruled. Um, I'm embarrassed to say I think I would have liked to have believed that the period of time in which I had to fall in love with Johnny, in which we fell in love, and he was sober, and he wasn't violent to me, lasted for a lot longer than it did. I think I would have liked to have believed that I, I wasn't hit so early in the relationship and still stayed. He was also sober for a period in 2012, which was a peaceful time for us, in which we fell in love. So I had kind of allowed myself, I guess, uh, to forget that the beginning of that period, 2012, before he got sober was, was really violent and chaotic as well. I, I, I'm embarrassed to say that. Now, you testified that the police were called multiple times. Other than the May 21, 2016, what other occasions were there where the police were called? They were called in December of 2011. They were called in 2012. Uh, they were called uh, in 2013 in March by the landlord. Um, they, I had sought advice from Laurel Anderson as to whether I should call the police. Objection, hearsay. Sustain. Okay. When you filed the domestic violence temporary restraining order, how many acts of abuse did you allege at that time? Uh, I gave the last couple, I believe, okay. last two uh, incidents, maybe three. And why didn't you tell of all the acts of abuse at that time? I was following advice from my counsel. Okay. How many instances of abuse were included in the UK trial? Uh, there were 14 acts of physical abuse and violence and three acts of sexual abuse. Violence. And why were those 17 included in the UK trial? Uh, well, I was not a party, um, a direct party. I was a witness, so it was whatever their counsel, uh, the Sun Council chose. When is the first time you were called upon to provide a detailed accounting of as many times as you could recall of physical and sexual abuse by Mr. Depp? Objection hearsay. I don't, that's not hearsay, Your Honor. I'm asking her when she was called upon to do well, so. Well, the objection is hearsay. Right, but it's not offered to prove the truth of the matter asserted, and it's just asking for date. All right, overrule. Thank you. Uh, a few months ago. February in 2022, this year, um, was the first time I was asked to, to do so, other than a cold in a deposition. Okay. And when you were asked to provide those, what did you do to be able to prepare that accounting, that full accounting? Well, I had the benefit of my therapist. Objection, notes. hearsay. So, uh, uh, Your Honor, she's not saying what the therapist okay. said. I'm just I'll, asking. I'll overrule the objection. Thank you. Go, go ahead. I looked at my therapist notes. I had the benefit of those notes, which we had received in February, uh, as well as I reviewed calendars, photos, text messages, my journals, my diaries, um, of which there were many. I put all of those together. It took a lot of time um, to be able to, you know, adequately refresh my recollection and fill in the details uh, over the course of the five years we were together. And. What did you do when you put that all together? I, um, I kind of filled in uh, and, and collected all of these various pieces of information um, and gave a fuller account as best I could uh, for each uh, incidence of violence that I had record of. Um, I think it was called an interrogatory. In this case? In this case, all right. excuse did me. Did you sign that under oath? I did. Okay, and it was provided to counsel for Mr. Depp? It was. Okay. Uh, and was it a pretty lengthy document? It was far too long. Okay. 
And how, how is it that you didn't just remember all of those events like this? That's, that's not how your memory or my memory works. You know, we were together for five years, almost four and a half. And uh, it was a very violent, chaotic, at times very loving, emotional uh, uh, relationship. So as, as anyone can imagine, there was a lot going on. And uh, unfortunately, the violence became almost normal, it, especially towards the end. It was just, it, it's, it's hard to even, it's hard to say that now, but the violence was almost normal. And you know, your brain does with trauma what it does, puts it away best you can. So I was, I was, um, frankly, I was shocked to see um, a lot of the information presented to me um, through my therapist notes because she was taking them. Objection, in real time. Your Honor. Hearsay. All right, I'll sustain her objection. Okay, we'll we'll move past the ther what the therapist said in her notes. Okay, now there's one more. You also provided a declaration in this case early on. Do you recall that trying to move the case to California? Yes, there was a declaration in 2019. All right, and did you describe some of the events of violence in that declaration? Objection, leading. Uh, what, if anything, was said about violent acts in that declaration? I was taking the advice of my counsel. We had to, it was to get it moved, I believe. Okay. And, and was there, uh, did you include all of them? No. Objection leading. Uh, Thank and, you. No, I did not include all of the incidents of violence. That was not the point of making this declaration. I, we were making this declaration in effort to move it to California because as hard as it is to go through this sort of trial um, as it is, it's even harder to do so in a place that neither Johnny nor I are connected to. Okay. Now, you testified earlier uh, about guitars and you said you've never played a guitar. Uh, have you ever played a guitar player in a movie? You could say I posed with a guitar. I. Uh, it turns out I am an unteachable. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm, I'm going to take you to the tape recordings. Why did you and Mr. Depp start taping each other? Well, at first it was, not at first, it was meant to be a, um, a way to get to the heart of our, some of our communication issues uh, in order to do, to, to discover in a therapeutic fashion kind of what was, some of our issues in our communication. Okay. Now, we heard an audio tape earlier during this trial in which you said the word couch repeatedly. Can you please explain to the jury what that meant? Yes. Um, couch was a word that we had been uh, given that we decided upon, rather. Um, Objection hearsay. Just tell me what, tell us what Mr. Depp said about this. Uh, that it, it was a safe word. It was meant to be a safe word, like a word, uh, like truce, uh, where you put down the proverbial guns and you say, truce, we're not fighting anymore. Couch was supposed to be a word that you used, or that we used as a truce. I don't want to fight anymore. You win. Let's, let's stop this. That was the mention of couch, which you heard earlier in a recording. Now, what, if any, discussions did you have with Mr. Depp about uh, threatening to divorce each other or threatening to leave? Objection calls for hearsay to I'm the extent it calls for misheard statements. I'm asking for discussions with Mr. Depp. It's still her Just tell us what Mr. Depp said. Don't tell us what you said. Can you repeat the question? I'm yeah. Sorry. Yes. What did Mr. Depp say in your discussions about the use of the term threatening to divorce or threatening to leave each other. Objection leading. Overrule. Uh, well, Johnny would always say uh, the only way out of this was death. But in fights, in, in particularly heated ones, uh, we had found, you know, we were using divorce in the fight, um, in some of our heated fights. 
Uh, we tried not to, um, but that kind of deteriorated after the December f incident that I got beat up pretty badly in. And after that point, it was used a lot more often. Okay. Now, March 26, 2015, this is after the Aus first Australia trip and after the staircase incident. I'm going to ask, Michelle, can you bring up DEP Exhibit 371A? This is a tape recording, and it's going to be at 1 minute, 1 colon 01 to 2 colon 29. Could you say that times again? I'm yes, it's uh, 1 colon 01 to 2 colon 29. And if we could, I, I don't know whether you had turned up that volume. I know it's what, hard to hear these. Is this in evidence already? Um, th this, I, I'm moving it into evidence, Your Honor, but these are the tape recordings between the two, which I think we had agreed. Is there any objection to 371A? Your Honor, if you just give me a moment to okay, confirm sure. there's no other voices. It's not in evidence, Your Honor, okay. so could you please confirm that there are no other voices? This is, I will confirm that, okay. this, right. and it's Depp's exhibit, right. it's Mr. So Depp's exhibit. Plaintiff's 371A then, any objection? No objection. Okay. 371A in evidence, thank you. And we may need to, Sammy, if I could just, if you listen, we may need to turn that volume up. Sometimes your control is a little bit better than what we have, Max. that lashes out in a different medium every time. So if it's Adderall Junkie Johnny, then he's abusive and he's a bully and he's a tyrant and he's mean, and he's reactionary and he's incendiary and anything I do and say is cause for violence or anger. If I speak to him honestly, bluntly from the heart, I'm yelling at him. If I argue back with him, then I'm abusive. If I don't say anything, then I am um, dismissive or absent or what's wrong or somewhere else. If I engage with him, I'm part of the problem. I'm the problem, either way. That's the guy who's on a bunch of fucking speed. What did you mean when you were saying that to Mr. Depp? That no matter, my perception was that no, no matter what I did, no matter what I did to de-escalate, walk away from him, to confront him, to try to, nothing I did made a difference. Nothing I did changed his rage at me. Nothing I did changed the violence towards me. Nothing I did calmed him down. And I was constantly doing a juggling act of what kind of version of Johnny I was dealing with. There were different versions of him and they were drastically different from one another and even more so than them being different from one another. They didn't even sometimes remember what the other version did or said. They acted almost like independent versions of this person, depending on what combination of drugs and alcohol he was on. That's what I was trying to express to him. It's just the futility of me responding and successfully and the futility of trying to constantly negotiate with him uh, and the substances he was on at the time. I'm gonna take you to April 15, 2015 the premiere of When I Live My Life Over Again. Uh, what, if anything, did you do for that premiere? I believe that premiere was in New York City. It was a small independent film I, I shot. I went back to New York to uh, attend the premiere. Michelle, can you bring up Defendant's Exhibit 421, please? 
does this accurately depict the scene portrayed in this picture? Yes. Your Honor, I'm going to move the admission of Defendant's Exhibit 421. Any objection? No objection. All right, 421 in evidence. May we publish, publish to, the jury? to the jury? Thank you. Amber, could you please describe for the jury what this picture is? Uh, that is a picture of me a, a few months, I believe this is April of 2015, so it's a few months after the March incident that happened in Australia. Uh, early, yeah, early March, in which uh, Johnny held me down on the countertops and my arms were cut on the glass um, and, and in that we, attack. And if we could draw attention to your arm there, uh, are those scars? The, what what uh, are those? Please describe for the jury what those are. Those are scars that I obtained while Johnny was um, strangling me and assaulting me on the countertop in Australia. Michelle, can you bring up Defendant's Exhibit 423, please? And does this accurately portray the scene shown? Uh, yes. That's, uh, oh, hold on a second. I'm going yes. to move the admission of Defendant's 423, please. No objection. 423 in evidence. Thank publish. you. May we publish? All right, and please describe to the jury what this shows. Uh, it is a picture of me on a red carpet. Um, you can see my scars. Um, even though I have makeup on them, they're a bit harder to cover okay. because they're rather fresh. Okay. Now, after this, in April of 2015, you returned to Australia with Mr. Depp, did you not? Objection leading. Overruled, I'll allow it. Thank you. Uh, yes, we did. Okay, and and tell the jury about that trip. Well, after after Johnny was able to get clean off of the coke and the other drugs enough to get the hand surgery he needed, there commenced a period of time of sobriety for Johnny. He uh, his doctor had fired him and then came on when Johnny agreed to get clean. Objection, so hearsay, non-responsive. Uh, don't don't say what I mean. We've already had your honor. We've already had the testimony from Dr. Kipper, but don't say what Dr. Kipper did. Just just tell the other part. Just don't say what somebody else said. Okay? So there was this period of sobriety after that, um, and Johnny was very committed to being clean and sober. And I thought we had finally done it. We finally did it. We were through it, and it, we were never going back, meaning it was he was going to be clean and sober for good this time. And we had a wonderful period of, you know, we fell back in love, or deeper in love than we were before, it seemed. If things were so good. We were talking about a future again. We were talking about having kids. I, I mean, when Johnny wasn't using it, it was so peaceful. We had such a we had a good time together. We went back to Australia like that in that state, and had a few months. We even had my parents come and visit us in Australia, and we were talking about babies and about buying a, a farm and you know buy, looking for homes in California. And we were in a really beautiful, peaceful period. It was wonderful. It was wonderful. Now, how did you did you stay at the same place that you did the earlier time? In Australia? We went back to a very remodeled version of that home. I mean, remodeled. Very cleaned up version of that home. Uh, same walls, same structure, but looked a bit different, as you can imagine. How, how did you feel going back to that home, given what had happened in March, early March? You know, the, the, home, the home isn't the problem. You know, you're, if you're living... Oh. In domestic violence, you don't just not go home. You know, you don't just not go into the kitchen just because you were slapped in that kitchen. People living in domestic violence live in their homes. It, it's that's almost, you know, the home isn't the problem. That's the normal part of your home. And for me, you know, Johnny was my home. Where we were a couple was my home. Um, and that home was often really violent. It, but it wasn't the the structure itself. It was Johnny. And when we went back to Australia, that home, Johnny, 
was in a, a completely different, you know, he had done a complete 180, clean, sober, present, calm. We were peaceful. I mean, and any of the, the gripes and the problems that he seemed to have about me um, went away when he was sober. And so we had a really, we, we managed to go back to that same house, but in a very different way. It felt very different. June 16, 2015, the Magic Mike tour. Where did you go for that tour? While I was in Australia, I got the call for that press tour and went to Europe for the press tour for that movie. And, um, you know, I was nervous because problems arise when I'm having to work, when I leave. Objection non responsive. No well, I'll sustain the objection. Okay. Next question. Michelle, can you please bring up Defendant's Exhibit 447? I'm going to ask you first, does this accurately portray the scene depicted? Yes. Your Honor, I'm going to move the admission of Defendant's Exhibit 447. No objection. 447 in evidence. You can publish. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And Michelle, if you could zoom in just a little bit closer. Amber, could you tell the jury about this picture? Uh, yes, that's me on the red carpet um, promoting the Magic Mike movie I was in. Um, you can see the scars on my body, on my arms. Okay. You can't see everything, of course, but... Okay. And, D Michelle, can you bring up Defendant's Exhibit 449? And Amber, does this accurately depict the scene portrayed? Uh, yes, it does. Your Honor, I'm going to move the admission of defendants 449. No objection. All right, 449 in evidence. Okay. And Amber, could you please describe to the jury what this portrays? Uh, this is, uh, you can see the scars on my arm from that attack. Uh, also around this time, um, it, Johnny was calling me on the on the phone before and after, you know, while I was doing these press events. And sometimes I would be on the phone with him, um, kind of managing a accusations about why I didn't pick up sooner, didn't text back sooner. And um, sometimes I actually on this tour many times uh, had to delay getting out of the car or objection non responsive. I'll, I'll ask that. How did Mr. Depp react to your going on this press tour? Uh, he, he was very upset with me. I just remember crying on the phone with him a lot and having to hang up to do, go, do press events. All right. Thank you. Now, I'm going to take you to the Southeast Asia train trip. That was your honeymoon trip, correct? Yes, it was. Okay. And that was July 25, 2015? Yes, no. it was. Okay. Michelle, I'm going to ask you to bring up Plaintiff's Exhibit 162. It's already into evidence. Now, Mr. McGivern testified that he took this picture in July of 2013. Would you agree Objection with that? Objection misstates prior testimony. I, that's exactly what he testified to. It was it Malcolm. Wasn't, it I, wasn't. I, I have the transcript. I don't know. Go ahead and ask your it's question. It's Mr. McConnelly. Is that is that correct? Uh, I believe I, I believe Malcolm Connolly took this on on the Eastern. I mean, on the Orient Express. Malcolm Connolly, not Travis McGivern. I believe it was Malcolm on that trip with us. Yes. Okay. And was it in 2013 or was it 2015? It was in 2015. Okay. July. Um, and. Please describe, if you can, what transpired during this trip. Well, the, uh, the train trip itself uh, was, was peaceful um, up until Johnny wanted to start drinking brown alcohol. He had already started drinking champagne when I returned from the press tour. That's what he was, he was drinking wine and champagne. Um, and um, when I, when he rapped on Pirates 5, the plan was for us to do this honeymoon. 
I, you know, I was walking a bit on eggshells because I know a pattern, but I was not wanting to accept that it was, that we had gone back um, to a pattern at all. And so we were on this train uh, and on the last night we were on the train, um, after this was taken, this photo, um, Johnny and I got in an argument about him wanting to be allowed, meaning wanting him, him wanting me to agree to him drinking um, liquor uh, and being okay with it. And uh, an argument followed that in the um, in our di in our sleeping car. Uh, Johnny uh, slapped me across the face and held me up by the kind of got a hold of my neck and pushed me up against the wall of the um, cart. Uh, it was a small, a narrow sleeper cart, and there were two beds, one on each side. He had me up against the wall um, while he was standing on the floor in between the beds, and I was on the bed kind of half kneeling, half standing, trying to get his arms off my neck, and he was squeezing my neck against the railway car for what felt like a very long time, and every time he kind of would pull me away from the side of the car, he'd slam me up against my slam me up against the wall and I remember looking down at him and trying to get his arms off of my neck uh, and I remember thinking that he could he could not even mean to kill me you know I remember being scared that he wouldn't even mean to do it and kind of looking down at him because I was a uh, slightly above him uh, as he was standing on on the ground and um, kind of clawing at him, trying to get him to, you know, his arms away from my neck. Um, I remember I had, um, uh, at one point, he ripped the top of my shirt. I don't really remember what it was, but I remember I had a breast expo exposed. At some point, I um, pull at his lapel of his shirt, and he rips the shirt off of him and wraps it around my neck. And um, that's how I woke up the next morning, actually. I woke up with it still around my neck and with um, a giant knot in the back of my head. Did, did you keep a diary at that time? Yes, I did. Michelle, can you bring up Defendant's Exhibit 461? Objection here, say. Uh, it, it is a diary, Your Honor, and I will just ask her some questions about it rather than trying to admit it into evidence at this point. All right. Uh, um, I'll wait for the question. Go ahead. What, if uh, anything, do you recall about recording what transpired on that train? Objection here, say. I'm just asking her whether she did. I'm not asking what she recorded. All right, I'll allow it. Go ahead, overrule. I wrote about what happened that night the next morning. Thank you. Now, was did Mr. Depp suffer any injuries on that trip? Not that I saw. I have a lot of pictures from that trip, and he's uninjured. Okay, thank you. You can take that down, Michelle. Thank you. Now. I'm going to keep you in July of 2015, and Michelle, I'm going to ask you to bring up Depp Exhibit 390A. It's a recording, and I'm going to be asking about from 3 colon 30 to 4 colon 12. I'm going to move the admission, Your Honor. It's another recording between Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd. There's nobody else in it's there. It's plaintiff's, what number was it? It's plaintiff's, it's uh, 390A. Okay. Any objection to 390A? Um, I'm sorry, Your Honor. Okay. May we approach? Okay. Any objection then? No objection. All right, 390A in evidence. I saw you doing it earlier, whatever. 
it's fine, it's secretive, it's deceitful. You already fucking, you got, you had trouble with me before when you said to me that you didn't feel like you were told when I was recording you. So please stop. You, I, you didn't. Please tell. stop. You did not tell me. Please stop. Fucking acknowledge what I'm saying before you keep making demands. You are not a school okay. teacher. Shut okay. the fuck up. Doesn't Listen to up. me and then you can fucking respond. Understand? You ain't nobody's fucking mom. You ain't no school teacher. Don't fucking pretend to be authoritative with me. Okay, fine. You don't exist. What, what were you discussing in that call? Um, we were discussing uh, whether or not it was all right uh, to record each other without the other's permission. And... Uh, Johnny said it didn't matter anymore, the requirement of, of, of that permission from me. I was trying to say, hey, we agreed. Okay. Let's go to August 2015. Please describe your relationship with Mr. Depp in that time frame. You said August? August 2015. Uh, August 2015 was a very difficult time following the brief honeymoon we had. Uh, I, it, Johnny's use continued, well, started again is a better way to describe it. And lo and behold, so did our disagreements, uh, coincidentally, not, co not coincidentally. Um, I got an offer to do a job, which was already a problem or problematic. Um, I was considering working on a, a TV series that had James Franco in it. I was asked if I would meet with the, the, the people who are making the show. Objection hearsay. It's not offered to prove the truth of the matter, so Over, overruled. Thank you. And um, so I was considering taking that job, and it, it, there was a possibility it would require brief nudity, um, which I knew I would have to negotiate down, but uh, obviously that was a problem for Johnny, didn't want me to do that, didn't want me to work. And, um, and, and frankly, I needed to. And uh, there was another film I had coming out that I had previously shot, it was called London Fields. It was a source of a lot of fighting between us because of the sexuality in the role uh, it was a constant negotiation between myself and the filmmakers. They made a film, and Johnny heard, told me that he had heard about it, was unhappy with some of what he had heard. He was unhappy with me having done a sex scene in it that he claimed I didn't tell him about. I did not actually film the scene he was speaking of. Um, he demanded that we watch the, a, a screener of it, which is a, a like a a version of the film before it's released. We got one sent to where we were at the time, Johnny Chateau in France. It's in a remote part of France. And once again, we're in this remote place and we're screening this film that I appeared in and there was a scene, a sex scene in that movie uh, that started um, before um, Johnny freaked out uh, because it, it looked like me. It, it, they had used a body double uh, un unbeknownst to me, without my permission, they used a body double to do a sex scene. So I have an incredibly jealous man who already uh, is upset with me for breaking the rule that I had a sex scene. On top of that, I'm telling him it wasn't me. I didn't shoot that scene. And you can imagine um, how upset he was. He was um, irate and was calling me a liar, a whore, among other things. And we had this that combined with the fact that I had even entertained doing this job that involved James Franco was a, a, a pressure cooker. Um, I called it a week of hell uh, later. I, Objection hearsay. Overruled. I, um, Johnny at one point um, slapped me in the face in our bedroom in the chateau that we were staying in. Um, at another moment, he uh, punched me across the jaw uh, at one point, um, 
he kind of either pushed or, or, or threw. It's hard to describe to you which of those two it is because I, I, I can't tell you. I just know I went flying into this old church furniture. Uh, I later thought I had a concussion. Uh, it was the first time I thought I, I, I had sustained a concussion. Um, and that's, I wrote about it later. Now, did, did there come a time in this time frame that you found a folder on Mr. Depp's computer? Yes. What was it labeled? It uh, was on Johnny's um, opening page, his desktop. It said, no fun for JD, in all caps. And what was in that folder? Uh, it was a pic it was a collection of pictures of me from various red carpets, starting on the press tours that I had been on, um, where I zoomed in pictures of what he thought was, you know, like inappropriate clothing, side boob, cleavage. Anytime I moved, and objection calls for speculation. All right, I'll sustain as to okay. what she believes it was. Okay, what pictures were in that folder that we have seen today? The ones I saw of the uh, kind of rose gold, gold dress and the red dress were both in that file. Now, what, if anything, did Mr. Depp say to you or ask you about how you got those cuts on your arms? Nothing. What, if anything, has Mr. Depp ever said to you or asked you about any injuries that you've sustained over those years? Johnny's obviously never asked me how I got any of those scars. Did you ever witness Mr. Depp uh, self-injuring himself? Uh, often. He did that often. Please tell the jury about that. What did he do? I first started, um, uh, I first started, <laughs> I can't tell you what I told my therapist, but um, I almost called 911 in New York in 2014, August of 2014, I believe, um, because I thought he had done himself an injury. He often, in fights, would cut his arms um, or hold a knife to his chest or um, draw blood superficially, superficially at first, but uh, later, like in 2016, especially as our relationship was ending, um, oh, he also put cigarettes out on himself. Um, he'd flick them at me um, and once or twice tried to put one out on me, but mostly he would do it while screaming at me. Uh, he once did it right in front of me, screaming um, at, at my face as he, as he put the cigarette out on his cheek. Now, I'm going to take you to September 15, 2015, and Michelle, if we can bring up a DEP exhibit, that's Plaintiff's Exhibit 345A. And this is another audio recording, and it's 5 colon 54 to 7 colon 55. I'd like to move the admission, Your Honor. Right. Any objection? No objection. All right, 345A in evidence. Thank you. If you can play, Michelle, please. I was going to pour you one. I'm not alcoholic. You should. I don't have any control over how much you drink. But you don't have any control over whether I tell you the truth or not. Have you changed lately? Yeah, you've changed. Yeah. Well, your truth is really interesting, too. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm All the right. first the person that's one, noticed. Please, so I can go downstairs. Okay. Yes. You're a escape route. I see. Escape. What you got? Oh, of course. Fifteen minutes, just like last time. Fifteen. Just like last time. When you, I had to pull you out of the bathroom. Well, when you passed out naked in the bathroom in there. Did you pull me out? I tried to. Really? Yeah. Oh, did you get inside? I didn't get inside. Well, By pounding on the door, waking up every 15 minutes, and then falling asleep next to the door, oh. if I could hear you snoring, in case that you vomited, I could call EMS if you ever stop snoring. Because you're afraid if I, I was going to die. I thought you would choke on your own vomit, which is very likely with you. Really? Yes. Very likely. Do I vomit a lot? Yes. What? Yes, you do vomit a lot in your sleep. Even really? Oh, it's news to you? 
then this is affecting you a lot more than I thought it was. <laughs> that be so good. I hope. I hope so. What? You don't vomit a lot? Are you going to tell me that? Look me in the eye. Tell me you don't vomit a lot. You're always with me. At least one minute. You try to come. Please explain to the jury what the issue was in this particular tape recording. Well, <clears throat> Johnny at the time was um, wanting to go and uh, drink uh, downstairs at a bar and um, we were talking about 15 minutes because the last several times he had done that, it had been days and he'd disappear on a bender, get really sick. And you know the drill by now, having heard enough of, from me. Um, so another issue that we were having at the time or that he was having at the time that affected me is that he would pass out and vomit. And vomited very, very regularly at this stage. He was obviously drinking again. I'd given up fighting with him on that at that stage. And what I had a habit of doing is uh, turning him over onto his side so he doesn't choke on his own vomit. Um, it's very common for people who do that to asphyxiate, at least that's what I understood. So the advice I got was to turn him to his side, put a pillow underneath his back and turn his, his head so that he didn't asphyxiate. And uh, one time I was doing that and he swung at me and um, I told medical. And the advice, after I got their advice, I realized I can't say what the advice was, but after I got that advice, I stopped doing that I tried to, as much as I could, leave him uh, and just be ready, ready to call 911 or help if I heard him choking. Uh, and sometimes that happened behind bathroom doors. Well, and that's going to take me to September 27, 2015. Again, Depp, that's Plaintiff's Exhibit 356A, and the recording is 3107 to 3230. I'm going to move the admission, Your Honor. Any objection to that? No objection. All right. 36, 356 A in evidence. Thank Plaintiffs. you, Your Honor. Michelle, thank you. Why? And that you punched me in the You're fucking right. thing and you, you in the face. Up. And you said, no, fuck it. No, I didn't. What the fuck are you talking about? And I, I watched you lie. You. And then I, I didn't punch you, and by the way. You, I'm sorry that I didn't uh, you, uh, uh, punch hit you. Me across the face in a proper slap, but I was hitting you. It was not punching you. Babe, you're not punched. Don't tell me what it feels like to be punched. You, no, you, you've been a lot of fights, been around a long time. I don't know. Yeah, no, right? when you fucking have a closed you fist. You get punched. You got hit. I'm sorry I hit you like this, but I did not punch you. I did not fucking deck you. I fucking was hitting you. you I don't know what me. the po motion of my actual hand was, but you're fine. I did not hurt you. I did not punch you. I was hitting you. How are your toes? How, what am I supposed to do? Do this? How are your I, toes? I'm not sitting here bitching about it, am I? You are. Oh, That's the difference you between me toes. and you. You're a fucking baby. Because you start you physical fights? You are such a baby! Because you, the fuck off, Because you start me. physical fights? I did start a physical fight. Yeah, you did, so I had because, to get the fuck out of there. Yes, you did. So you did the right thing, the big thing. The, you know what? You are admirable. Every single time, what, 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 what's your excuse when there's not a physical fight? Then what's the excuse that you're still being admirable, right? Just by running away? Amber, please explain to the jury what's transpiring in that audio recording, what that's about. Well, there's, there's two different, there's two different situations that we're referencing in this fight two different altercations between Johnny and I involving the door. The first of which, which we first start talking about, where I'm talking about hitting him, I am talking about, uh, the what that conversation is about is about the disparity, uh, uh, this, the disparity between Johnny and I in our physical fights, the disparity of how he would proactively punch me and I would have to resort to reactively hitting him I am talking about the difference between a punch, which Johnny did often, and me having to hit him in my defense. 
I know the difference between those two, and I'm highlighting the difference between those two, even if he wasn't twice my size. They're very different, and that's what I'm pointing out to him. The situation that that involved, the context of that, is it happened in our bedroom up in, in Penthouse 3. You've heard us talk about that place. And I was trying to shut a door, our bedroom door, actually. I was trying to barricade myself behind this door, and Johnny was trying to get through the door. He was using his body and his limbs to try to bust through the door as I was trying to keep it closed because I knew what he would do to me when he got to me on the other side. And I was hitting his arms, uh, his, his, his arms, his body, as he was trying to, to prevent me from closing the door. Uh, and that is a, a separate incident that we later talk about in the second half of that recording where we're talking about my toes. That involved a different incident which was a bathroom door. And it was one of those ones that he was passing out in. And I could hear him passing out, or what it sounded like to me behind a closed door is passing out. I heard a thud, I heard a lot of commotion, I heard a glass break. And I hear what sounds like his body uh, falling against the bathroom door. I open it to check on him as I was accustomed to doing at that time. Johnny violently reacted to me opening the door, pushed it against me, it ran up over my toes, and he angrily came around the side of the door, swinging at me. I in naturally pushed the door off of my feet, responding to the pain, and also to the awareness, the knowledge that he was coming for me. Johnny later um, denied, well, later he blamed me in his inability to understand what happened in that he was not in his right mind and he misunderstood that interaction and tried to blame me for starting a, a, a physical fight between us. And he even later went so far as to say, I wasn't even going to hit you. And um, that, was the, that was the second door. I only, can, I, I only could respond by trying to take accountability for my actions in it, what he understood my actions were, and my interpretation and what I'm trying to say to him is, look, I can only do my best to respond. I was in pain, I was scared, and I can't promise you that when I'm scared and in pain, I won't react thinking I know very well what our situation is and what's gonna happen to me should I not react. Thank you. So. Let's, I'm going to play another clip from that same discussion, and Your Honor, it will be Plaintiff's Exhibit Depths 356B, we will call that, and it would be from 1 colon 29 colon 27 to 1 colon 30 colon 07, and I'd like to move the admission. All right, any objection? No objection, Your Honor. All right, 356B in evidence. Thank you, Your Honor. Michelle. <laughs> I can't promise you that I'll be perfect. I can't promise you I won't get physical again. God, I fucking sometimes get so mad, I lose it. I can fucking promise you I'm gonna do everything to change. I promise you, I'm not gonna throw around divorce. I will not say divorce unless I leave you. Unless it's it. And then I hope you leave me. I'm not going to, and me too, I will leave you. It's fair, I can't do it. You know, and I think honestly, if we hold each other accountable to that, it's fair. Please explain to the jury what was going on in that part of the discussion. That, that's the same conversation um, where I am, as I was accustomed to doing, I'm taking as much responsibility uh, as I had to in those interactions. I have to, you know, in my relationship with Johnny, and as you have to, and somebody will not and cannot take any accountability for anything they do in a fight, as Johnny couldn't and wouldn't, um, I took on as much as I could for myself. Um, you know, I had the whole relationship been blamed for everything, for his drinking, for him hitting me, for everything in between, blamed for walking away, blamed for staying, and I blamed myself as well. Um, blame myself for my part in it, wait, blame myself for staying, blame myself for putting up with it. And frankly, at a certain point, it's easier to take the blame, feels easier. It's, it almost feels better to take the blame for something than to accept 
the senseless nature of the violence you can't change. You know, there's almost, it's almost more reassuring to take accountability for it than to accept the senseless nature of the violence that you can't change no matter what you do, no matter what I did. No matter what I did, it still hit me. I'm now going to take you to October 5, 2015, and you're on her plaintiff's exhibit, Deb's exhibit 393A. It's another recording, 2 colon 40 to 3 colon 43. Move the admission. No objection. All right, 393A, plaintiff's in evidence. What the matter is, Joni, they don't know. None of your friends, whether they saw a tiny fraction, that was the tip of an iceberg. A tip of an iceberg. That was my reaction to, yet again, this happening. That is the tip of the iceberg. And if you want to use that as some sort of like mental excuse or validation of, of whatever, of telling your friends or whatever they think or whatever they think about me or whatever, fine. But they only saw a tip of an iceberg. None of your friends Let me ask you and a none of this team have actually been there for one of our fights. They've never oh, actually that's seen. Not, that's not true. Really? Have they been in the hallway? Yeah. They've have they seen? <laughs> Baby, that is absolutely not true. They have not heard everything. Nathan because could fucking you, quote us. Great, he can quote a part of it, but he has not been there. No one has actually been there for a, a, a fight in its entirety. No, how could they? No, exactly. So stop using that as some sort of excuse. Like they see, they know, they work for you, or they're your friends. That Please explain to the jury what you were discussing in that conversation. Um, Johnny would often use the fact that his, you know, paid employees, his loyal staff, would back him up in fights, and that they would he would constantly threaten to call them in to validate him. They threaten to call them to come into the room to have them back up him and say that it was, you know, that my yelling or that I'm, I'm at fault, that I'm in the wrong, that it's all me. And he would do that in, in almost all of our fights, especially at 2000, by 2015, that he would call his friends and he'd call his staff in to, to back him up. Um, so that I knew and would accept that I'm at fault and that I'm at, I'm wrong. And that was, you know, what I had to agree to over and over again, just even hope that we could have a conversation at some point in a more therapeutic sense so we could move the conversation along. Um, that, that was his MO, if you will. He'd call people that work for him to back him up. I'm going to take you to Thanksgiving 2015. Could you please just tell the jury, and we'll go through this one relatively briefly, but tell the jury about Thanksgiving and any altercations you had with Mr. Depp on that occasion. Uh, Thanksgiving 2015, we had friends uh, over. Uh, Johnny had Marilyn Manson over, and I had a few of my friends over. We had a son over, and... Um, Maybe um, maybe my father. I'm not entirely sure how long he was there. We had dinner together. Um, Johnny uh, was disappearing with Manson, um, doing coke. This objection is calls for speculation. All right, I'll sustain that objection. How, how do you know he was disappearing with Mr. Manson with coke? Um, it, it, that's what I knew of their relationship at the time. And he objection was calls for speculation. Everybody. I'll sustain the objection. All right. So with he got up for a longer period of time, um, not the normal every five minutes to go to the bathroom kind, but like he just appeared for a long period, longer period of time. And at this stage, I was really um, dependent on recognizing the patterns of what he was. I was reliant on trying to figure out what he was on, what combination he was on, so I knew how to deal with him. It was incumbent you know, on me, um, because it affected my safety, dealing with somebody who was really high, dealing with Johnny high on coke and, and speed, meaning Adderall or some version of that, is different from the opiate Johnny, which is different from the booze Johnny, or a different combination, and there was talk of quaaludes at the time, and Johnny was trying to get it from Objection, Your Honor, non-responsive. I'll sustain the objection, if you want to ask. So I was. Please continue. So I, I wanted to know what I was dealing with. It was important to my safety to know which. Who Objection. Non-responsive. I, I think I, that's why I followed him. 
to, okay. to, to the All right. Your so, Honor. So what did you uh, do I'll next? I'll sustain the objection. Next question. What did you do next? I went upstairs to the apartment, the main apartment, not the apartment that we were celebrating Thanksgiving in, uh, to try to figure out what was going on. And we had an argument that took place downstairs, and I said something to provoke Johnny. I went up the stairs ahead of him um, to get back to the party. Uh, he grabbed me at the top of the stairs, kind of through the stairs, actually, by my shirt. Um, kind of flung me a little bit, but I, I just remember I went into the bedroom, kind of retreated into the bedroom. Uh, I had a glass of wine in my hand at the time, which spilled everywhere and shattered, and I kind of retreated into the bedroom. Um, Johnny came in after me, and there was this um, heavy, like vintage style glass can, uh, d decanter. Uh, he picked up the decanter and hurled it at my head, my face. It missed, uh, thankfully, um, but smashed into a piece of art behind me in the bedroom wall uh, above the bed. I, um, I got uh, past him. I think there might have been a, a bit of shoving. I can't really recall in the sequence of when that happened, but I, went, I wanted to go back downstairs. And uh, I passed my closet. I had to change my shirt. And um, I went back downstairs to the party to finish the evening out. And I put on a, you know, a, a, a face. And we finished the evening with the guests. And then more fighting uh, happened after, afterwards. Okay. So we talked about December 15, 2015, last Thursday, uh, and also the Bahamas over the holidays. Um, but I, I did miss one picture, and Michelle, can you bring up Defendant's Exhibit 518? Amber, does that accurately depict the scene portrayed? Yes, it does. Your Honor, I'd like to move the admission of Defendant's Exhibit 518. No objection. All right, 518, Defendant's in Evidence, you can publish. And this is from December 15, I believe. Could you just please tell the jury what this depicts? Yes, it's... Um, a picture of my Bruce Temple um, and Johnny had his hand on my uh, on part of my face with my face down um, and um, I was punching my head you know, I'm repeatedly punching my head okay. that's what caused that bruise in my temple thank you now we went through the Bahamas before and you returned from the Bahamas sometime late December early January correct Yes. Okay. I'm going to take you to January, February of 2016. Can you please describe to the jury what was going on with you and Johnny in this January time frame after this December 15 and the Bahamas incidents? It, after the Bahamas, um, Johnny's sobriety uh, fell apart. There was just none of it. It was... Um, uh, so he stopped communicating with the medical team that he had hired. Objection calls for speculation. Um, how do you know that? Uh, I was there. Um, they fired him. Objection to calls for hearsay. Team. I'll sustain the objection. Okay. okay. Um, without telling what the medical people did, go ahead and tell what was going on with you and Johnny. Um, yeah, his, uh, his, his mental health, for lack of what it looked like, his mental health was just falling apart is what it looked like. Objection calls for speculation. I'll, I'll, sustain, I'll sustain the objection. What did you observe that led you to believe that his mental health was falling apart? Was objection, Your Honor. Calls for speculation. No, she can say what leading. she observed. I'll sustain the objection as to leading. Next question. What, if anything, did you observe about Mr. Depp's uh, state? He was hallucinating, auditory. Objection calls for speculation. Uh, he, I, I'll sustain the objection. Please, please tell the jury exactly what he was doing that led you to believe he was hallucinating. Objection leading. Sustained. What, if anything, was Mr. Depp doing that would have led you to believe he was hallucinating? Same Sustained. Objection. Sustained. Uh, Sustained. I, what, please describe what Mr. Depp was saying in January of 2016. Uh, he was talking to people who weren't there. 
meaning people who were not in the room. He was communicating with people and sounds and voices that weren't there. I know because I was sometimes in the room and sometimes on the phone with him. And he would tell me I had a conversation with him that I did not have. He would say I said something that I didn't have. He would comment on somebody being in the room behind me that wasn't there. It was terrifying. It was terrifying because, you know, once he, he smashed a board right next to my face and it was unclear to me whether he was even mad at me or he was convinced that the guy he said he saw me with was in the room. I didn't know if he was in, if Johnny felt the man was in the room with us or not at that point. But I remember he, he put his fist through a, white, a whiteboard in the kitchen. He hallucinated right in front of me. And Objection some, calls for speculation. Don't use the word hallucinate. Just Sorry. describe what led you to believe Your that. Your Honor, okay. objection. I'll sustain, I'll sustain the objection. She can testify to what she observed. Please, please. Thank you, Your Honor. Please tell the jury what you Your observed. Your Honor, may we approach? Okay. <laughs> the jury what you observed um, I observed behavior from him that was erratic irrational and didn't seem connected to the reality that we were in okay. now I'm going to take you up to the beginning of February of 2016 okay. February 8 February 9 please tell the jury what transpired then with respect to mr. Depp uh, around this time uh, Johnny was, again, um, behaving in a way that was very scary. It was terrifying. Um, and sometimes he didn't know. Uh, Objection calls for speculation. I think she can describe what she's, what are you, are you describing what you're observing? Yes. Please, okay. Then please continue. Um, in these kind of discussions I would have around this time, early uh, February of 2016, uh, sometimes in the argument, he would accuse me of something. Uh, some person in the room with me that had just walked out or I was hiding, for instance. And sometimes he would hold on to that even when he seemed to have calmed down or come off of whatever bender he was on. and. It was almost as if I had to confront what he, what delusion he had, or what belief he had, or what accusation he made of me, um, in a new fight altogether. You know, sometimes he didn't make it clear to me whether he was mad at me or he knew he was mad at me. It was terrifying uh, because I bore the brunt of it. And at around the eighth or ninth, I got, we were in his suites or compound, the West Hollywood collection of homes that he has. And uh, I got some cryptic texts from him in the early morning hours that scared me. I won't say what I said, but I, I came over to his main house. I believe I'd been across the street. And I slept on the couch. We had some interaction in the morning, which made me fearful. He didn't know whether or not I was fearful he was going to believe that he was angry at me. Even though we weren't fighting, I wasn't fighting with him. I, I had done nothing wrong, but I was really worried that the momentum he was on was going to click into a direction of deciding that he was mad at me and I deserved it. And I was terrified that that was gonna happen. So I was, I had an interaction with him and got really worried about that on the morning of the 10th. All right, Michelle, I'm going to ask you to bring up Defendant's Exhibit 638. It's already admitted in evidence, Your Honor. And this is from February 10, 2016. And I'm going to ask you to play it, Michelle. Ah! Oh, fucker! 
happen. What happened? Nothing happened to you this morning. Yeah, you're right. I just woke up and you were so sweet and nice. We were not even fighting this morning. All I did was say sorry. Did something happen to you this morning? I don't think so. Um, no, that's the thing. You want to see crazy? I'll give you fucking crazy. That's crazy. Oh, you're crazy. Oh, you're crazy. Have you drunk this whole thing this morning? Oh, you got this going. You got this going. I just started it. Oh, really? Yes. Really? See that shit on me? No, the fuck? I didn't. You were smashing shit. Oh, fuck. Why did you videotape this, Amber? Because I knew he wouldn't remember. Objection. I answer speculation. To stay. Rather than what you knew, you can say what you thought. Just tell us why you. I was afraid. It was scary. It's scary. I'm scared. I'm scared they wouldn't remember. Objection calls for speculation. Yeah, no, I, 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 I sustain the objection. All right, so I'm going to now take you up to April 21, 2016, your 30th birthday party. Um, will you please tell the jury what happened that night with respect to, in particular, Mr. Depp? Um, he, <clears throat> uh, at that time, we had a like a fitting that day or the day before, and he missed it, and he was kind of disappearing at that time, um, like at night, um, vaguely saying like meetings. He had meetings, but then he'd be gone for sometimes like two days, and um, just not coming home and that sort of thing. Coming home after a bender, making calls for speculation worse. as to bender. I, I, I don't think that calls for speculation. I'll, I'll sustain the objection. He's gone for two days. Good. And I um, had my, my birthday was coming up and it was, I, or on my birthday I said, well, you know, are you going to uh, make it to my, my birthday party? We had a dinner planned at, at our penthouse. I said it would be important for me if you, if you made it. Objection, hearsay. Not offered to prove the truth of the matter asserted. Thank you. And uh, he uh, told me at some point that day that he had scheduled a business meeting or a, a money meeting, I think he said, maybe, uh, seven, uh, which is around the time my birthday was planned for. It might have been planned for 8 p.m. Um, he, uh, of course, once my party was starting, he wasn't there, um, text me at some point to let me know that he was going to make it, but that he was running late. Um, and that continued throughout my party. We finished dinner. And um, we were cleaning up, and kind of everyone was delaying leaving because we were waiting for to give him an opportunity to show up before it was before everyone left. Um, and he um, he let me, he let me know he was there. Um, you know, I, I I tried to without saying what I said. I tried to give him the impression that I wasn't going to get on him about drinking or anything. I just wanted him to be there. And uh, we had uh, a toast 
we did a, a celebratory toast um, and the guests left and uh, later that evening um, we were in bed and um, I was I had a book and Johnny um, effectively said what what what's your fucking problem now and uh, at the time we were getting advice from therapists without saying what they said um, it was important for me not to make him feel attacked uh, so I chose my words carefully I won't say what I said but I rem I remember being very careful about how I worded what I was feeling um, about my birthday and ha him having missed it uh, an argument um, followed that uh, I um, got up out of bed um, Johnny's side of the bed was closer to the door than mine. I, I remember him blocking the door, blocking me to get out, kind of shoving me down, and we had a, you know, a verbal argument, and then that became a shoving match. I tried to shove him back. Um, I kind of felt myself retreat into the, into the bedroom. At some point, he um, picked up, a, a, like, a large, I guess it's a magnum size, not a normal size, a large size uh, bottle of champagne and hurled it at me. Um, this time it went through a painting and I, I loved this painting. I remember it just went like right through the canvas, left a giant hole in it. And um, I remember thinking we shouldn't have art in our bedroom anymore. Um, and uh, the, the fight, the argument, the fight continued into the salon area, which was outside of our bedroom at the top of the stairs. Johnny picked up my phone. I don't know why. Uh, I don't remember what he was saying when he did it, but he picked up my phone and threw it out of the open window of the salon area uh, out onto the street, out onto the downtown street that um, this window overlooked. Uh, in that moment, I... I, I went, oh, no, you don't. I saw his on the countertop and picked it up and threw his immediately, like two seconds later. Um, I didn't want to be stranded uh, this time alone, meaning I didn't want to be the only one stranded without a phone, which had happened to me already several times before this um, from Johnny. So I picked up his phone, threw it as well, um, and I said that I wanted to go stay somewhere else for the evening. I left that room, went into the office, um, we were still screaming names at each other and screaming at each other. And uh, I walk around the side of his desk, and um, the next thing I know, he has me by the hair, and he pulls me down, kind of, I hit the side of the desk. I remember things flying off of the side of the desk that, that I hit with, with my body. Um, I remember trying to fight him off of me. Um, at some point, uh, I, we're back in my my main bedroom, and uh, it's my. I believe I was getting my toothbrush out of that bathroom, and uh, when I came out, we had another shoving match. But this one, he kind of like. I remember he chest bumped me, in this like broy way. Chest bumped me and fell to the floor. And when I got back up, he kind of held me down by the shoulders, down on the side of the bed, kind of held me, um, wrestled me down on the bed. I remember I got up once or twice before I ended up on the bed and he grabbed me, um, did this thing that he did sometimes when he taunt me, grabbed me by the, um, the pubic bone, pubic area. And just as best I can describe it is he kind of just pushed me down, held me down by it and kind of pulled me into it and um, was, Ask, he was asking me, kind of taunting me, asking me if I if I thought I was so fucking tough. I think you're such a fucking tough guy, huh? Are you so tough now? Look who's so tough. You want to be a man? Tough like a man now? That ha happened for a, a bit of time. I, I'm not quite sure. How, um, I think at some point he left. I remember at some point shortly... After that, I, I remember he was still in the apartment when this happened, but I remember kind of collapsing on the floor and being exhausted.
is just, I, I remember feeling exhausted and crying and kind of throwing in the towel, if you, if you will. I, I remember saying to him, just, can we not fight like this? They're like, can we start over? Is there anything that we can do? Like, this is really messed up, but can we just not do this, please? Can we stop doing this? Just don't leave. It's my birthday. Let's just, let's, let's just call it tr couch. Let's call it truce and not have it end like this. I don't want to have it end like this. I was just so tired and hurt. And I remember crying and feeling ridiculous that after this I would be crying and saying these things. I'm embarrassed saying it now. Um, he responded uh, cruelly. He told me it's what I fucking deserve and that I'd wake up every, I'd wake up alone um, and that no one would ever love me because all of this pointing to my face or body, all of this was going to go away and no one would ever love me or my tit sag, no one would ever love me and I better get used to waking up alone. Um, and he said this is all my fault and what I, deserve, what I asked for and he left. I heard him come back in uh, the downstairs, you know, you can hear the door slam. I remember hearing it open and thinking, oh God, is this going to happen again? What's going on now? Um, and, and, and then shortly after I kind of peeked around to the top of the stairs where you can kind of peer into the lower level. And I, uh, I just see him briefly momentarily and he just screams at me, happy fucking birthday and stormed out. Uh, at some point, I walked down the stairs and uh, saw that he had also uh, left me a note to that effect. How did he leave a note for you? I, I was written on a piece of paper as best I can recall, but I'm not sure. And so then the next day, what did you do? Um, I texted. Actually, I took well... I can't say what I texted. Um, I woke up this uh, that morning, the morning of my 30th birthday, and um, I woke up to my best friend crawling in bed with me um, and putting her arms around me. And uh, I remember wondering how she got, how she walked in, um, because there was a lot of glass on the floor. There's lots of glass. And... Um, she put her arms around me and showed me a birthday video that all of my friends, my childhood friends, all of my loved ones made. Of course, stupidly, the first thing I asked her is why Johnny wasn't in the video because it had been recorded before. It had been recorded sometime before it was clear. Uh, and she said um, that she'd been asking for a few months and Johnny was Objection, like, Your Honor, hearsay. Um, I offered to prove the truth. Yeah, all right, I'll overrule, go ahead. Um, and so I, um, I, 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 we eventually we got out of my bed and um, grabbed a few things and uh, got the bat, got the dogs, um, left for for um, our plans, which our plans had been to go to Coachella, which is a music festival that happens in California. Um, and that had been the plan for a while that that's how we would go and celebrate my birthday. And I'm, I remember, you know, um, as I am accustomed to doing, just trying to move through, move on, and remember in vain trying to put on a brave face and have a good time, even though it was impossible. Let, let me stop you for a few things. What, if any, plans were there for Mr. Depp to join you at Coachella? Uh, he w was um, supposed to drive down, have dinner, um, stay in in the room, maybe do some writing or something like that in the room. At Coachella? At Coachella, where we were. Coachella um, happens in a different part of California than we lived in. We lived in Los Angeles, and this happens about two hours, two to three hours away. Um, so I finally got my car back, and, um, and I drove with my um, best friends in, in, the, in the car. And I'm going to stop you again because I just have a couple more questions before we go into that part. Uh, you said you brought the dogs. Who were the dogs you brought? Uh, Johnny's dog, uh, a 
at the time, Boo, uh, my dog Pistol, we shared them. Um, they're teacup Yorkies, and I believe uh, Raquel, my best friend's dog, which is a mutt. Okay. What, if any, issues did Boo have with uh, bathroom problems, if you will? Objection, leading, and relevance. Overruled or allowed. Um, she had eaten uh, Johnny's weed when she was a puppy and had uh, bowel control issues for her entire life, among some other issues. She was, you know, we re regularly had to take her to the vet to try to figure out, well, what was wrong with this dog? Um, never met a dog that was quite like this. Um, so she had some control issues, hence uh, why we would, she liked to burrow in the bed. She liked to be in the, you know, by the f foot of the bed underneath the covers. And it was um, customary that they slept in bed with us, but Boo, having the issues she had, we have to leave her in bed so that she wouldn't be encouraged to, to, to go to the bathroom, um, which would happen almost immediately once you put her down on the floor. And sometimes it happened in bed too. But, um, but yeah. So what, if anything, did you notice uh, about any bathroom issues in your bed before you left for Coachella? Well, Raquel and I were both in, in that bed um, with the dogs, and I didn't notice anything, but we left them in the bed while we packed a bag to go to Coachella, you know, so that they didn't, so that Boo particularly didn't lose control of her, about, or, you know, didn't go to the bathroom on the floor. So we leave them in bed until you're ready to take them outside to the patio, which is their designated bathroom break area. And what, if any, plans were there how often did you have housekeeping at that time at your house um, the housekeepers were there every morning okay. or they came every day as far as I know okay now we'll, we'll get you to Coachella but why did you tell Starling Jenkins that you had been involved in a prank gone wrong objection hearsay leading I said why your honor I didn't say what she said I'll sustain the objection Okay. Um, did you commit any kind of prank? Absolutely not. Okay. Absolutely not. And, and why would that not be something you would do? First of all, I, I don't think that's funny. I don't know what a grown woman does. I, I, I was not also in a pranking mood. I had my life was falling apart. I was, um, at a crossroads in my life that was really serious and I had just been attacked on my 30th birthday by my violent husband with whom I was desperately in love and knew I needed to leave. It was uh, not really a jovial time and I don't think that's funny, period. That's disgusting. And what, if any, uh, understanding did you have of Mr. Depp coming back to your bedroom that night or the next morning? Objection calls for speculation. I, I'm asking what her understanding was. No, I'll sustain the objection. Okay. Did you, had you had any conversations with Mr. Depp about him coming back to the house the next day? No, Johnny didn't come back to that house. That was my, that was my, you know, he owned it, but that was my house when, when we were having any sort of problem. In fact, that was my house just 90% of the time because he just didn't come back. That was not a place that Johnny was going to be in, that Johnny was in, and he had stormed out on my birthday. And as per what we did, it was he would go and stay at his West Hollywood home, and I would stay at the downtown places. He wasn't going to come back to the Objection calls for speculation. I, I, I think she explained her answer on that okay. one. Or what I'll she sustain just the last part. Okay. okay, next question. Thank you. All right. So let's take you to Coachella. Um, who drove? I drove. Okay. And who was in your vehicle? My sister, my friend Savannah, I believe, my best friend Raquel, just my, my girlfriends. I, I typically surround myself with my girlfriends. It's my sport. Was there any occasion in which you were riding in the vehicle that Starling Jenkins was driving? He picked us up from Coachella in the evening when we, as a group, all were ready to leave. Um, that was the um, the day that we went, which was a um, 
which was the day that I took MDMA and mushrooms at the same time, realized very shortly after what a horrible idea that was, considering the state that my life was in. I highly don't recommend that combination at the time. So I didn't feel like being in a crowd. I didn't feel like being at Coachella. I had intended to try to have a good time despite what was going on in my personal life. And I realized that that was just not gonna happen. And so I wanted to go home, I wanted, meaning to be in a bed. I wanted to be, you know, I just wanted to be held by my best friend and watch a movie. And that's what we did. I didn't feel well and wanted to leave. And when you said you rode back with Starling Jenkins, was it just you or did you have other people in the vehicle with you? And when we left Coachella, it was my entire group. I wasn't ever alone with Starling. I certainly wasn't anywhere near him. I didn't have a conversation with him. I sat in the very back seat with my best friend next to me and it was a whole group of us. Thank you. Um, you're on this, I, I don't okay. know, which, this might be a good breaking point. All right, that's fine. Okay, ladies, let's go ahead and take our morning uh, recess. Do not discuss the case with anybody and don't do any outside research. We'll take 15 minutes, okay? We'll just come back then at 10.50. Is that okay? All right, 10.50. Thank, right, thank you.
All right, we ready for the jury? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Sure, sure.
if any contact did you have with Mr. Depp during the period from April 21 to May 21, 2016? I had no physical contact with him. Okay. I'm going to take you to May 2nd, 2016, the Met Gala. Um, can you please just briefly describe to the jury what a Met Gala is, where it is, and what's involved? Uh, it, it's arguably the, the biggest um, fashion kind of celebrity event, red carpet event of the year. It happens every year in New York City. And were you invited? I was invited. Um, typically, designers uh, will invite people in the public eye to be there. Um, you know, guest, and they will typically dress them, and it's a way for designers or fashion to kind of intersect with the, a celebrity world, and, and it's a big event held at the museum every year. And what, if anything, did you and Mr. Depp do to prepare for that Met Gala? Well, Johnny and I were, uh, we were dressed by Ralph Lauren, guests of Ra Ralph Lauren, uh, and Johnny missed the fitting uh, in, because it was happening around the date of my birthday party in Los Angeles. But we were planning on going um, together uh, as Ralph Lauren's uh, guests. And did you show up? I did. Um, I didn't have a phone at the time because uh, I couldn't get it reinstated after jo Johnny threw it out of the window because no one on his team would would respond to me. Um, so I had no way to kind of reinstall it. I had, um, it's no point in getting a burner phone if you don't know anyone's phone number. So I, um, uh, I, I wasn't sure really what was going on or when he would show up or if he would show up. No one would talk to me on his team. Um, no one would tell me. I didn't know. So I ended up going um, by myself. Um, frankly, I wasn't sure if he'd show up. and you know, on the carpet or if you'd show up at the hotel shortly before. Um, I, I had no way of knowing. And then did you attend the Met Gala? I did. I, um, I got out of the car and walked the red carpet by myself, escorted by somebody from Ralph Lauren's team. Um, and uh, I sat next to an empty play setting for Johnny um, that they, they cleared as soon as we realized that he wasn't, that he effectively stood me up on the carpet. Who, who did you meet at the Met Gala? I uh, was standing in line um, right in front of um, a gentleman. Uh, it was Elon. Uh, I didn't recognize him um, until we, we started talking. And uh, he had reminded me that we had met once before. He was with his mother. Okay. And did you strike up a friendship with Mr. Musk after that? We did. We, um, as I mentioned, we spoke on the on the red carpet, kind of on the waiting, in the waiting line, of the carpet. Um, he seemed like a, a, a real gentleman. He was really nice, and he sat next to me. Well, not next to me. He sat, kind of in a nearby table, and we got to speaking that night, and then eventually became friends. Okay. I'm going to Michelle. Can you? pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 46. It's already in evidence. It's Aaron Filotti's notes. And I'm going to ask you to go to page 30. And I'm, I'm going to direct your attention to the entry for 5-11-2016, where it says, uh, if I can see. Let me, let me see if I can do some reasonable highlighting here. Okay, it says client laughed and also reported using illicit drugs, mushrooms and MDMA on 5-9-2016 at home with a high profile male acquaintance. Court re client reported that her husband was not aware of the male visitor nor her illicit drug use. Do you see that? Yes, I do. Who, who was the high-profile male acquaintance that would, visited your home on 5-9-2016? Uh, I don't recall even being in L.A. at that time. Where I, were you? I don't recall. Uh, I believe I was in London at the time. Okay. Um, did you have a male high-profile client at, at your home 
in or around 5 9 2016 uh, not around that date it seems like it's a wrong date okay and did you use illicit drugs mushrooms and MDMA with any high-profile client uh, no I did that at the Coachella Music Festival and that was the end of that I learned the hard way that that was a terrible idea all right well while we are on the um, uh, the same notes I'm gonna say I'm gonna refer to the Coachella which up, is up above and it says it states she ingested mushrooms and MDMA simultaneously while also consuming alcohol and states she vomited and was high for at least 24 hours straight were you high for at least 24 hours straight N no I was not I uh, I felt awful um, but I was at home feeling awful um, at home meaning at the hotel Okay. Uh, with my best friend in bed. Okay. Well, while I'm still on these notes, let's go. I know um, while Aaron Filati was t was uh, testifying, we recall the 5-21-2016 isn't on here. Uh, you'd sent her pictures, correct? Yes, okay. I did. Then let's go to 5-26-2016, and it says, client reports having the hardest week of my life Client states she cannot deal with the negative media publicity she has received. Um, and then if we can jump that up, Michelle, to the next page. Surrounding the divorce she requested from her husband, J.D. Do you see that? I do. Okay. When did you go in for the DVTRO? May 27th. So that was this. the day after Aaron Filati's note saying you just had the toughest week of your life? That's correct. Okay. While we are still on this one, let's go up to the first page for the client history. When did you provide a client history to Aaron Filati? Never. When did you first get assigned Aaron Filati? Uh, I believe September of 2014. Okay. Now it says here that client um, reports a history of substance abuse, including an addiction to cocaine and liquor. When did you have a substance, a history of substance abuse, including addiction to cocaine and liquor? I did not. There's a lot of mistakes in here. Did you ever use cocaine? I have. I used cocaine a few times when I was 18, 19 years old, um, but stopped using um, any drugs, including cocaine, when I got into a relationship with my ex-partner. She was very against that, and I'm glad for it. Okay. Then it also says here that Move up a little. Here we go. Client admits to history of anxiety, eating disorder, attention deficit disorder, bipolar disorder, codependence issues, and occasional insomnia. When have you had an eating disorder? I've never had an eating disorder. Okay. When have you been <laughs> diagnosed with bipolar disorder? I've never been diagnosed with bipolar disorder. Right. When have you been diagnosed with codependence issues? I have never been diagnosed with codependency issues, although arguably at the time from where I, well, at, from where I stand now, I can see that the relationship I was in with, with Johnny was certainly codependent. Okay. But I wouldn't have reported that at the time. I didn't know about that. All right, and then can we move up a little bit more, Michelle? Thank you. It has, per report from JD, Debbie RN, Dr. Kipper, Client AH has reportedly been experiencing increased anxiety and agitation recently and has had several outbursts of anger and rage. Were you present for this being reported to Ms. Filati? No, this is the detox. Okay. This is Johnny's. And it also says your mood has been labile. What if any outbursts of anger and rage and labile mood did you exhibit during the detox? None that she would have seen. None. I, I was there for Johnny's detox. This is what Johnny was going through. This is not me. Okay. And at the time of the detox, was Erin Filati your nurse yet? No, I didn't know her, and she wasn't there. 
Okay. Thank you very much. You can take this down, Michelle. Now, I'm going to take you to May 21, 2016, and I'd like you to describe for the jury what took place that evening in connection with Mr. Depp. Johnny and I had not seen each other for the better part of a month, or about a month. I was traveling. I had just shot a campaign in Italy. I spoke to him uh, around that time when I was in Italy. Uh, I had gotten a phone. Uh, my parents got a hold of me. After I spoke to my parents, I had communicated with Johnny. He, on that phone call, um, you know, I didn't know what was going on with him for those weeks. With his sobriety, I didn't know where his state was. I didn't know what state he was in. And when I spoke to him, he um, was saying what I can only just, he was going on about, um, about scientists and DNA and uh, feces that he had had um, some, some, you know, scientific analysis done and DNA analysis done and that, you know, uh, and as soon as I heard about this feces, he thought um, that was a prank and he was going on about all the, the, the scientists that he had conferred with, about the DNA results with, I was, just thought he was out of his mind and thought clearly the drinking and the drugs are not getting better. Clearly the delusions aren't better. So Objection calls of, for speculation. Your Honor, it's not about the truth of the matter. He's talking about what her... I'll sustain the objection. Next question. Please continue. So I, um, uh, I hung up from that phone call, uh, assuming that, and <clears throat> then spoke to him once once my, my parents got a hold of me to tell me about Betty Sue. We made a plan, Johnny and I, uh, for him to come over. Uh, he said he really needed his wife. Um, he, he had lost his mother and he missed his wife. He really needed his wife. He said it over and over again. I felt torn, I felt conflicted. I didn't think, obviously the situation hadn't gotten better with Johnny mentally and I was afraid that all the work and progress and distance I had finally got on it, on the relationship for the first time I had a month of distance on it, you know. Um, I, I didn't want that to be undone, but I also wanted to be, I was, you know, I was affected by the fact that his mother had passed. So uh, he said he wanted to come over and talk about that and he said he needed his wife and we made a plan. Um, I. Uh, we made a plan for, for him to come over during the day, thinking that that might mitigate the amount that he would be drinking. Night is a little bit more dangerous. And uh, in the early evening hours, I get a text from him that he's uh, almost there or that he's there. I think it was around 7.15 or so. And he came over and um, we sat on the couch and at first kind of, it was relatively peaceful. I mean, I could tell he was inebriated but makes sense in my head it made sense it wasn't he wasn't like incoherent it was peaceful and then he starts talking about the feces again and this prank that he said one of my friends had left for him in my bed that he wasn't going to be at and I tried to point out how that didn't make any sense I'm just not even going to be there I wasn't there and my friends wouldn't do that. That's not something a bunch of 30-year-old women think is funny. What is he talking about? And he just kept going on and on about it. So I, uh, I text my friend that it's... Objection hearsay. Uh, don't, don't tell us, don't tell the jury what you texted your friend, but go to the next thing. What did you do next? I uh, called my friend thinking that it would um, quell this, what I could only see as a delusion. I thought it was just a delusion he was having, and I thought, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll hopefully, you know, quell this by calling my friend to, to, to if he hears my friend say that didn't happen, Jack, maybe yeah, we can say. Uh, he's, she's, she, it's not offering to prove the truth of it. Thank you. Please continue. So I thought if I could get my friend on the phone to, to prove that this didn't happen, we could move on and talk about 
the issues this, that we should be talking about. You know, we had our marriage was over and falling apart in front of our eyes. We hadn't seen each other for a month, and his mom had just passed. I couldn't believe he wanted to talk about feces. So I call this friend thinking that we'll take care of it. The friend doesn't answer. I call another friend who is someone else he claimed. I don't know how both people did this, but he was claiming that this person was responsible. So I call that person. And that person is on speakerphone. And Tell I say- Tell us who that person is. Io. Io Till It Right? Io Till It Right. Okay. Uh, and then you put him on speakerphone with Johnny? Right in front of Johnny. Okay. And what happened next? I. I allowed for an opportunity for Io to say why this is impossible. Objection hearsay. It's not offered to prove the truth of the matter, is asserted, Your Honor. It's explaining the context that leads to the next acts. Your Honor, it is being offered we're to not prove here. that. We're uh, not uh, here uh, about uh, whether uh, Io. I'll, I'll, I'll sustain the, the objection. Bed. Next question. All right. Um, all right, so Io is talking. You can't tell us what he said. Okay. Objection, He's talking, Your Honor. Correct? May we approach? Okay. I <laughs> So I was talking, we can't say what he said. What is the next thing that happens on your end with Mr. Depp? Um, it just made Johnny matter. He got more upset, grabbed the phone and started screaming at Io. Uh, he just started screaming at the top of his lungs, said, you dyke bitch, you don't know what you're Talk, you know, just screaming expletives, insulting names, um, and uh, telling Io that he can have me and, you know, fuck off and it, it, just screaming at him. Um, I, you know, I, that's best I can describe it without getting into the details. He tosses the, the phone, you know, down on the couch and heads upstairs. I, and I pick up the phone and and try to you know apologize for the fact that my husband at the time just screamed at my friend on a cold call um i didn't want io to think that's why i had called io you know to just be screamed at and blamed for something that sounded crazy for lack of a better explanation it sounded crazy io um said something to me on speaker phone um, and um, reminded me I wasn't safe. Objection, Your Honor, hearsay. Your Honor, it's not offered to prove the truth of the matter. It's to show what caused Mr. Depp to be set off and come back. I, I mean, it's not offered to prove the truth of what he's saying. It's not hearsay. In that I'll overrule the objection. Go ahead. Thank you. Please tell us what Io said and what then happened with Mr. Depp. Io said, Amber, get out of the house. Get out of the house now. You're not safe. Get out of that house. Io had been there after the cleanup or for the cleanup after the December 15, 2015 incident. And objection, had Your Honor. Blood no out of responses. All right. I, think, I think she can provide the That's, context. I'll sustain the objection. Next okay. question. Okay. So please, please continue. Johnny hears this when he's on the stairs. He made it up one flight of stairs heard this, turned around, came bolting down the stairs, grabbed the phone from my hand, and really, really started screaming this time, lit into IO, uh, called IO every, imaginal, every imaginable horrible name that you can say to a LGBTQIA person, for one, and, and any person, any human being ever. I mean, just screamed at IO. Um, some really nasty stuff, and he, when he was done, he says, "You know, you want to, you want to have, you want to have my woman now. You want to have my bitch. You can have you. You take her. You can have her." And he, with that, picks up, just pulls his arm back with the phone, and throws it 
at my face. Hit me right in my, it felt like my, my eye. I put my head in my hands and immediately start crying. Um, I said, you hit me with the phone. Johnny, you hit me. And I'm sitting on the couch. I didn't even have time to react, you know? I, I didn't even have time to put my hands up. I was still sitting cross-legged in my socks on the couch. And I haven't seen him for a month. And last, you know, several times now that I've seen him, he's hit me. And I didn't even have time to react to this. He comes over to me um, as I'm crying. And he does that taunting thing to me. He says, oh, yeah, I hit you, huh? I hit you, yeah? And he just feels like wax me on top of my head. Just this heavy ringed hand landed on top of my, my skull, grabs me by the hair, yanks me up off the couch. I'm struggling to stand up. And um, I don't know if he was intending to... Um, hit me in the face or if he was just trying to grab my face but he was making this um, gesture around my face to try to hold to expose my face to him and he was like yeah let me see how bad i hurt you let me see it let me see how bad i hurt you this time what if i pull your hair back what if i pull your hair back and he yanks my hair back i'm trying to prevent him from landing the blows to my face i'm trying to prevent my face from being exposed and I just remember this mocking taunt he was doing with me as he is yanking me around the room. Uh, and then I hear my friend come into the room. Um, I hear her. Johnny hears her too. He lets go of me and turns and... Just tell the jury who your friend is. Raquel, my best friend at the time who lived in the neighboring apartment. Uh, she came in, and uh, Johnny m moved towards towards her, and she ran towards me. Um, Johnny looked at her, looked at me. I retreated to the only place I had to go, which is the corner of the room the, where the couch was. I retreated kind of to the couch, and Raquel uh, and Johnny both ran up to me. Uh, John, uh, Raquel got in front of Johnny. She kind of managed to get right in front of him, in between he and I. And I'll never forget it, just very slowly, calm, very, very, in just a very slow, but very concentrated, very controlled, slow way, just put both of her arms, her hands up like this. And like I've seen people do with horses, that's what it reminded me of. She just went, no. No, Johnny, no. And she just got in front of us, in between us, put her, both of her palms out. Johnny kind of squared off to her, ran into her arms, and she just repeated herself very slowly, very calmly, very directly. He hit both of her arms off of his chest like that and barreled towards me. I instinctively curl up on the couch and I just feel her arms come around me, next to me. She was sitting on my left, next to me on the couch. And I just feel her arms around me. And I'm just looking down at the carpet, feeling her arms. And that's when Johnny, who I can see partially and hear, is right in front of me. And he's screaming at me to get the fuck up. Amber, get the fuck up. Amber, get the fuck up. Amber, get the fuck up. And every single time he said it. He's screaming it louder and louder and louder. I think he screamed it probably about 10 times so loudly. The next thing I hear is boss, boss. And I realize that his two security guards had come into the, to the apartment after Raquel. I see them and, or hear them and uh, Johnny turns to them and I, I see Jerry say, boss, boss. And I get up off the couch and I say to Jerry, Objection, Your Honor, hearsay. Not offered to prove the truth of the matter asserted at all. I'll sustain the objection. All right. Next one. So don't tell us what you said to Jerry, just what happened next. 
then they tell him something, um, and uh, he uh, picks up the the bottle that I guess he walked in with. Uh, it was a this is Magnum. Mr. Depp or Jerry? I'm sorry, Johnny. Okay. And uh, starts smashing things off the nightstand, the, the, the coffee table, starts screaming, uh, and they kind of, I feel them kind of corral him. I'm not making direct eye contact, but I can kind of just sense and feel and sound and hear things smashing as he exits the, the apartment, kind of knocking things off the countertops and uh, breaking things on the way. I, I um, realize he, you know, he's punching something. I, I assume it was the picture because it, it, it broke right after he walked past it. And he leaves that apartment. I hear him in the hallway, still screaming. I hear more doors opening, more racket. Eventually, Josh, Raquel's uh, a husband, comes into the room and uh, uh, brings me to safety, brings Raquel and I to safety in, um, in their apartment. And that's where I stayed for the next few hours. So who called the police? I, I believe it was I. Objection calls for speculation. Your Honor, this is not, you, we have to have the context here of somebody called the police because then the police come. So right. I think we have to put, I mean, it's not offered again to prove the truth of the matter asserted. It's just who called the police. Your Honor, the objection is not hearsay. It's speculation. Do you know who called the police? Yes, I do now. Okay. I'll sustain the objection. The All next right. question. Did you have a convert? Did you, were you present when there was a discussion about calling 911? Objection calls for hearsay. I'm asking if she was present. I'll sustain the objection. Next question. Did you call 911? No. Okay. Did Rocky call 911? Objection calls for speculation. Do you know whether Rocky called 911? I do know whether she did. And did she? She did not. Okay. Um, all right. So what happens? When did you learn that the police had been called? Uh, roughly an hour. I don't at some point shortly after uh, Johnny and his security guards left. Okay. And what did you do as a result of knowing that the police were coming? I, I felt panicked. I, I, I didn't know what to do um, because I didn't know what they were going to do when they saw the state of the place. He'd also smash up the other apartment where I kept all my things. So I didn't know what they were going to do. And I panicked. I called. Um, I called the only lawyer I have, which is my um, entertainment lawyer. He does like my movie contracts and stuff. And I asked him for advice. And then what, without telling what he said, what happened next? I called a domestic relations attorney after that conversation. And had you known this domestic relations attorney before then? No, I did not. Did you get that name from your entertainment attorney? Yes, I did. Okay. And when you called the domestic relations attorney, without saying what she said, what did you do as a result? I told the police officers who arrived that I would not Objection, your honor. Hearsay. Again, not offered to prove the truth of the matter asserted. All right, I'll overrule the objection, go ahead. Thank you. I'm sorry, could you repeat that? I repeated to the officers, I refuse to cooperate at this time at the advice of my attorney. Okay. Did you call your publicist that night? No. Okay. Um, now, I'm going to ask you to take a look at some pictures but before I get there, I want to just ask you a couple of questions leading up. What were you doing when the police officers arrived? When, at that time when I, after I learned that they were coming, uh, my best friend, took pictures of me 
uh, we took pictures of the house and my face. Okay. I'm going to, and did your best friend take any pictures while the officers were there? We took pictures before and while they were there and after. Okay. We took pictures throughout. Okay. So I'm going to take you now, Michelle, can you bring up Defendant's Exhibit 706? I think we can do the native on this one. Yes, thank you. Uh, does this accurately depict the scene portrayed? Yes, it does. Your Honor, I'd like to move the admission of Defendant 706. No objection. 706 in evidence and published. And would you please describe to the jury what this is a picture of? This is um, my face after Johnny threw a phone at it. Okay. Um, I'm going to now, Michelle, ask you to pull up Defendant 708. And does this accurately depict the scene portrayed in this picture? Yes, it does. All right. And I also see that there is uh, a, a, a little, what we call metadata item on there. How, how do you get that on a picture? How does that happen? Can you Ob just describe briefly? Objection, Your Honor. Uh, that's speculation, lack of foundation. If you want to approach. Yeah. Can you please explain how this particular item on here got onto the pictures? Um, it's a it's a feature that was on um, iPhotos, you know, where the where your pictures are stored on your phone. Typically, you just push info. And and was that pushed in this, these instances? I pushed these info, and that's what came up. Okay, Your Honor, I'm going to move the admission of defendants in 708. We have Objection Your Honor, I would just ask the picture be redacted um, on hearsay grounds. Um, uh, Your Honor, I, I, for the I, metadata, okay, if you want alleged to metadata. Again. Okay. One moment, please. I'm All right. trying to figure out how to move this back. Okay, that's fine. Okay. All right, I'm going to move the admission of uh, 708 with the redaction, Your Honor. Okay, any objection to that? Um, there still needs to be another redaction at the top, Your Honor. Okay. We'll get it. Okay. Thank you. Oh, 
Okay, 708 with the redactions, okay? Thank you, Your Honor, and I would also like the record to reflect that we, um, we're, we're publishing this to the jury? Yes, no objection, correct? Okay. Yes, there we go. Okay, I would like the record to reflect that this was the photo that was shown to Officer Signs and Officer Haddon. Objection, Your Honor. 20, no, that, that is Your Honor, we couldn't that is put him in because Your Honor. we hadn't identified him. Now the jury should be entitled to know which photo Your Honor, was shown. Your Honor, we ask that we approach. approach. Okay, we can approach. This is So for the record, this particular photo was shown to Officer Signs and Officer Haddon as Exhibit 24 in both of the depositions that were shown earlier where the pictures were not uh, allowed to be shown yet because they hadn't been admitted. Amber, will you please describe for the jury what, what is depicted in this photo? Yes, that's a picture of my face. Um, taken um, that evening, um, shortly before 9.30, um, after Johnny hit me with the phone. Okay. Now we can take this one down and let's go to Defendant's Exhibit 709. And based on the court's ruling, I'm going to ask if you can redact that, Michelle, please. I move the admission of 709. All right, any objection? Not with redactions, right, thank you. 709 with redactions and evidence, you can publish. If it could be published to the jury, Your Honor, thank yes. you. And Your Honor, for the record, this is the photo that was shown to Officer Signs and to Officer Haddon as Exhibit 25 for both of their depositions. Okay. Amber, could you please describe for the jury what's depicted here? Uh, that is my face after um, after the phone incident, okay. that's that night. All right, let's uh, bring defendant 710, please. And Your Honor, I'm going to move the admission of Exhibit 710. The redactions have been already placed right. on it. Any objection? No objection. All Thank right. you. 710 with the redactions. You can publish. If we can publish, Your Honor. And for the record, this a photo was shown to Officer Signs and Officer Haddon. It was Exhibit 26 for both of their depositions. And please describe for the jury what's depicted here, Amber. Uh, that is my face in uh, yet a different light um, that same evening after Johnny hit me with the phone. Okay. Let's go ahead and go to Defendant's Exhibit 711. And I'm going to move the admission of uh, 711, Your Honor, with the redactions. All right. Any objections? No objection. All right. 711 with redactions and evidence. Publish. And for the record, Your Honor, uh, for the jury's purposes, this was shown to Officer Signs and Officer Haddon as Exhibit 27 to both of their depositions. And could you describe what's de depicted here, Amber? Yes, that is another angle, another lighting of my face okay. uh, after the phone. And that when, evening. And when you say angle or lighting, what, what did Rocky do in, in taking these pictures? Objection uh, calls for speculation. I said, what she do? So overrule. Thank you. Uh, Raquel um, took pictures of my face in various um, places around the penthouse. The, penthouse, the, the apartments have really different lighting, you know, uh, really dark in some places. Um, anyway, so we just took pictures in different lighting so that... Um, we had an accurate 
portrayal and depiction of what had happened. And why did you take the pictures? Uh, Raquel did it to protect me because the cops were coming, and um, we knew we or that we, we knew that the police. I, th I think at this point that we they were already here. They were with us, but we weren't. Maybe this was right before. I'm not quite sure without seeing the timestamp, but we weren't sure what was going to happen, what the police were going to say, what they were going to do. Um, we didn't know what Johnny was going to do, what he was going to say, so she wanted to protect me. Okay. So um, let's go ahead and bring up 712. Move the admission of 712, Your Honor. All right, any objection? No, thank you, Your Honor. Right, 712 with redactions, you can publish. Thank you, Your Honor. And please describe what's depicted here. Uh, that is a, another picture of my face Okay. Uh, taken around the same time. Okay, and then let's go to 713. Move the admission of 713, Your Honor. All right. Any objection? No objection. All right, 713 with redactions. You can publish. And for the record, this one was shown to Officer Signs and Officer Haddon as well as Exhibit 29 to both of their depositions. And just describe briefly to the jury what this is. This is uh, another picture of my face taken at the exact same time and in the same location as the other one, just with one of the lights turned on or an additional light turned on in the previous one. Okay, let's go to 714. Move the admission of 714, Your Honor. No objection. All right, 714 with redactions. And please tell the jury what this depicts. This is um, another angle of my face or another picture of my face taken at a different time. I don't know if this is um, later or before because I can't see the time on it. Okay. If you take that down, let's go to 715. I'm going to move the admission of 715, Your Honor. Uh, no objection. All right, 715 with redactions in evidence. You publish. Thank you. And uh, for the record, this one was shown to Officer Signs and Officer Haddon as Exhibit 17 for both. Um, please describe for the jury what's, this, what's depicted here. Uh, that is a picture of my face. Um, some point later on in the night, it looks like that was taken in Rocky's apartment or in the apartment that she was staying in. And let's go to 716. Move the admission of 716. No objection, Your Honor. All right. 716 evidence as redacted. And Emmer, could you please tell the jury what this picture depicts? Uh, yes, it's the business card that one of the police officers left for me uh, in case I changed my mind and wanted to comment. Okay. And uh, with the pictures that we have just seen before this, were they taken before the pictures of the uh, police card, the card that was left after, or do you know? Objection uh, compound. It's not. And calls for speculation. Your Honor, compound oh, is oh, over, only. Overruled. Thank you. Uh, they, we took pictures before, during, and after. Okay. And the question I had for you is the pictures you've seen so far, were those taken before 
at the time of this, uh, before this card was presented to you and you took the picture, after, or do you know? Uh, some of them were, but without seeing all the timestamps, I can't tell exactly. Okay, that's fair. Thank you. Okay, and then I'm going to ask you to take this one down and go to 717. I'm going to ask you, uh, I'm going to move the admission of 717, Your Honor. Any objection? No objection. Right, 717 is redacted in evidence. Published. Thank you. And please just briefly describe to the jury what this is. Uh, the two officers that um, first responded left me that card. This is the front of the business card they left. Okay. Um, can you tell the jury, just explain what the interaction was that you had with the police officers, um, just describing what you observed uh, as they came through. Uh, I did not want to speak to them. I asked that Raquel's partner or husband ask them to go away without speaking to me. And, and just so the jury understands, who was Judge, who, who was Raquel's fiance at that time? Um, his name is Josh Drew, and he and Raquel lived in the apartment at Johnny's invitation across the hall from us. Um, Raquel had keys; we kind of shared keys. It was they were our neighbors, but had keys to our house. Okay. So why didn't you want to cooperate with the police? Because I, I, I wanted to protect Johnny. I didn't want him to be arrested. I didn't want him to be in trouble. I didn't want the world to know. I didn't want this to come out. I didn't want him to be in trouble. I didn't want this to be, I wanted to protect Johnny. Let's uh, go to uh, Defendant's Exhibit 1374. That's 1374. One moment, Your Honor. All right. Thank you. All right. Move the admission of 1374A, Your Honor. Any objection? No objection. 1374 in evidence. 1374A in evidence. I'm sorry. Th thank you, Your Honor. Um, and Amber, what is this? Uh, it's another picture of my face uh, after Johnny threw the phone at it. Okay. And then let's go to 1493T. <coughs> and move the admission of... 1493T? No objection. All right, 1493T in evidence. And what does this depict? Um, this is a picture of um, my eye, my face, after that incident. Perhaps by the lighting, it looks like it might have been taken the next day, but I can't be tell. I mean, I can't tell for sure. Okay, and then let's go to 1493S. And move the admission of 1493S. No objection. All right, 1493S in evidence. Published. And what does this depict? Uh, I, and this is another picture of my eye and uh, side of my face. Now, were there also pictures taken of the property that you described, Mr. Deb? destroying or damaging yes there were okay michelle can you bring up defendants exhibit 700 and based on your honor's rulings we will uh, take off the metadata
Move the admission of Defendant's Exhibit 700. No objection with redaction. 700 with redactions. You can publish. Can you please describe for the jury what's depicted in this photo? Yes, um, my friend had, was preparing for a bead show and had displays to show these bead necklaces she made. And uh, she needed some counter space in order to kind of set up the displays that she was going to use the next day. So she asked me earlier in the day if she could use the free counter space in that penthouse, penthouse five, to kind of set up those, those display racks. They were set up um, in that room um, when Johnny went in there to destroy things, as he does. Uh, and this depicts some of that damage? Yeah, he, security let him in, even though I had asked Objection, Your Honor, speculation. Uh, I, I don't think that was speculation. And lack of foundation. Oh, you, I'll sustain it as a foundation if you want to. Okay. Um, so what, what does, what's depicted, what's the damage that was done? Well, because Johnny would always smash up my things and destroy my property when he was mad at me. Um, I had asked that they not let him in to, so that he could do that. I mean, the only purpose to let, for him to be let into Penthouse 5 in that state, he doesn't have property in there. The only way for, the only reason for him to go in there would be to destroy it. And they, of course, let him into Penthouse 5. Objection, Your Honor. So that he could go. Yes, Lack of foundation. All right, I'll sustain the objection. Next question. Just tell the jury what he did here that's depicted in this. This is just a, a one corner of the room that shows the destruction. He just went in there with this bottle swinging and destroyed, okay. smashed a bunch of things. Objection, Your Honor. This is speculation. All she right. hasn't established that she was there. I'll, I'll sustain if you want to lay a foundation. It's fine. Okay. okay. Uh, did anybody else, to your knowledge, go in there and do this? Objection, Your Honor. Calls for speculation. I'm trying to lay the foundation here, Your Honor. I'll sustain the objection. Next question. Well, let's do this. Never mind. We'll, we'll let somebody else tell who did it, okay? Sure. Um, just all I'm asking here is what what is the damage? What has been done that's depicted here? This is just one of Raquel's bead racks that he um, Objection, smashed. Your Honor. Speculation. Okay. I'll sustain the objection. All right. Let's go to 701. Move the admission of 701. Uh, with redaction, no objection. All right, 701 with redactions and evidence. Thank you. Amber, can you please describe what's depicted here? Um, yeah, it is our bedroom and penthouse three, the main penthouse. Um, looks like he was just um, throwing things. Objection, Your Honor. Calls Sustain. for speculation. Sustain the objection. So, just describe what you see here as opposed to what you say he did. Can I see a bunch of art um, tossed on the bed. Okay. Where was that art before Mr. Depp was at your house on May 21, 2016? Um, hanging on the wall where it belongs. Okay. Let's go to Michelle. Can you bring up Defendant 702, please? Oh, Your Honor, and I forgot on the last two. For defendants, Exhibit 700, that was shown to Officer Signs and Haddon. It was Exhibit 39 to both of theirs. And Exhibit 701 was shown to Haddon only, and that was Exhibit 30 in his deposition. I move the admission of 702, please. All right, any objection? No objection. All right, 702 with redactions. Thank you, Your Honor. And let the record reflect this was also shown to Officer Haddon as deposition exhibit number 40. And can you please describe for the jury what's depicted here? Uh, yes, it, uh, it's broken glass from one of the bro broken um, pictures that were hanging on the wall. And, and where is this physically? This is in Penthouse 5 on the stairwell. Okay. Let's, Michelle, can you bring up defendant 703, please?
move the admission of Defendant 703. No objection. All right, 703 with redactions. You can publish. Thank you, Your Honor. And the record, let the record reflect that this was shown to Officer Signs and Officer Haddon as Exhibit 41 for both of their depositions. And Amber, please describe for the jury what's depicted here. Uh, it's another photograph of this stairwell uh, in the same apartment, Penthouse 5, and, which and is the apartment where I kept my things. Okay. And is that glass on the stairway? Yes, from one of the broken uh, picture frames on the wall. We had a lot of picture, I had a lot of picture frames on the, on the um, walls. And um, uh, many, if not, most of them were smashed. Okay. Uh, let's take this one down and go to 704, please. Defendants? Michelle, thank you. Move the admission of defendant 704. No objection. All right, 704 with redactions. Publish. Thank you, and let the record reflect that this was shown to both Officer Signs and Haddon as Exhibit 34 to both their depositions. And Amber, please describe for the jury what, what's depicted here. Uh, just another piece of glass. It looks like the base of a wine glass. Um, that is in Penthouse 3, the main apartment. Okay. And when you say wine glass, did you see this particular Glass. There were glasses um, in the kitchen, and uh, always. And when Johnny was walking out, I saw him myself um, swinging the magnum-sized bottle, uh, and I could hear glass breaking uh, and things falling. Okay. Thank you, Michelle. Can you bring up seven oh five, please? Move the admission of 705. No redaction. No, excuse me, no objection. All right. <laughs> and let 705 in evidence. We'll Thank you. Down. Thank you. Go ahead. And let the record reflect this was shown to Officer Haddon in Exhibit 36 of his deposition. Amber, can you please describe for the jury what's portrayed here? Uh, things knocked over on the kitchen uh, countertop, and I see p pieces of broken glass on the countertop as well. Okay. Let's go to 707. Move the admission of 707. Any objection? No objection, Your Honor. All right, 707 with redactions and evidence. Thank you. And let the record show, show that uh, both Officer Signs and Officer Haddon were shown this picture. It was Exhibit 18 in both their depositions. Amber, could you please describe to the jury what's depicted here? This is the hallway leading, um, out, leading up to the apartments. Uh, so this is the hallway that connects all of the apartments. It's kind of an indoor-outdoor um, sort of hallway, meaning it's covered, but it's it's exposed on the far ends of bo both um, to the elements. So this is not carpet. It's like a, a it's like a plasticky. Uh, I don't know how to describe the material. It's like a plasticky kind of um, um, netting, not netting. It's difficult to describe, but it's a kind of an outdoor sort of carpet. All right, and what's depicted there? Uh, wine on the floor and a little on the wall, it seems. Okay. Let's go to 718, please. Move the admission of 718. No objection. All right, 718 with redactions and evidence. And let the record reflect this was shown to Officer Signs and Officer Haddon in Deposition Exhibit 31 for both of them. Amber, please describe for the jury what's depicted here. It's um, another, another photograph on the floor, not the wall. Uh, this one appears to be remarkably unbroken. Okay. Let's go to 719, please. Move the admission of Defendant 719. 
Uh, no objection. All right, 719 with redactions. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. And they let the record reflect that this was shown to Officer Signs and Haddon in their depositions, Exhibit 35 to both. And Amber, please just describe for the jury what's depicted here. Uh, it's one corner of the kitchen in penthouse three. Looks like um, one of the one of the things that was knocked off of the kitchen island when Johnny left. Okay. Well, let's go to defendant seven twenty, please. Thank you, Michelle. Move the admission of defendant 720. No objection. All right, 720 with redactions. And evidence. let the record reflect, Your Honor, this was shown to Officer Signs and Haddon, deposition exhibit 43 to both. All right. uh, Amber, could you please describe to the jury what's depicted here? That's um, my office. It's a corner of my office. Uh, and that is um, a box of like sentimental things, things from my childhood or things that are important to me, keepsake box that um, has been dumped uh, out, it looks like. Okay. Let's go, to def let's go to defendant 721. Move the admission of defendant 721. No objection, Your Honor. 721 with redactions. Publish. Thank you, Your Honor. And let the record reflect this was shown to Officer Signs and Haddon in deposition exhibit 44 for both. Amber, please describe for the jury what this depicts. Um, it's a, again my office. Different, same thing, different angle. Okay. Let's go to 722. Move the admission of defendants exhibit 722. No objection, Your Honor. All right, 722 with redactions and evidence. Thank you. And let the record reflect this was shown to Officer Signs and Officer Haddon as deposition exhibit 42 to both. Amber, please describe to the jury what's depicted here. That's a picture of my friends and I um, when we were at that London house um, that Johnny punched. Okay. You saw him punch this? I heard it. Okay. All right, let's go to 723, please. Move the admission of defendant 723. Any objection? No objection. All right, 723 redacted in evidence. And let the record reflect this was shown to Officer Signs and Haddon in their depositions, Exhibit 38 for both. Amber, please describe for the jury what's reflected. Um, um, one of the, um, it looks like a magnum bottle of wine um, that is empty or spilled on the floor. Can, can you tell where that is located? Um, it looks like it would be penthouse five. Okay. Let's go to 724. Move the admission of defendant 724. No objection. All right, 724 with redactions. Thank you. And let the record reflect this was shown to Officer Signs and Haddon as their deposition exhibits 33. Amber, please tell the jury what's depicted here. This is um, more wine that Johnny was spilling as he was using the um, using the bottle he was holding as a, you know, a bat of sorts. Okay. Let's go to 725. We're almost done, just two more, I promise. Move the admission of defendant 725. No objection. All right, 725 with redactions. And let the record reflect this was shown to Officer Signs and Haddon in, as deposition exhibit 37 to their depositions. Amber, please tell the jury what's depicted here. 
uh, more spilled wine on the floor. This looks like uh, penthouse five. Okay. And the last but not least, Michelle, please, defendants 726. Uh, move the admission of? Um, no objection. Okay. Um, Your Honor, I believe Please. the jury needs a tissue. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> Fuck. We, will, we will get a tissue. <laughs> you got some? Thank you, Halusa. All right, no objection, 726 with redactions. Thank you. All right, and let the record reflect that this one was shown to Officer Hines and, and Haddon as Deposition 32 exhibit to their depositions. And Amber, please just describe to the jury what's depicted here. Uh, more spilled wine on the floor. Penthouse, three appears. Okay, thank you. Now, when the police officers were there, did either of them take you aside by yourself and talk with you? Yes. Which one or both? Uh, the male officer I did not have much interaction with. The female officer asked to, said she needed to speak to me by, by myself, pulled me aside. Uh, we went into penthouse three, the main penthouse, uh, to speak there because I had been in penthouse one, Raquel and Josh's um, apartment up until that moment. Okay. And then what, if anything, did she ask you? Uh, she asked me if I would make a statement, if I would cooperate. She kind of indicated to me, I don't remember if it was a, what word she said, but she kind of gestured t to my face and... Objection, Your Honor, hearsay. Uh, I, I think I'll she could, if she gestured, gesturing to her face is not hearsay, uh, I'll sustain, not a statement. I'll sustain the objection. Next question. Okay. And it's also not offered to prove the truth of the matter. I'll say so, the team. Okay. Next so what happened next? I, uh, how, how, let's do this. How long were you with the officer when she took you aside? Uh, a few minutes, um, if that. Okay. And as a result of that, did, did you cooperate? No, I did not, but uh, it was my understanding that I couldn't stop them from walking through the apartment, which is what they indicated to me. Okay. And were you with them when they walked through the apartment? Uh, no, Josh, well, in, I was with them at the beginning of Penthouse 3. Josh, uh, Raquel's partner, um, took over from there and showed them around the house up through penthouse three, which connects on the top floor to the neighboring apartment, penthouse four, and then on to penthouse five. They all connect on the top level. So Josh walked the officers through the, through the house. Okay. And what, if anything, did you say about the identity of Mr. Depp? Nothing. Were you asked? Yes. But you refused to tell them? Objection uh, leading. Sustain. Okay. Uh, why did you refuse to tell the police officers Mr. Depp's identity? Because I did not want them to arrest Johnny. I did not want this to happen. I did not want any of this to happen. I didn't want to get him in trouble. So I said, well, I can't. I, I just refused to cooperate. Okay. Now, after how, approximately how long were the police officers there? I don't recall exactly. Maybe, uh, I'd say less than half an hour. I, I really don't know exactly, but they weren't there very long at all. Okay. Now, after the police officers left, what did you do? Um, we cleaned up a bit uh, because there was broken glass and we had dogs. So we tried to clean up the, the mess and especially the glass. And um, Josh, Rocky, Liz, and I, we kind of just 
cleaned up and eventually um, sat on the couch and they just tried to comfort me. What, if any, knowledge did you have that there was going to be a second set of officers coming later that night? I didn't know about that. That surprised me. When did you learn that a second set of officers were coming to the, the penthouse that night? I think I learned about it when they were there, when they arrived. OK. Uh, and we've seen the, the body-worn video um, on that. Is there anything that you recall outside of what was reflected on Officer Gaitland's uh, uh, body-worn video? I couldn't see much of of what was on that video. I just, uh, I remember being surprised that they were there, not really knowing why they were there. I assumed it was because I was encouraged to make a statement by the first set of officers. Objection, so Your Honor, hearsay. All right, just I'll just keep going objection. forward. Next. Okay. And I was sitting on the couch. It was uh, some time, hours, maybe, uh, maybe, maybe between an hour two hours, maybe more, I, I don't really recall, but we had cleaned up and we were resting and they were comforting me when they came and um, they didn't seem to, they didn't do what the first set of officers did. They um, just kind of came into the apartment, confirmed that it, we that that I was okay or that we were okay. They didn't really seem to be that concerned um, and they didn't demand to do a walkthrough like the first set of officers had, um, and they left. Okay. And what, if any, cooperation did you give them? Well, I didn't need to. I didn't really cooperate with them. I didn't talk to them. I didn't, I don't, I didn't even get up off the couch. I was speaking to them from a, 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 quite a bit of a distance, like between you and I, and maybe more, and I didn't really say anything. I just kind of acknowledged that they entered and that I that that was it did, did you provide them with mr. Depp's name no way did they ask no okay all right I'm going to take you to the next day uh, May 22 um, and I'm going to Michelle can you bring up defendants exhibit 772 What, if any, efforts did Mr. Depp make to reach out to you the day after this happened? Well, he, he made several efforts. Immediately, he kind of reached out and lashed out. Um, again, kind of going on what seems to be slightly delusional thinking that just because he saw my friend's beads out on the countertop that it had become a workshop or a studio for her. So he seemed angry about you know, this perception that this bead display that my friend had set up was evidence of her running some sort of workshop. And he also accused us of having, or me, of having invited someone else to live there who, who wasn't living there, um, who, who was just in the apartment when Johnny stormed in. So All he just right. kind of lashed out, and then the tone changed in the days that followed. And let, let me stop you there. So I'm going to ask you to take a look at, at Defendant's Exhibit 772. Uh, and is this a text message from Mr. Depp to you? Yes, it is. And it's on 522 at 1223 AM. So it's early morning hours after 521. Would that be fair? Yes. Your Honor, I'm going to move the admission of Defendant 772. No objection. All right, 772 in evidence with the identifiers redacted. And published. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. And uh, I know you started to talk about this, Amber, um, but it says, uh, I'm an idiot. PH5 is Rocky's studio. You are shameless. Do you see that? Yes. Okay. Was that what you were talking about with him thinking that you're. Yes. Okay. Uh, and then. Obviously, we can read that he says, I tried to make it work. You just turned more and more into a spoiled brat. All you wanted was to make me fucking miserable. Well, I'm finally there. I'll never be able to understand how I fell in love with you. You're not her. I loved you more than anything. I did everything that I could, but you never fucking loved me. I was merely convenient for you. I hope our divorce goes as quickly as possible, 
and that it is as painless as possible. So sorry you were as unhappy with me as you were. Obviously, the purity of whatever was has been gone for a long time. I will miss the moments of beauty and truth. Goodbye, Amber. What the fuck was I thinking? I wish you all merit, all you merit, the former him. Um, what if any discussions did you have with Mr. Depp about divorce that night? Uh, we did not uh, have a discussion about that uh, that evening. We didn't have time. He was uh, obsessed with dog poop. Okay. That's what he wanted to talk about. All right, let's take this down and let's go to Defendant's Exhibit 773. Now, this is a text exchange between you and Mr. Depp. Uh, it starts with Mr. Depp on 521 at 6.58 p.m. just saying here. Does that refresh your recollection of when he arrived at your penthouse on May 21? Uh, yes. Okay. And then the next series are on 5.22. They start at 5.13. And you're discussing talking. You said, sorry, I'm just leaving Amanda's birthday now. Do you see that? Yes, I do. All right. And then he responds to that, correct? Yes. All right, Your Honor, I'd like to move the admission of Defendant 773. Your Honor, if we could just have a minute to review sure. this exhibit. Yes, ma'am. Is it just this page? Uh, no, there's three pages. Three pages. I'm just reading Michelle's hands. <laughs> Objection, Your Honor. All right, 773 in evidence with identifiers for Dackett. Thank you. Thank you. And if we could, okay, we've got it published to the jury. So let's go to the top, Michelle. And so it starts out with, with him. This is the 5:21, 6:58 p.m. Saying he's there, correct? Yeah, but I think he came in later than that. Took him some time. Okay. And then if we move up, the next one is you uh, at 522, uh, at 513 p.m., correct? Yes. And then you say, thank you, and then can we still speak in a min? What do you recall of why you sent those texts? I believe we had spoken on the phone. Or they. I can't uh, control this, correct? The screen. Uh, I, I don't know. We what can I give have. you control. Yes, maybe we should do that and clear out my purples. I just don't know what was sent right before go, this. Go ahead. Go ahead. You're on a computer. She can't give... scroll. She's oh. asking to scroll. Okay, Michelle, <laughs> let's have you scroll if you can. Just, just go ahead and scroll through just slowly, so she can read the whole thing. Uh, okay, that makes sense. Um, Right. Does that help refresh your recollection? Uh, yes, I believe that uh, that um, 
I believe he had apologized to me after the phone incident. I had commitments that I had to attend the following day uh, on the 22nd. So the beach show I referenced, I mentioned to you, I had to go to, I would also had to bring a cake to a friend's birthday party. So I had things I was, I unfortunately had to do that day. And I remember there was communication with Johnny, um, both by phone and by text, uh, where he was uh, telling me that he was clean, that he was sober, he um, was clear mind, it wasn't the monster, and that he was so sorry. Um, but I, um, I had already committed to filing for divorce. And um, eventually I have to um, let him know that it's not just I'm not just saying it in the anger, in the fights that, like we had done, you know, both he and I did that uh, at times in some of our fights, especially towards the end of our relationship. And so um, I let him know that I, I was, I was um, serious about filing this time and that I had had enough after the, after the phone. Objection, Your Honor, here, say. I had enough. Okay. Overruled. Go ahead. All right, I'm going to draw your attention to the bottom of the page, Defendant's Exhibit 773, and this is at 522, so this is 619 p.m. Do you see that, 522? And he says, just let me know when you have a minute, and I'll give you a call. Nothing I have to say. You should elicit anything but a sense of ease. Do you see that? Yes. And then he says, all my love and profound apologies. What was he apologizing for? Objection, you know? calls for speculation. What was your understanding of what he was apologizing for? Speculation, Your Honor. Uh, sustain the objection. I, okay. In his phone call with you, did he tell you what he was apologizing for? Yes. What did he say? He was sorry that he reacted the way he did. He said he didn't mean to hurt me, he didn't mean to hurt me, if he really hurt me that bad, he's sorry that he just, he didn't mean to. Okay. Michelle, if we can go to the next page. Up to the green, please. And he says here, I'm sad, I'm scared, and I'm broken, my sweet slim. And then he says, I want you happy. I have zero harsh feelings. I am clear and I am me. What did you understand him to mean by I am clear and I am me? Objection, Your Honor. Calls for speculation. I, do you, do you I know what he meant. Okay. But, Your Honor, did there's he a lot. Use that phrase with you? I'll, I'll, hold on. I'll sustain that objection. I'm trying next, to get to the yeah, next I know. one here. Then you can ask your next question. Thank Go ahead. You. Do you. Did he use those phrases with you? During your marriage? Yes, he did. What did Mr. Depp mean when he says, I am clear and I am me? Objection. Calls for speculation. I, I think I established the foundation. O overruled. Go ahead. Thank you. That he had sobered up. That he had sobered up and he was not the monster again. That he was him. That he was a good guy I loved. The one that I trusted. All right. Now I'm going to ask... Michelle, if you can take that one down and bring in 771, which has already been admitted. Now, those text exchanges were in the 6 o'clock to almost 7 o'clock range. And here, it's 522, it's now 8 o'clock, correct? Yes. And he's telling you, sorry if a bit, please know that my hurt towards you is over. My apologies are eternal and belong to you. Solid. Do you see that? Yes. Okay. Uh, and was it your understanding he was apologizing again? Objection, Your Honor. Calls for speculation. All right. I'll sustain the objection. Okay. Was there anything else he would have been apologizing for that he had done? Objection. Calls for speculation. I'll sustain the objection. You, you, So tell the jury how you felt in that week, May 22 through May 27, and what you decided to do. Uh, 
uh, at the time it felt like the hardest thing I've ever had to do. I had worked so hard to try to make this relationship work. I went to therapy and went to Al-Anon. I got help. I read books. I did everything I could possibly do and it didn't work. And um, I find I was, I was conflicted to answer your question. I was conflicted. I knew after he threw the phone at my face that after all that, that month of not seeing each other, that, not getting better, not getting clean and sober. There wasn't even, I didn't, you know, the, 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 all, it, it was falling apart. I knew I had, I knew I had to leave him. I knew I, I wouldn't, I knew I wouldn't survive it if I didn't. So I made the decision to, to file for divorce. It was hard because, um, you know, I love Johnny so much. I loved him so much. And, and why did you file for divorce? Because I knew if I didn't, that I, I knew if I didn't, I'd likely not literally survive. I'd been, I'm so scared that it was going to end really badly for me. And I, um, I really didn't want to leave him. I loved him so much. I wouldn't have done anything, but I, I couldn't, I couldn't do that one thing. I couldn't stay. The, the promise and the hope that I had, I had become less and less regular and more and more rare. The monster had been this thing that was now the normal and not the exception. The violence was now normal and not the exception. And it was um, so it was so hard. It was so hard, but I knew I had to do it. They would I believe he would have taken it too far. I wouldn't be here. Why did you ask for a domestic violence temporary restraining order? I wanted to change my locks. I wanted to change my locks. I wanted a good night's sleep. His security would always let him into the house no matter what I asked them. No matter when I, when I begged them to let me know when he was coming over, no matter how much I begged them not to let him in when he was mad or drunk or high. And I just, I couldn't sleep. I'd wake up in a panic. I was losing hair. I was losing weight. I got really sick. I had shingles, I couldn't sleep. I'd wake up in a panic attack. I had panic attacks all the time. I was falling apart. I was scared and very conflicted because the person I was scared of is also the person I was in love with. Really, really tricky. And I, I was thinking one step at a time. You know, I was thinking very myopically. I wanted just to get a good night rest, a good night's sleep. I just wanted to change my locks. I thought it'd be healthier if I got some sleep and I could think about what to do or how to handle this if I just could sleep and When I did, I realized that that wasn't enough, that he could get in any way, that the building wasn't going to stop him from getting a locksmith and coming in. I knew that he would do what he wanted. Objection, Your Honor. Calls for speculation. Overruled. Not up. Thank you. All right, next. Okay. So did Mr. Depp show up for the hearing on the DVTRO? No, he didn't. Did you? 
Yes, I did. Okay. And why did you show up? Because I had to provide testimony for why I needed a restraining order. What, if any, warning uh, were, did you give Mr. Depp about obtaining the DV TRO? Um, we gave him warning. Um, my counsel and his counsel were in communication, and we let them know. We had to. It was mandatory. Okay. It's my understanding of it. I'm not a lawyer. Was there any confusion surrounding whether Mr. Depp was going to file suit as well? Objection, Your Honor. Calls for speculation. I'm asking Lack for, of foundation. Right. I'll sustain as to foundation. If you want. Uh, did you have any confusion as to whether Mr. Depp was going to file as well? So I, um, I filed for divorce uh, on the 23rd, I believe, and I thought that uh, when I went in that Tuesday, we, or when we filed for it, remarkably, it managed to stay under the radar. You know, these filings are not private. You can't make them private in California. And remarkably, it had flown under the radar. Uh, it, 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 no one picked up on the fact that I had filed. And uh, as limited as it sounds now, I just wanted as much privacy as we could have. You know, one day at a time, I wanted as much privacy as we could possibly get. And m the filing had been missed by TMZ and, you know, these paparazzi outlets and stuff. But um, between uh, the communications between our counsel, I realized that Johnny was going to file in retaliation. Objection hearsay. Uh, I'll sustain the objection. Um, I think how to ask this. So, um, without saying what the council said, what were you? What was your understanding, and what was your concern? Objection concern hearsay. I'll no, sustain the objection. All right. Well, let's move on. Let's, Michelle. Can you bring up Defendant's Exhibit 800, please? Move the admission of Defendant's Exhibit 800. Any objection? No objection, Your Honor. All right, 800 in evidence. You can publish. Amber, can you describe for the jury what this picture is? It's a picture of my face while I'm sitting at the courthouse. And were you wearing any makeup? I was wearing nothing, not a stitch of makeup. Okay. Michelle, can you bring up 801, please? Move the admission of 801. No objection. 801 in evidence. Publish. And Amber, if you can tell the jury what this is. That's me while I was uh, obtaining my uh, restraining order. It's me in the courthouse. Okay. And, and what, if anything, did you do while you were at the courthouse? Did you testify? Oh, I, I provided testimony and sat there and cried. And did you obtain a domestic violence re restraining order? Temporary restraining I order? did. Uh, the court granted me a restraining order at that time. Okay. When you left the courthouse, what did you experience? I walked into the courthouse. It was quiet first thing in the morning. Uh, no one knew about my divorce, so I thought it was going to stay that way, and I walked out uh, to a sea of paparazzi and cameras, photographers. It was, I, to that point, had, I mean, at that point in my life, had never seen so many photographers, and they just surrounded me as I walked out of that courthouse and screamed at me, screamed horrible things at me. I'm going to take you just for a moment to makeup, and then we'll, that would, after okay, good that, break point. Okay, that great. yeah, that'll be right, a good you. breaking point after the makeup. You yes. said that you didn't testify, you uh, didn't wear any makeup that day. We've heard all kinds of things about makeup in this case. Could you please tell the jury what your uh, regular routine was with respect to makeup? Uh, yes, I get up and wash my face, like most of us, um, and I put on right away uh, a moisturizer that has um, 
tinted foundation in it. And then I put another foundation on because it has sunblock in it. I have a skin condition that I, my skin reacts to the sun in, in a bad way. So I have, to, I have to wear sunscreen or sunblock every day. Anyway, so I put on both of those. I put on concealer. Uh, and I, um, I do that before I, I leave my bathroom in the morning. Okay. That's obviously if I don't have a bruise. Now, when you had bruises or cuts of any nature, what would you do uh, about those? Would you try to cover them up? Would you try to just leave them showing? What would you do? Jackshiana, leading. I, I, I was, oh, yeah, ruled out. Thank you. Go ahead. Uh, well, I'm uh, typically I uh, am typically photographed in LA when I leave the house, a uh, paparazzi type of photograph. So uh, I always. I'm, you know, somewhat aware of that anyway, um, and no one, woman, no woman wants to walk around with a bruise on her face. Uh, so if I do have a bruise uh, on my face or someplace visible, you know, the main thing you have to ice right away to reduce swelling because no amount of makeup can can fix swelling, but it's very manageable if you ice it really soon. Um, arnica is also a, a great uh, remedy, arnica cream. Uh, and then if you want to cover up a bruise, um, you obviously put foundation first, concealer, and then on top of that, um, I used a, like a, a bruise kit. Not a bruise kit, it's a theater makeup kit, a color correction kit, but I, use, I called it my bruise kit. And, and let me, I, I used this, I think, in opening statement in its defendant's exhibit. One, if you could by the mic microphone, please, oh. just to, we can't hear you. Um, there you go. May, may I approach uh, the witness to... Well, that's what you could show the council. Uh, yeah, this is what I was talking about as a color correction kit. This is not obviously the exact one I used to carry, but I used to carry it with me all the time. Sometimes this pink is sometimes a little bit more purple of a hue, and sometimes the kits are three colors. You can get them in three or four colors. Sometimes they have even more. But the idea is that you want to counteract whatever color you're working with on the bruise. So the first day of bruising, in, well, the immediate is red. Red is what shows up right away. So you want to go with the opposite on the color wheel by dabbing on a bit of the green or something to counteract the red. After a day or two, you get more purple in a bruise. Um, so you'd obviously have to go with more of the red tones, the, the orange tones here. Um, day two for me was always the trickiest because um, day two just, I feel like, well, day one and day two are hardest for me because that's when you get the most blues and purples and you have to deal with the sensitivity. Bruises don't like to be touched. That's the whole point. Um, so that's the trickiest part, but um, after a few days, that becomes more of a, uh, uh, that blue becomes more of a, um, a, a brown, yellowish brown, like a, a, you know, five, seven days in, becomes more of a yellow green, uh, and then fades into a brown, and then into your skin. And you, whatever color you're working with in the bruise, you want to go opposite color on the color wheel. Uh, so... Uh, the opposite, I mean, so in the first couple of days when you have more of the typical bruise color, the blues and, and the purples, you want to go more of the orange uh, on, the, on the color wheel as opposed to the greens that you start with. And then it, move, it progresses from there. I also noticed that um, bruising on your face uh, t tends to heal a lot faster than, at least for me, it was faster healing than bruises on my body, or at least it seemed like that to me. And um, a nose is pretty much um, unrecognizable after a day or two, depending on how much you ice it. Uh, lips are the hardest because they crack and bleed, of course. Uh, but it's easy to hide with lipstick if you're a woman, or you know, if you wear lipstick, I suppose. Now, we heard some testimony of people uh, in the week of May 21st to 27th uh, saying that you didn't wear a stitch of makeup. Oh, was that true? Objection, hearsay. Oh, overrule. Okay. Uh, they just don't know what they're talking about. I always wear makeup. Okay. You always wear makeup? 
I mean, it's part of my bathroom routine in the morning. You know, wash my face. I put on moisturizer. My moisturizer has tinted foundation in it. And I'm certainly not going to walk around L.A. with bruises on my face. Okay. I, I think that's All right. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and take our lunch recess at this time. Again, do not do any outside research and do not discuss the case with anybody. And we'll see you in an hour, okay? Thank you. Court is still in session, so please be quiet in the gallery. Thank you. All right. And again, Ms. Hurd, since you're still under uh, under oath and testifying, you cannot discuss this case in, to include with your attorneys, okay? In your testimony. All right. Let's come back then at 140. Okay. All right. Thank you. 140.
right. Are we ready for the jury? Oh, we have things. Okay. Yes. What do we have? All right, we're ready for the jury. All right, thank you. Seated. All right, your next question. Your Honor, I'd like to move the admission of Defendant's Exhibit 155. Okay. That's the uh, makeup palette. Oh, okay. Any objection to that? No objection. All right, 155 in evidence. Do we have it? I, I think it's there. We had pictures first. All right, thank you. All right, 155 in evidence. 155. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Your Honor. Michelle, uh, can you bring up uh, Dep Exhibit Number 357B as in boy, plaintiff's exhibit, and it is a tape recording from June 2016. The time stamps are 4 colon 47 to 7 colon 52. Is that in evidence yet? Or? I'm going to move the admission of it. Okay. Thank so you. was that going to be for the whole 357, or is that 357A, or is That's that? That's just B, B. I have that as B. B as in boy. I think there was a portion that okay, was Okay, 357B. Put in Any objection to 357B? No, Your Honor. All right, 357B in evidence. Thank you. I can just tell you the basic facts. is like it was private for days after I filed. You did not have to file. That's not the move that one that other that the other party has to make. Okay. And it's just not. Okay. That, and you did. Okay. Well, your team did. Okay. And then within five minutes, it was five in TMZ. You just do the math yourself without any other thing, and that's why it's very clear. Okay. I, and I I don't know if you knew that. No, I didn't know that. And and if that's the case, I'll 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 I'll, I'll, I'll acknowledge it. <clears throat> you know. Um, and if you say, you say uh, proof, yeah. then I'll acknowledge it. Look, I, I, it doesn't shock me that, 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 that any fucking yeah, it attorney would do something like that. It doesn't, that, that, you know, um, yeah. it doesn't yeah. shock me. But I'm telling you now, if, if, if we go, if, if I file, if, if they file the fucking papers tomorrow, 
which means I, the, the shit I gotta file before we go to court on Friday. If they file <clears throat> those papers, it's first of all, it's 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 very bad for both of us. Okay. Well, your team's gonna file anything that they can get back for you. Trust me. No, you're 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 what you're saying. You you gotta do something to protect yourself, which means throwing me under the bus for the some video about me being. Not, not me. I have to respond legally, meaning I'll have to go and, and pursue the. No, I have to pursue the whole course of action because here's what you don't understand. If if we do this. And if, well, basically, well, no, because my, I called my lawyers and I said, why aren't we negotiating more? What is going on? Why, where are we? And they're like, everything is done in our court. We literally. They, no, they won't settle. Your agents won't, your, your, your lawyers and won't settle, baby. I'm telling no, you. No, we, we, we want to mediate. We even have a mediate. We even found mediators and, and, and everything. Like that was all worked out. So the thing that Laura didn't agree to was uh, she did not want to agree to a mutual gag order. And that's the problem, but she doesn't want the gag order. Why, Johnny? Why? Why wouldn't she? Why wouldn't she want both parties to not talk about this in the press? By the way, just talking about the press, not even talking about the court. Okay, i tell you what, Amber, let, let me get on that right now. I'll fucking get on it right now. And, I, and I'll, I'll get a message back to you somehow. Just, uh, uh, you know, uh, but I'll, I'll, get, I'll get on it right now. I, I, just want, I, I just want you to know, I, I've not doing anything and have not been doing any moves. Like, look it up, the timeline. Nothing was on the offense. Everything has been a defensive move because I'm being called a liar and a gold digger. And I'm not lying about any of this shit. And I am not after a dime of your money. And Do you remember... When you had this discussion with Mr. Depp? Yes. When was that? I believe that was um, June of 2016, so after the divorce, uh, while we still had the restraining order. Okay. And what, if anything, was going on with respect to a gag order at that point? Objection calls for speculation. I, I'm asking her. I haven't. All right, overruled. Uh, I was um, I was trying to um, I was trying to get Johnny to stop the um, smear campaign. Uh, that Objection, Your Honor. Hearsay. Lack of foundation. What if any discussion did you have with him about a smear campaign? Johnny told me that he would ruin me, um, that no one would ever touch me, meaning in the, professionally, no one would ever work with me again. Uh, that I'd never work again, that I'd be selling, uh, depends is what he said. Uh, and that uh, he'd ruined my career and uh, he refused to um, not engage uh, with, up until that point, he refused to not engage with the press by uh, leaking. Objection, you know, Your Honor. Calls for speculation. Uh, how is that speculation? I this is what he's telling her, correct? Right. Okay. All right. I'll overrule the objection. And up until that point, um, I was trying to, you know, uh, get him to call the dogs off, call, call it off, because it was, um, it was forcing me to a position where he was calling me a liar, and he was forcing me to prove it. And I knew that wasn't going to be good for him. And I, I, I kept saying, don't make me, don't make me prove it. I don't want to. But he was calling me a liar and having a really sophisticated, very, very well paid, very sophisticated PR uh, machine. Objection, going Your Honor. Over calls for speculation. I'll sustain the objection. I'll move on. Um, let's go to DEP exhibit, that's plaintiff's exhibit 357C, that's 12 colon 30 to 16 colon 30. I'm going to move the admission. Any objection? No objection, Your Honor. All right, 357C in evidence. All right, Michelle, if you complain. I'm not, it's not about that. It would not be about me throwing you under the bus. You know what it would be? It would be released through documented people coming on the record and having the protection to do so that haven't had yet. 
it would be eyewitness statements, it would be evidence, tons of it, and it would be through years. And it would be unbelievable, unbelievable um, to imagine that either I'm in A, a secret fake club, or B, I've had... Um, a secret what? I've had a secret fight club, or that I have been plotting to do this for the, you know, for three years, and while well, taking pictures of it and documenting it, just saving it up for the right time when I'm not asking for any money and have nothing financial to gain from it. But no one is going to believe that. No one is going to believe that one of the two alternatives, either I'm in a fight club, or I've been getting going through hair and makeup or going through makeup through all these years where I have cooperating text messages between people that match those dates of those timestamp validated photos of, of I would either cooperation between people hearing us or cooperation of next day, you know, um, Whitney sending text messages to Kevin, him responding, or, you know, the kind of stuff like between uh, uh, me and people in your life. Uh, it is insanely cross-cooperated uh, cross then it, it is a plan I'm going to put makeup on myself and take pictures throughout the years and just sit on it for years that that well, while having this like imaginary life run parallel to it you understand that I, the pictures I have match with like text messages to my mom back and forth about it you know and text messages between say Raquel and my, my mom or my, Raquel and my dad or you know um between my two friends. Or there's a text message where I tell Jody the night before I had that James Corden night show thing, where I say, hey, Jody, um, I've had an accident. Um, I think I may have, a, I have a busted lip. I may have a busted nose and, and um, two black eyes tomorrow because I don't, I don't know how that will be until the morning every day. But, see, okay. I don't know how. I'm icing it. Um, I just I'll let you know in the morning, you know? And things like that. It, it doesn't matter. There is nothing there. Nothing. And I'm, and all of that won't be me throwing you in the spot. That's, that's, that will be evidence in this case. Which I will have, it will be criminal as well because I cannot go on Friday and file without filing a police statement first. And the only reason I haven't filed that police statement, which has been used against me, by the way, every day. And the only reason I won't do it, I haven't done it, is because I don't want to hurt you, and that means it goes out of my hands. And every, we have a third party guy, a uh, third party prosecutor come, and, um, and a criminal lawyer come, and they went, like, the problem is, hearing from you, like, your biggest struggle is that this is just, this is such a, it's the, most solid evidence case of domestic violence I've ever seen. And if you give this over to them or present any part of it, it's, they will prosecute him. And I felt like I was, I was I'm not, like I would never want that for you. It's it hard for me to even understand. I don't call my mom, like, it's in my head. And it's hard for me to even accept any sort of victimdom ever. Can you please explain what the context of this was? I was begging Johnny to not make me prove what I've had to sit on the stand in front of all of you and prove and talk about. I was begging not to do this and have to sit where I'm sitting today. I didn't want this. I don't want to be here. I didn't want to be there then. And I was trying to point out something to somebody who I thought did not have a firm grasp on reality. Objection calls for speculation. It's really Overruled. Good. Thank you. I was trying to point out how absurd, how absurd it would be for him to keep making me prove this by calling me a liar. I was trying to get him to not call me a liar because everything that I had said to date and everything I've said to date now is the truth. And I was begging him not to make me prove it. 
that there were photos, that there were witnesses, that there was my testimony. There were years of me with injuries on the dates where we were fighting, and they were documented. I mean, uh, pictures from 2012. So I was trying to say to him either, you'd suppose that people would rather believe this is a hoax, elaborate, well-orchestrated, year-long campaign for what? Or that, what? It just seemed crazy. And I thought no one was advising him in his best interest. I thought no one was telling him the truth. I know how he's surrounded by yes men, and I thought nobody was saying to Johnny, this is crazy, don't do this. And I didn't want to hurt him. I didn't want to hurt him. I loved him. I loved him so much. I, that's why I'm explaining to him why I didn't file criminal charges. I didn't file a police report, even though it was being used against me. I didn't want this to go to a prosecutor. I didn't want this to hurt Johnny. I don't want this to hurt Johnny. Michelle, can you bring up Dep Exhibit 357D as in David? Uh, and that is 17 colon 25 to 17 colon 37. I'm going to move the admission, Your Honor. All right. Any objection? No objection. All right. Any evidence? 357D. I've been called a liar. Baby. And I've been called a gold digger. Baby. Everyone is. Baby. Amber, I didn't call you those things. I didn't call you those things. Thank you. I'm going to go on now to, uh, can we go to plaintiff's exhibit 357E? And this is 21 colon 47 to 22 colon 37. Right. I'm going to move the admission, Your Honor. Any objection? No objection. 357E. Thank you. And you're stronger. So when I say that I thought you could kill me, that doesn't mean you count her. With you also, uh, that, that, that you lost your own finger. I, I am not trying to attack you here. I'm just trying to point out the fact of why I said call 911. Because I was, you, are, you had your hands on me after you on the phone in my face. And I just got crazy in the past. And I truly referring to there <laughs> that I don't want to call myself a victim I don't like to think of myself as a victim and I don't want him to think I'm attacking him or blaming him I'm pointing out I didn't cooperate with the police that I didn't want to get him in trouble that I didn't want to hurt him I don't want anything from him. Just don't call me a liar. It's all I said. Just don't call me a liar. Just don't say this isn't real. Because I'm the walking proof of it. I'm going to ask to bring up plaintiff's exhibit, Dep Exhibit 357F, as in Frank, 24 colon 04 to 24 colon 48. And move the admission. All right. Any objection? No objection. All right. 357F. I have said only this from the very beginning. I only have my integrity. And they, the unfortunate thing is... They what about mine? They need to step further. What about mine? They keep taking... They keep taking... That's what I keep... I'm trying to say to you. Literally in words. I'm out, out of my mouth. That's what I'm trying to say to you. Every step of the way, I have said to them... The thing is, they're hurting Johnny by this because every time that they call me a liar or they see this is not true or see that this text message is not actually happened or that a, 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 your security guard, which by the way was a follow up to your security guard saying they never saw abuse happening. The same security guard who, by the way, have said to me multiple times that I was going to get killed. And what are you talking about there, Amber? That even though Johnny told me 
that his guards would say whatever he needed them to say, that they were the same guards who had told me that I would lose objection, my life this Your Honor, way. Say. All right, sustain the objection. It came in through the tape, so that's all right. We're fine. Um, let's go, Michelle. Your Honor, to, yeah, if we could approach, please. I, I'm sorry. Michelle, can you bring up Dep Exhibit 357G, Plaintiff's 357G, and it's 26 colon 00 to 26 colon 28. Oh, move the admission. I'm sorry. All right, any objection? No objection. <laughs> oh, obviously, you're going to have to say they didn't see it in front of me and other people that are turned up. You're going to have to do this under oath, too, you know. I will, because I, because the unfortunate part is, I can talk about all of this. Do you believe all this, Emma? Do you believe all this? Oh, yeah, the fucker, yes. You believe you believe I'm an abuser. You believe I'm an abuser. What were you referring to with the May, December, and April? Just listing some of the times in which he beat me up okay. and that he knew about. So I'm going to take you now fast forward into the July 2016 time frame. There was a mediation that uh, came about during that time. Um, what, if any, intent did you have to reconcile with Mr. Depp at the time of the mediation? I, I wanted there to be no animosity. I wanted to minimize animosity. I wanted to reconcile in the, that way. I didn't want to get back together with him, if that makes sense. Um, can you just briefly describe what transpired during the July mediation? I, uh, even though I had a, a TRO and I wanted to move on with my life, the campaign I mentioned earlier, the smear campaign, the article after article, the hounding me, the, you know, leaking fake. Objection, Your Honor, non-responsive. All right. I sustain the objection. Okay. Please what, explain. Please what explain. I was meeting with him about is because he, had, you know, put these things out in the media. It seemed like every objection, day there was Honor. a new attack. Calls for speculation, lack of foundation. All right. Did, did Mr. Depp discuss with you that he was putting these out in the media? Objection, leading. Oh, overruled. I'll allow it. Yes. Okay. Please explain. He told me he would tell his team to back off and to, to, yeah, to back off effectively if I agreed to do certain things. One of which, you know, there was, he wanted me to, um, like, drop charges. He wanted, or some version of that. He wanted me to um, get back together with him and go on tour with him in the tour bus. He wanted me to do certain things that I thought were impossible and that would definitely go against all, all of all of you know everything that I stood for and, and and had earned in getting my my TRO getting my restraining order and moving on but I had to break the TRO in order to beg him to stop the, the machine the press machine because I was I, feeling like I couldn't live my life I was being dropped from opportunity commercial opportunities people were turning on me the, uh, a campaign I shot dropped me I mean it was just I had never been inundated with that much press. Every single day, me and my family were, and every witness, anyone who even indirectly supported me, got bombarded. And the Objection. media campaign calls was, for speculation, right. lack of foundation. I'll, I'll stay in just the last, the last part of that. All right. Okay. Next question. Okay. Um, we heard Christian Carino testify <clears throat> earlier. Can you describe to the jury who, what your relationship is? And was with Christian Carino? He was my commercial agent, meaning he handled things like campaigns uh, for a short amount of time. And then 
uh, became Johnny's agent around the time of the divorce. Uh, he was a kind of mutual friend at the time between Johnny and I, and so he helped um, us kind of negotiate or mediate a time where we could meet, and my goal in that was to just beg Johnny to stop doing this. Objection, non-responsive. Overruled, that's right. What, if any, desire did you have to return to Mr. Depp after the divorce? None. Okay. Now, you heard Mr. White testify that he engaged in negotiations with you during the settlement process of the divorce. What, if any, discussions did you have with Mr. White? None. I, the first time I saw him was on, on the testimony screen uh, in the UK during the UK trial. So, I've never spoken to him. So he didn't negotiate your settlement? No, he did not. Okay. What was important to you in the divorce negotiations? The, the, the statement. That was it. The statement. I wanted a mutual statement, and I wanted him to call the, you know, get the press out of this. Just make a statement, and, and, and in that statement, clear my name. I wanted to clear my name. It's all I have. I, you know, I, I, I said this to him, too, and, he, you know, he knew this. All I have is my name. I come from nothing. All I have is my integrity. All I have is my name. And that's exactly what he promised to take from me. Why did you agree to accept $7 million as your settlement? I didn't care about the money. I was told if I didn't agree to a number that it could be overturned, that this would never actually, set, it would never get complete, it would never settle, Objection, and then it same. would be overturned. What was, your understand, go ahead. what was your understanding? That if I didn't agree to a number, it would be overturned, so I took far less than what they were offering and what I was entitled to. And why did you donate it to charity? I promised the entirety of it to charity because I was never interested in Johnny's money. And in the divorce, I just wanted my safety. I wanted to move on from my life. I wanted my future. And then he started compromising that, calling me a liar, making it impossible for me to move on by doing so. So that I wanted the truth. I wanted him to clear my name and to leave me alone. I've been saying that since 2016. So why did you donate 3.5 to Children's Hospital and 3.5 to ACLU? Well, I pledged the first half, or 3.5 to Children's Hospital because I'd been working there as a volunteer for well over a decade. Uh, I knew the facility well. I'd worked there with another um, nonprofit is how I got affiliated with them. And I knew they could use the resources. I was familiar with it. And what about the ACLU? Uh, and then ACLU because I was a supporter, because I believed in the work that we're doing. I believed that they were doing good work for people who deserved it. Why did you make the donations over a period of time as opposed to just a lump sum? Um, two, two reasons. The short of it is because I was receiving the settlement in installments. I was receiving the installments over time. Second of all, so I could get the tax benefit of paying over time. You know, it's my understanding that's how you pay these like large sums. You pay it over time. Did you make any payments towards these donations? I did. Okay. Uh, approximately how much? I um, allowed for the first installment, which is a hundred thousand um, to each that came straight from Johnny in 2016. I followed up with uh, 350 thousand. Uh, that year, um, 2016, uh, 2018, I did another. Oh, and I also donated to 250,000 to Art of Elysium, which is the affiliate I was just speaking about um, that does the work in the Children's Hospital. It was not going to count towards my overall pledge, but I did that too. And then I did another donation to each in 2018. And then Johnny sued me, 2019. Before we get to that, uh, did anyone make donations to the Children's Hospital or ACLU on your behalf during that time period? Yes, Elon also, uh, Elon, who was my boyfriend at the time, uh, had his own charitable contributions that he had, that he made. Um, he made 500000 to both in my honor, in my name, 
um, in 2017, I believe. And have you completely fulfilled your donations to the ACLU and the uh, Children's Hospital? I have not yet. And why not? Because Johnny sued me for $50 million in March of 2019. And I have spent over $6 million. Objection, Your Honor. This is a motion in limine. That part was supposed to come in. All right, one should come forward. Let's, let's take a look. So going back to that, then, could you afford to continue making payments to the ACLU and Children's Hospital? No. Okay. What, if any, intention do you have to fulfill your pledges and donations to these organizations? I still fully intend to honor all of my pledges. I would love for him to stop suing me so I can. What, if any, deadlines are there on your pledges and donations to the ACLU or the Children's Hospital? There are none. They understand. Okay. Now, let's, uh, let's go to Defendant's Exhibit 1458, which is already admitted. Now, I'm going to just direct your attention to paragraph 27, where it says, Neither party has made false accusations for financial gain. There was never any intent of physical or emotional harm. Amber wishes the best for Johnny in the future. What, if any, significance did that have to you? That was everything to me. That was what 
that was the most important thing in, in the separation agreement between us is that he acknowledged that I hadn't made a single false claim, that my allegations were not false. I thought that just because he signed his name to it, he'd honor it. I mean, he signed his name to it and I thought it would mean something. Right. He acknowledges that I never did it. I mean, I never made a false claim and I didn't do it for financial gain. And that's what I was being called at the time, a gold digger and a liar. Okay. Thank you. We can take this down, Michelle. And I'm going to now take you to post-divorce and your career. Please describe for the jury how your career evolved after the divorce, which I think was final in February 2017. I, I had to fight really hard to keep my career. Uh, I, you know, in, after I got my TRO, I, had, I lost opportunities. I got canceled from jobs. I got dropped from campaign I'd shot. I um, was told I was going to be dropped from. Objection, Your Honor, hearsay. Sustain the objection. I, I fought to keep my job in um, in a movie opportunity, the biggest movie opportunity I had to date. Which was what? Uh, it was Justice League um, with the option to become Aquaman. It later became Aquaman, um, but I had to fight really hard to stay even in Justice League because that was right around the time of the divorce. Can Can you tell the jury what Justice League was and what your role was in that? It is a superhero uh, franchise, uh, DC action film, and it introduced my character, uh, and it provided uh, the base for the Aquaman spinoff that followed it, but that was not a reality at the time of shooting Justice League. All right. And then you, you were able to be an Aquaman, is that correct? Yes, I... I uh, kind of showed up to work months early and stayed really late to fight to keep the job. I managed to keep it um, and managed slowly to kind of crawl, to gain through this kind of hard work and goodwill I was able to foster. I was able to keep and make other jobs and eventually made a, a movie called Aquaman and Aquaman was very successful. I think it was most successful DC film um, by its release and we you know I was I was getting my career back even though it was you know it took a major hit when I when I got my restraining order against Johnny so let's talk about Aquaman for a moment uh, I think you said it was the highest grossing film of uh, DC films is that correct yes okay when did that come out uh, December of 2018 and what was your role in Aquaman? I play Mira. And was that a lead role? Uh, yes, it is uh, one of the leading roles. It's the oh. female lead opposite Jason Momoa's character of Aquaman. Okay, so you were his mate? You could say that, yes. I was his um, love interest, the, the female, I was a female lead of the movie. So in December of 2018, as Aquaman's coming out, why did you agree to participate in the op-ed? Well, because I believed in some of the causes that the op-ed was seeking to advance. Uh, there, were, uh, there was a lot of attention and energy around um, gender-based issues, gender-based violence issues in general. I had just recently become an ambassador for the ACLU. I was proud of that ambassadorship and I was looking forward to the opportunity to lend my voice to what I thought was a great cause, which is just a, a conversation around women's issues and gendered issues that I think the whole country was having at that time, you know, quite a political conversation and cultural conversation at the time. And I was uh, happy to lend my voice if I could. Who drafted the first draft of the op-ed? The ACLU. Did you initially want to include Mr. Depp by name or reference? No. What were you trying to accomplish by the op-ed? I was trying to raise awareness uh, around some of the issues that I just mentioned. Uh, there was some uh, legislative reform 
uh, Title IX being one of them, uh, and there was just a greater cultural conversation being had around uh, gender issues, and um, and I was happy to weigh in um, on what I saw as a, a, the you know unique phenomena that women uh, and t typically women experience in our culture when they come forward against somebody more powerful, uh, when they speak up about gender-based violence. And I thought I could lend my voice to that conversation. I thought I had something to say about that. Were you trying to boost your sales for Aquaman since it was coming out in that same time frame? <laughs> uh, it doesn't work like that. I don't think any op-ed, uh, I mean, I. A major ma motion picture or major franchise like that is not aided by the publication of a, a an op-ed in the Washington Post. I'll put it that way. But the other way around can be said. You know, I was wanting to lend my name at that specific time um, to um, potentially advance the causes within the op-ed. Because of your success as Mira with Aquaman? Yeah, just the publicity of the movie and the success of the movie would hopefully, um, in best case scenario, um, only add and lend itself uh, to, would lend attention to the issues that the op-ed aimed to address. What did you do once the ACLU had your agreement to be the spokesperson for the op-ed, to put your name to it? I sought the advice of my attorney. And why did you do that? Because I, I, you know, I didn't want to get into any sort of legal issue. Um, I didn't want to have any sort of legal problems um, uh, for for talking about what happens to women when or people when they come forward and speak about these sorts of issues, especially when they come forward against someone more powerful than them, uh, and that backlash, the retaliation that people face when they come forward is exactly what I was writing about. And I didn't want Johnny to retaliate against me uh, and quite literally prove my point. And, and so who was the counsel that you hired to review the op-ed? Uh, his name was Eric George. Where is he located? Uh, Los Angeles, California. How did you know Eric George? Uh, Eric George is the attorney who represented me uh, in a different litigation against those produ the producers of London Fields, the movie I mentioned earlier about having a body double and sex scene that I didn't approve of. What was your understanding of Eric George's experience and skills to be able to review that op-ed for you in the context of, of your concerns? Objection, speculation. I'm asking her understanding. I'll sustain the objection. Uh, next question. D did you have knowledge of Eric George's abilities at that time? I did. I thought he had an excellent reputation and would give me great advice. Okay. And, and what if any experience, what, what was your experience with him in representing you earlier? I thought he was a fantastic attorney, very smart, and uh, I trusted him. Without uh, going into the content of it, what, if any, uh, of Eric George's advice did you follow in the context of the op-ed? I took all of his advice. I made all the edits he suggested. I took all of his advice. And what, if any, of Eric George's advice did you ignore? None. I mean, he's my lawyer. I, I listened to him. I'm going to ask you if we can pull up Michelle Plaintiff's Exhibit 1. Now, this is the online version of the op-ed, and it has this title, Amber Heard, I Spoke Up Against Sexual Violence and Faced Our Culture's Wrath. This, that has to change. What, if any, role did you play in this title? None. What, if any, role to your knowledge did the ACLU play in this title? None to my knowledge. Okay. Uh, are these exact words anywhere in the article? No. Okay. No, they're not. When did you first become aware of this title 
being included in the online version of the op-ed? I think in this litigation is a first time I realized that. Okay. I'm going to now ask, Michelle, can you bring up Plaintiff's Exhibit 2? And this has also already been admitted into evidence, Your Honor. Yes, ma'am. Um, and this is the, on the, the paper version, if you will, of the Washington Post uh, with your editorial. And if you go to the second page, this one has a title, A Transformative Moment for Women. What, if any, role did you play in that title? Uh, I didn't. Okay. None. Um, now, do you recall seeing this version, the newspaper version, at the time? Yes, this is the version I saw. I'm very proud of it. I had it framed. You had the newspaper version, not the online? I did. I had the newspaper framed. Okay. Uh, and now I'm going to ask you to turn to, uh, Michelle, can we pull up plaintiff's exhibit number three? And do you recognize this document? Um, yes. Okay. Your Honor, I'm gonna, admo I'm gonna move to admit plaintiff's exhibit number three into evidence. Any objection? No objection. All right, three in evidence. We can publish it to the jury. Thank you. Now, is it fair to say this is a tweet? Yes, okay. it is. And can you explain to the jury what a tweet is for those who are not as social media oriented? A tweet is a, a posting on a social media network called Twitter. Okay. Now, did you send this tweet? I think so. I must have. Okay. And what, if any, control did you have over whether the title given to the op-ed online was included in the tweet? You don't have, con you don't have control when you're retweeting something. It, you, I mean, it's my experience that you don't control a title when you're retweeting something. You don't get a chance to re-editorialize someone else's title. Okay. And, and at the time you sent this tweet, did you... How, did, do you remember even noticing that title? I do not. I don't, I don't think I even realized it. H have you ever typed the words from that title? No, I have not. Okay. Now, I'm going to ask you, let's go back to number two, plaintiff's two. And I'm going to go, I'm going to ask you, what, if anything, in this op-ed was incorrect? Nothing. Every word of it is true. And I'm going to direct your attention specifically, and if we can blow this up just a touch, uh, and move up just a touch, Michelle, if you can, so we get to then two years ago. Then two years ago, I became a public figure representing domestic abuse, and I felt the full force of our culture's wrath for women who speak out. Was this true or false? It's true. What, if anything, did you do about speaking up about domestic abuse two years earlier? Well, I went and got a restraining order against my then husband and walked out to a sea of media and endured, to that point, two years of vitriol from the media and from um, Johnny Depp supporters in, and, in retaliation for having done so. And I guess you're really answering my next question, which is, and I felt the full force of our culture's wrath for, for women who speak out. Is that what you were referring to for that next? Yes, because at the time, um, I thought it couldn't be worse. I uh, obviously, now from where I sit today, no, it got a lot, it gets a lot, a lot worse. And then, Michelle, if we can move this up a little bit further. Well, actually, that's perfect, Michelle. Then I don't have to use my purple again. Uh, then you said, I had the rare vantage point of seeing in real time how institutions protect men accused of abuse. Is this true or false? True. Okay. And explain to me what you meant uh, by that and, what, and how that was true for you. Uh, I got a restraining order. I 
had to prove to a judge that I needed one. I had a bruise on my face. I got a restraining order. I showed pictures. I had well, proof, and yet everyone, the media, the, the, the studios that you know, both Johnny and I worked for, they were ready to support him. They made statements in support of him. They were ready to fire me. Objection, they attempted Your Honor. to fire me. Your say. All right, I'll sustain the objection. Um, what, if anything, did you uh, witness with respect to institutions? Meaning the people that we work for, the institutions we work for, the studios we work for, decision makers in my industry, filmmakers and, 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 and powerful people and decision makers within my industry whom I had not ever even met, who didn't know anything about what happened behind closed doors in the marriage of Johnny and I were making comments about me, statements about me. Every I was dropped from campaigns. I, it was hard for me to work. I was harassed. Um, I'm harassed on a daily basis, death threats. And just the, um, the fact that that wasn't, uh, there was no parody. Uh, you know, the, the, the studio and um, these decision makers and such were so ready to support him and um, eager to, to Objection, Your Honor, hearsay. I'll sustain the objection. All right. So what, if any, ill will or bad intentions did you have or intend against Mr. Depp by assisting in writing, giving your name to this op-ed, and in publishing it? None. It's not about Johnny. The only one who thought it was about Johnny is Johnny. It's about me. It's about what happened to me after Johnny. It's about what happened to me after I escaped my marriage. It was about me and my life and what I endured once I moved on and got a TRO and moved on with my life. It was about what happened to me after. The only one who made it about him, ironically, is Johnny. I'm going to, um, we can take that down, Michelle. I'm going to turn to something about electronics and transparency. You have, you've testified about and we've seen photographs and audio recordings and text messages, emails, etc. What, if anything, have you done to cooperate in the authentic authentication of all of these things? Objection, Your Honor. May we approach? Sure. All right, I'm going to turn to your counterclaim. You have made a counterclaim against Mr. Depp in this case, correct? That's correct. And it's based on three statements that Mr. Mr. Adam Waldman, Mr. Depp's attorney, made, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, I'm going to ask uh, if you can pull up Defendant's Exhibit 245. But, Your Honor, I'm going to ask... Do we have... It's already in evidence. Uh, Your Honor, if I may approach, if we may approach okay, just sure. real quickly, because I think we can move this along faster if we do this ahead of time.
Okay, we're going to start by bringing up defendants 1245. All right, and moving that into evidence, no objection, 1245 in evidence. Thank you, Your Honor. And this is an article that was in the Daily Mail on 8 April 2020. You see that? And then, Michelle, if you can move that to the next page. and Perfect. It says, Adam Waldman, Depp's lawyer, said afterwards, Amber Heard and her friends in the media use fake sexual violence allegations as both a sword and a shield depending on their needs. They have selected some of her sexual violence hoax facts as the sword, inflicting them on the public and Mr. Depp. Do you see that? Yes, I do. Uh, is this a true or a false statement? False. A and why is it false? Well, you know, I have to use to to use what I've lived through and 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 what I've survived, calling it fake, saying that that I'm I'm harming. Johnny with this. I'm harming the public with this. This is what I've lived through. And to, to say that it's a hoax, that these aren't even real things. I, I, I mean, <laughs> after everything I've, I've lived through and survived, and also I hadn't even spoken about the sexual abuse within my marriage. I hadn't, I had been protective of that. I didn't want to talk about that ever. Adam Waldman was the one who put that out in the world. As remarkable as that is, I hadn't, I, I protected that. I had to go to another country to give testimony and thankfully they allowed me to do so with confidentiality and some protection. And then Johnny, through his lawyer, not only uses that against me, but says it's a hoax. Thank you. Now I'm going to ask if we can bring up, and it's going to be 1246A. And I think I'm moving this All into right. evidence yeah, as well. There's no objection, so 1246A is in evidence. You can publish. And this is an article that was published on the 28th of April, 2020. And Michelle, if we can. Thank you. And this one says, Depp's lawyer, Adam Waldman, said, quite simply, this was an ambush, a hoax. They set Mr. Depp up by calling the cops, but the first attempt didn't do the trick, he told DailyMail.com. And let's keep going. So Amber and her friends spilled a little wine and roughed the place up, got their story straight under the direction of a lawyer and a publicist, and then placed a second call to 911. Do you see that? Yes. Is that true or false? Couldn't be more false. And why is that? Every part of it is false. I, I didn't call 911. I didn't call the police. I refused to cooperate with them to protect Johnny. I protected Johnny. I didn't call them once and I didn't call them twice. I didn't rough up the place, I cleaned up the place. I didn't even know the second cops were coming. If I wanted to get something from him, if I wanted to hoax Johnny, why wouldn't I cooperate with the police? Wouldn't I say something to the police? Wouldn't I do more damage to the house and, uh, than just knock over the things that you saw pictures of? It makes no sense and to do it in, online when there's no fact checking, there's no authorities, there's no one able to, you know, I can't respond, I can't, I can't fight this and use these sorts of media leaks and these comments to re-echo over and over and over again online with a network of people that are intent on helping Johnny through a sophisticated PR machine. Objection, Your Honor, hearsay, over over speculation. I'll, I'll sustain the objection, next okay. question. All right, and, and so what in fact uh, did you do that night? I 
cleaned up. I protected Johnny. I refused to cooperate with the police, like so many other people do. I tried really hard to keep it private even after that, even when I was committed to filing for a divorce. I tried to protect Johnny. I tried to protect the history of what we had. I tried to protect him. And did the opposite. And I didn't, I didn't even have a lawyer. I didn't call my publicist. I, I, I called my contract attorney to, to get me another lawyer who could give me advice on how to protect Johnny. Every bit of this was to protect Johnny and to protect the secret that I had fought really hard to keep for nearly five years, which was that behind closed doors, things were not what it looked like. Okay, Michelle, can you take this one down and go to defendants 1247, please? And Your Honor, I'll move the admission. All right, I know there's no objection, 1247 in evidence. And Amber, this is another daily a mail online, and this is published on 24 June, updated on 25 June, 2020. And then if we can go further. And this one says, Depp's attorney, Adam Waldman said, we have reached the beginning of the end of Ms. Hurd's abuse hoax against Johnny Depp. Is this true or false? False. And why is it false? Because, unfortunately, all of this is real. And what I mentioned earlier about how preposterous it would have to be for this to be this elaborate hoax, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't fathom one day that that would actually be legitimately the position that he, through a lawyer, would take. Albeit online, where he could get away with it for some objection time. Objection calls for speculation. I sustain the objection. Right. Uh, and, and why why is this so absurd? Because Johnny and I lived this. We lived through this. I lived through this, and I narrowly survived it. But I survived it. And uh, you know, I have mountains of evidence, mountains of proof, and yet it. It, was a, it won't be good enough for people who are seeking to make money off of Johnny's success. Objection, Your Honor. Calls for fine. speculation. No, sustain the objection. That's fine. Okay. So I'm going to take you now to the damages that you've suffered as a result of these statements by Mr. Waldman on Mr. Depp's behalf. Please tell the jury how you were doing reputation. Objection. That's, that's a legal conclusion, Your Honor. I'm, I'm sorry. We move to strike. Counsel's testimony. Come forward. Uh, from the record, we'll disregard that question. All right, your next question. What was your understanding of on whose behalf Mr. Waldman was making those three statements? Objection, lack of foundation, calls for speculation. And if you want to approach again, yeah, that's, that's not what we just said here. I just want to... So we'll move forward to my other question here. How were you, please tell the jury, how were you doing reputationally before these three statements were made, beginning April 2020? April 8 was the first of them. Objection, Your Honor. I'm going to object on lack of foundation. She can talk about her reputation. Uh, overruled, I'll have. It took uh, hard work. Uh, it, it, you know. It took a lot of hard work um, on my part, but I was able to work, get my life back on track. Um, I was taking care of my 
you know, myself emotionally, uh, my career I was working really hard. I was able to star in a major success. Um, I worked on a TV series that I had been attached to for a very long time. I became uh, an ambassador for several nonprofits that I deeply care about. Uh, I was doing a lot of really, you know, it felt really good to be, be doing the social work and the charity work that I was doing. And I was also filming and working and planning on, um, I was awaiting a, a schedule from uh, Warner Brothers for Aquaman 2, the sequel. Um, and I had wrapped on that TV series I mentioned and I was awaiting to start doing publicity for it to promote it. And I had a, uh, a, a, a campaign, a global campaign, uh, as a spokesperson for a, a major beauty brand. So things were, you know, the trajectory was, was positive. So how, how did things change after these statements were made? I remember around the time... Um, um, unfortunately, I lost my mother uh, around, the, I mean, on the 1st of April. And I remember it was uh, when I was grieving her that I uh, got a, a call that I w should be expecting a script uh, for my role in Aquaman 2. Objection, Your Honor, hearsay. It's not offered to prove the truth of the uh, matter. Overruled. Um, so I was waiting. I was waiting a schedule uh, and a script for that. Feeling concerned that you know I wouldn't have enough time to to grieve before having to get back into work. I had a pre press schedule to promote the TV series I was doing, and uh, I was uh, shooting things for this uh, beauty brand. And then uh, I I remember at that time um, the beauty brand. Uh, had to suspend posting what I had what what I just shot for them because uh, they were getting bombarded. Uh, objection, Your Honor. This is hearsay. I'll sustain the objection. Okay. All right. They, so they they said no. I mean, they suspended what I had shot. Objection, Your Honor. Th that she can testify to that, Your Honor. She has to be able to testify. I'll, I'll, sus to I'll sustain the objection. Okay. Were you were you actively involved in campaigns for L'Oreal before these articles? I was. Were you actively involved in campaigns with L'Oreal after these articles? No. Were you with the stand? You were talking about the TV series. That was the stand, correct? Yes, the TV series that I had already completed. All right. And were you actively involved in publicity for the stand prior to these articles? Yes, I were was. You, were you actively involved in the publicity after these articles? No. Uh, shoots were canceled. Things okay. were canceled. Um, with respect to Aquaman 1, uh, Aquaman, two, Aquaman 2, you'd already starred in Aquaman 1, right? Just so we're, and they called it Aquaman at that time, but now there's an Aquaman 2, just right for... That's correct. Okay. So were you actively scheduling, uh, timing for filming and scripts for Aquaman 2 before these articles? Yes, I was. Were you actively scheduling after these articles? No, the, the communication stopped um, at that point. All right. I'm going to, uh, Michelle, can you bring up Defendant's Exhibit 1258? I'm going to show you what has been marked as Defendant's Exhibit 1258, it's dated September 21, 2015. Do you recognize this document? Yes. Okay, what is it? It is uh, the Justice League Aquaman contract. Okay, Your Honor, I'm going to move the admission of Defendant's Exhibit 1258. Any objection? Uh, yes, Your Honor, may we approach? Oh, sure. Yes, ma'am.
So, Amber, can you explain to me how that the contract structure was for Justice League and options? Just explain to the jury, please. It's um, structured like a, a three-picture option. You, I signed on to uh, do Justice League, where my character was introduced. Um, the fee is, you know, small relative to what it will become if and when you do the other options or movies in that um, under that umbrella. So it was the contract for Justice League, which could then become Justice League Two, or it could be Aquaman, or it could be some other. Uh, movie within the DC universe uh, and uh, the second picture ended up being Aquaman uh, and then the third picture Aquaman 2 each time it, it, the fee goes up but objection your honor this is calls for speculation lack of foundation overruled a lot as far as the contract is concerned that's what the contract says all right and if we go to page six So what was your fee going to be for Aquaman? And what was it for Aquaman? Uh, one million. Okay, and then there, was there also box office bonuses, opportunities? Yes, I believe. Okay. Yes, there are box office bonuses. Uh, okay. If it makes a certain amount in the box office, you, um, you get a, uh, a bonus. Okay, and, and it says picture number two. Uh, at the time you entered into the contract and, and uh, with uh, on Justice League, did they know what what the picture would be? No, as I mentioned before, when you do the contract, objection was... calls for speculation. All right, I'll sustain that objection. Okay, so ultimately, what was picture number two? Aquaman. All right, and then uh, what was it for picture number three? Aquaman two. Okay, and what was the fee under the option agreement at that time? Two million. Okay. Um, now, did you have contracts with L'Oreal? Yes, I did. Okay. And can you just describe for the jury what was involved with L'Oreal? You talked about being involved in campaigns and then not. Just, just explain that to them if you can. As a spokesperson, I'm just involved with the brand as a representative and uh, a certain amount of commitment you have to do throughout the year um, on social media and on red carpets promoting various products or um, you know causes they're advancing. Generally, it's just like a brand ambassadorship. Okay. And did you... Um, well, let's go, let's pull up 1262. And this is dated as of April 25, 2018, correct? That's correct. Wait, was that your first contract with L'Oreal? I believe so, yes. Okay. And did, was that for a term, a specific term? Yes, it was. Okay. Was it for two years? Yes, it says two-year contract, and that okay. sounds right. All right. And then I'm going to ask you to turn to 1264. And that's April 20, 2020. And what, if anything, did L'Oreal do with regard to extending your contract then? They extended it. Um, they chose to extend it with the option to kind of... All right. And did they extend it just an additional three months? Uh, that... If you look at paragraph one. Let's see. Yes, they did. Okay. And what, if any, work did you do for L'Oreal after these three statements were made? Uh... I have only been able to participate in, I believe, one live event that they also couldn't promote or use the material from because of... Objection, Your Honor. Calls for speculation. Right. I'll sustain the objection. Okay. Now let's go to 1265. And this is, as of November 15, 2021, this is another extension with L'Oreal, Correct. Yes, it is. And if you look at the, the second option term under paragraph one, it's an extension of 20 months. Is that correct? 
That is correct. Okay. And what, if any, work have you been able to do for L'Oreal since this ex since this contract? As I stated, I, I believe I've only done one in-person event with them, and they couldn't use the material. Okay. Now, I, I, let's talk about the stand for a minute. Let's pull up 1263. And this is dated July 3, 2019. Uh, and I believe you indicated that you had already filmed it by the time these statements were made in April and June of 2020. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. And what, if any, marketing opportunities were you participating in prior to those articles? Uh, we had um, appearances, talk show, um, press, the normal kind of group cast press junket, uh, promotional material, photo shoot. Um, and I was, uh, I had um, various publicity engagements lined up, like magazine, a magazine cover, um, that, that sort of thing, to promote the film. I mean, to promote the series. And what, if anything, were you able to do with marketing opportunities after the three articles were published? Uh, none. None. What if any uh, covers were you on after that for the stand? They pulled the offer for that, so none. Okay. And while, while we're on this uh, agreement, if you look at the second page, how, how much were you paid for the stand? It's at uh, 6C. $200,000. Oh, 200000 an episode. Okay. Now let's pull up Defendant's Exhibit 1266. Have you been able to get any work since that time? I have done uh, one small independent film. Okay, and tell the jury what that is. Uh, I shot a film in uh, Guatemala. It's a small independent, uh, meaning it doesn't have distribution or you know, yeah, it doesn't distribution or anything. It's a lower budget film that I had been attached to for many years called Into the Fire. Okay. And uh, 1266 has as of January 13, 2022. Do you see that? Yes. Okay. When did you actually film for this in Guatemala? Uh, March. Uh, I believe it was March of this year. And do you recall what your compensation was for that? I don't off the top of my head. I'm if you sorry. can look at ALH 17628, it's paragraph 6A. Oh, uh, 65,000. Okay. And have you participated in Aquaman 2? I have. And tell us about that. Uh, I had to fight to, I fought really hard to stay in the movie. They um, didn't want to include me in the film. Objection, Your Honor, hearsay. I'll sustain the objection. Okay. Um, did you ultimately, were you ultimately able to get to film in Aquaman 2? A very pared down version of that role, yes. Okay. What, if anything, changed in the script? They took away uh, a lot of. Objection, the, Your Honor. Hearsay. I think she can tell Lack of foundation. Right Overruled as the script. Go ahead. I um, was given a script and then given new versions of the script uh, that had taken away scenes that the. That, that had action in it, that had, that depicted um, my character and, uh, and another character uh, without giving any spoilers away. You know, they, they're two characters fighting with one another and they, they basically took a bunch out of my role. They didn't, yeah, they just removed a bunch out. And what, if any, leverage did you have to negotiate a higher salary beyond the $2 million? Objection, speculation. I, I'll sustain the objection. What, if any, effort did you make to negotiate 
a higher salary for your participation? I couldn't renegotiate my contract. And why not? Objection. This calls for hearsay and speculation. Do you know why? It's still the same objections, Your Honor. I'll sustain the objection. Um, yeah. All right. Amber, I'm going to ask you to describe to this jury the emotional uh, impact on you uh, of these three statements that we have talked about, these three counterclaim statements. Please describe how this has impacted you. Um, these statements are used over and over and over and over again online to reverberate, re-echo, uh, and re-energize. Objection, Your Honor. This is not responsive. Lack of foundation it's and hearsay. Right. She gets to give her consent for it. Well, her emotional, the question was, what your emotional impact of these statements? Okay. The impact it has on me is every time I look at it, uh, which is every day. I am set back. I have to relive it. I have to, to ha have my, the worst, most painful things I've ever gone through, painful memories I've ever had, the things I've narrowly survived at times, embarrassing, intimate details that I never wanted to be known never wanted to be public ever and to have them used every single day to call me a liar. I have to relive this every single day that I have to address those claims. Over and over again, the most intimate, embarrassing, deeply humiliating and personal things that I've survived are used against me every day. Over and over again, it's torture. It's so, I'm in so much pain emotionally. I'm, I'm, I just wanted him to leave me alone. I wanted to move on with my life. And he won't let me. By making statements like this, he won't let me. I have to be here today. I have to be reliving it every single time. He, with these statements, with these, these, these leaks, these comments, once again, makes me have to speak to the most horrifying things I've lived through. It's torture. It's torturous. I want you to have to do that. I want to move on with my life. I have a baby. I want to move on. I want to move on. I want Johnny to move on too. I don't want him to leave me alone. Thank you. I have no further questions. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, it's probably a good time to go ahead and take our afternoon recess based on that. So go ahead and uh, do not talk, discuss the case and uh, don't do any outside research. Okay, we'll see you in 15 minutes. Okay, thank you. Please, court is still in session. I need it to be quiet in the gallery. Thank you. Why don't we just make it 325 then? We'll come back at 325? Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you.
Thank you. All right, be seated. Cross examination. Good afternoon, Ms. Hurd. Good afternoon. Mr. Depp hasn't looked at you once this entire trial, has he? Not that I've noticed, no. You've looked at him, though, many times, haven't you? Yes, I have. You know exactly why Mr. Depp won't look back at you, don't you? I do. He promised you he would never, you would never see his eyes again. Isn't that true? I don't recall if he said that. One of the last times you ever saw Mr. Depp was when you met him in San Francisco in July of 2016, right? That was the second to last time I saw him, yes. And this was after you had publicly accused him of domestic violence. I got my restraining order before that, yes. Mm -hmm. And this is after you had obtained the domestic violence restraining order against him. That's correct. Let's please play Plaintiff's Exhibit 1229. Um, for the record, it's at 1101 through 1209. I'm going to ask that it be admitted into evidence. Any objection to 1229? Yes. All right, 1229, you want it entered in its entirety? Yes, please. Okay, 1229 entered in its entirety. Go ahead and play your section. Oh, Noah, hug will save it all. All this, all this, everything we just did. I just wanted to touch you. Really? After all the shit you just said? I just wanted to give you a hug. I just wanted to give you a hug. Yes, yes, please, please, please talk. Please stop. Please, I just wanted to hug you and say bye. I didn't want to get back. We did that last night. It's fine. That was good enough. No, because I'm nothing to you. And I will always be nothing to you. It's comic. Well, you're on my screen. Please just come out. No. No, dude, you're on my fucking arm. No, we'll never see each other again. Leave on the neck. Don't take my fucking glasses off. You don't like fucking looking at not my fucking eyes? You will not see my eyes again. That's you and Mr. Depp in that recording. That is. And this is from when you and Mr. Depp met in San Francisco in July of 2016, right? Yes, that's what it sounds like. That was in the hotel. We met once after that as well. This is after you publicly accused him of domestic abuse. Uh, yes, and got my TRO. Yeah. And he tells you, you will not see my eyes again, doesn't he? Uh, yes, he does in that recording. And he kept that promise, hasn't he? As far as I know, he cannot look at me. He won't look at you, right, Ms. Hurd? He can't. One of the first questions your counsel asked you on direct is, why are you here? Do you remember that? I do. Let's please play Plaintiff Exhibit 357A, which is already in evidence, Your Honor. And for the record, it's 2122 through 2140. See what the jury and judge think. Tell the world, Johnny. Tell them, Johnny Depp. I, Johnny Depp, man, I'm, I'm a victim too of domestic violence. And yes. I, you know, it's a fair fight. And see how many people believe or side with you. That's your voice on that recording, right? Yes, it is. And you were speaking with Mr. Depp? Yes. And you said to Mr. Depp, quote, you can tell, you can please tell people that it was a fair fight and see what the jury and the judge think. Tell the world, Johnny. Tell them, Johnny Depp, I, Johnny Depp, a man, a victim too of domestic violence, end quote. That's what you said, right? I was saying it to the man who beat me up, yes. I thought it was preposterous. And the man you beat up numerous times. <laughs> right, Ms. Hurd? I could never hurt Johnny. You're here in this courtroom because Mr. Depp finally told the world that he is a victim of domestic violence. I know that he is suing me um, and has sued other people or corporations 
that have said that as well. You didn't think he would tell the world he was a victim of domestic violence, did you? I found it hard to believe that he could or that he would do that, considering the relationship he and I had. I, I thought it would be crazy for him to do so, knowing what I know we lived through. Or, as you said to him in that recording, who was going to believe that Johnny Depp, a man, is a victim of domestic violence, right? With all due respect, I wasn't saying it because he's a man. I was saying it because he was a man who beat me up for five years. Mr. Depp is your victim, isn't he? <sighs> no, ma'am. And once he left you, you continued to abuse him publicly by calling him an abuser, didn't you? He is an abuser, and you can look either of us up online and figure out who's being abused online. Let's look at some of that. Mr. Depp wears rings on every finger, doesn't he, Miss Heard? That's my experience, yes. And they're not delicate rings, are they? Uh, no, they are not. Every one of his fingers is adorned, your words, big, chunky rings. Isn't that right? That's my experience of him. And Mr. Depp is always wearing rings, right, Miss Heard? That's my experience of him. And you've never known him not to wear these rings? Uh, that's my experience, is he normally wore rings, yes. So Mr. Depp was wearing these big, chunky rings on every finger, every incident of abuse you've described to this jury, right? I can't say for certain it was in every single incident. But you've never known him not to wear rings, right? In general, um, my experience with Johnny is that he, will, he wears rings almost all the time. Ms. Heard, do you recall giving testimony in a deposition in this matter in uh, January of this year? I do. Can we please play from your deposition, day two, 512, page 512, lines 11 through 15? You said he hit you and he wear, he, he was wearing rings, right, Ms. Heard? So he hit you with rings on every finger? I don't know if I've ever known Johnny to not wear rings. Yeah. <clears throat> Ms. Heard, you testified to an incident in March of 2013 where Mr. Depp hit you in the face multiple times. Do you recall that? That's correct. And you testified, quote, you don't know how many times he hit you in the face. That's correct. So Mr. Depp hit you in the face multiple times while he was wearing rings on this occasion, correct? Which occasion in March are you referencing? You weren't The specific. testimony that you gave on day 15 of this trial, March of 2013. You weren't specific as to the day. There were several incidents. The one where he hit you several times in the face. Uh, there were, there were, so, I'm sorry, just so I understand better, there were several incidents in March. Which one are you asking me about? The time that he hit you several times in the face wearing rings. Well, he pretty in much March always... March of 2013. Right. What are you asking me? I'm sorry. He was wearing rings on that occasion? I pretty much always knew him to wear rings. Okay, let's please pull up Defendant's Exhibit 170A, which is already in evidence, Your Honor. You testified that this is a picture you took after that incident, right, Ms. Heard? Yes, that was one where he grabbed me. And hit you in the face so many times that you don't remember. Isn't that correct? That's correct. And there's no injuries to your face in this picture, are there? Not that this picture shows. And there's no medical records reflecting that you sought treatment after this alleged incident either. I did not seek medical treatment at this time. So there's no medical records reflecting any injuries to your face after he hit you several times. I did not need to go to the doctor at the time. Despite hitting you several times that you lost count with rings on, your on his fingers. That's correct. I did not seek medical attention other than my therapist. You testified to another incident in March of 2013 
where Mr. Depp hit you while he was wearing a lot of rings. Do you remember that testimony? Yes, ma'am. And you testified you felt like your lip went through your teeth and it got a little blood on the wall. Yes, I remember that. There isn't a picture of you with injuries after that alleged incident, is there? I don't know if I've seen one. Um, I, I can't recall. There are a lot of pictures. You didn't produce any photographs after that alleged incident, did you, I, I don't know if I took one or if it's included. I'm not, I'm not quite sure which ones. You didn't show any pictures to this jury after describing that alleged incident that your teeth, your lip went into your teeth. You don't remember that, right? I, you didn't I show any pictures to this jury after describing that incident, right? I don't believe I've seen that picture admitted. That picture doesn't exist. I, I don't know which one you're talking about. There were, we have pictures from March 2013, yes. The only picture that you've produced and shown to this jury is the one that was just put up on the screen where you said he hit you multiple times in the face and you appear to have what is a bruise on your arm, correct? I believe this is the only picture that's in evidence right now. That's the only picture you've shown to this jury from March 2013, correct? I believe so. You testified about an incident in Russia on or about June 26, 2013. Do you remember that? Uh, yes, that's correct. You testified that Mr. Depp, quote, whacked you in the face. That's correct. And you went to the bathroom after that, right? I did. And then, according to your testimony, when you came out of the bathroom, Jerry Judge, Mr. Depp's security guard, who's passed away, pointed out that your nose was bleeding, right? He did that in the hallway. And you said you hadn't known that your nose was bleeding until Jerry Judge pointed it out to you? Yes, that's correct. I was unaware until he brought it up to me. I didn't see it when I was in the bathroom, but I wasn't looking. So, so it's your testimony that you went into the bathroom and didn't look in the mirror, which I assume was in the bathroom, to notice that your nose was bleeding? That's not why I went into the bathroom. I went into the bathroom um, crying. I, I don't even know if I paid attention to the mirror. I certainly didn't enough to notice any blood. And you didn't take any pictures of your bloody nose either, did you? I did not. But pictures were taken of you in Russia, though. Isn't that correct? Yes, that, that's correct. We had a press or a dinner. Um, let's please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 1248. Ms. Heard, this is a picture of you and Mr. Depp in Russia, correct? That's correct. I'm going to move to admit. All right, no objection. One, two, four, eight in evidence. You can publish. And this is you and Mr. Depp in Russia for the Lone Ranger premiere, correct? It was a dinner function, I believe, for in promotion of the movie. It wasn't the premiere, if I recall. You don't have any visible injuries to your face, do you? None that you can see. Um, let's look at Plaintiff's Exhibit 1249. This is a picture of you, isn't it, right? That's correct. I'm going to move to exhibit, okay. admit, right. exhibit 1249. All right, 1249 in evidence. This is also a picture from when you were in Russia for the Lone Ranger premiere, right? That is correct. And you have no visible injuries to your face, do you? None that you can see. Even though Mr. Depp whacked you in the face so hard that your nose bled? Uh, he did. While wearing chunky big rings, right? That's correct. You also testify that Mr. Depp, again, walked you in the face after the Met Gala in May of 2014, right? That is correct. You testified that you thought he hit you so hard he broke your nose. That's correct. You said your nose was, quote, swollen, discolored, red. That is correct. I took a picture of that. You testified you took a picture of your face after this. I did. But you didn't show that picture to the jury, did you? I would like to. But you didn't show it, did you? That's not up to me. We understand you were under an obligation to produce all photographs after any alleged incidents of violence, right, Ms. Hurd? I produced everything. 
You didn't produce any photographs after the Met Gala. I produced everything. You also understand that you're under an obligation to produce all medical records reflecting any injuries you allegedly sustained from Mr. Depp, correct? That's correct. And you haven't produced any pictures or any medical records reflecting a broken nose after the Met Gala in May of 2014, have you? I have given everything to my lawyers, everything. I've turned over literally everything that I have. Is it your testimony, Ms. Heard, that you sought medical treatment after Mr. Depp allegedly broke your nose after the Met Gala? Not after the Met Gala. I did not seek medical attention, no. You also attended an event after the Met Gala in May of 2014, didn't you? That is correct. And you went to the all-star comedy tribute to Don Rickles. That is correct. That was the next night after the Met Gala. That is correct. And there were pictures of you taken at this event. Yes. Let's pl please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 1252. This is a picture of you, Ms. Hurd? Yes, it is. At that event? Yes, it is. The night after the Met Gala? Yes, it is. The night after Mr. Depp allegedly broke your nose? Uh, I'm not sure if it was broken, for the record. But, yeah, you should see what it looked like underneath the makeup. He whacked you so hard in the face that you thought you had broken your nose. Exactly. Right. Um, permission to admit this photograph? All right, one, two, five, two. In evidence. <clears throat> So this is a picture of you, Mr. Depp, and Don Rickles, right? That is correct. Let's please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 1253. This is another picture from that evening, right, Ms. Hurd? Yes, it is. Permission to admit Exhibit 1253 and publish it. All right, so moved. One, two, five, three in evidence. This is a picture of you and Mr. Depp at the event the night after Mr. Depp allegedly whacked you in the face so hard you thought he had broken your nose. He did whack me in the face, and I did think it broke my nose. And this is you the night after? Yes, it is. Let's please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 1254. This is also a picture of you at the same event, correct, Ms. Hurd? That is correct. Move to admit Plaintiff's Exhibit 1254. All right, 1254 in evidence. You can publish. Thank you. And just to confirm now that the jury can see it, this is a picture of you at the same event, the night after Mr. Depp allegedly whacked you in the face so hard you thought he broke your nose. Uh, this is a picture of me um, after he did whack me in the face. The night after, right? Yes, it is. I believe it was the night after, yes. Your nose doesn't appear to be injured in any of these pictures, does it, Ms. Hurd? I'm wearing makeup. Your nose doesn't appear to be injured in any of these pictures, does it, Ms. Hurd? That's why I'm wearing makeup. Right. And makeup covers up swelling, right? Makeup will not cover up swelling. Ice will, though. Ice will cover up swelling? Ice reduces swelling. Normally, the swelling after that kind of injury is not as bad as you might imagine. And for me, it wasn't that bad. I have a picture of it underneath the makeup. That's how I know how to reference it. A picture you haven't produced or shown to this jury, right, Ms. Hurd? I have, so I've produced everything. But you haven't shown it to this jury? I would very much like to. It's not my job. Your Honor, may we approach? Yes, that's fine.
Ms. Hurd, you testified that in January of 2015, there was an incident in Tokyo before uh, Mr. Depp's Mordecai, the film Mordecai's premiere. Is that correct? That's correct. And you told this jury that on this occasion, Mr. Depp was kneeling on your back. That's correct, in the closet. And you also told this jury that you wore a backless dress to the Mordecai premiere that very same night. I did. And you testified that you were checking for bruises in the car on the way back, on the way to the event to make sure that there, there were, quote, no visible marks, right? I was checking on my phone um, after the event to see, to make sure that nothing, they couldn't see anything. Your testimony was that you were checking in the car on the way to the event to make sure that there were no marks on your back. Uh, perhaps I misspoke or I misunderstood. It was on the way back from it was after I was concerned, after, you know, concerned that there would be marks in any photographs since we were being photographed at Johnny's press event. And you didn't show this jury a picture of you in that backless dress, though, did you? Um, I don't know what you mean. I'm sorry. You didn't show this jury a picture of you at the Mordecai premiere wearing a backless dress, did you? I haven't had the opportunity to. Okay. I assume you have it. I do. Um, let's please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 1256. <coughs> this is a picture of you and Mr. Depp, or the back of you, at the Mordecai premiere in Tokyo, correct, Ms. Hurd? That is correct. Your Honor, I move to admit and publish this picture. All right, one, two, five, six in evidence. This is you in the backless dress at the Mordecai premiere in Tokyo, right? That is correct. You would agree that there are no bruises or visible marks on your back in this picture? No, not that I could see. I'll show you one other photo. If we could please have plaintiff's exhibit 1257. This is a front angle picture of you and Mr. Depp at that premiere, correct? That is correct. Move to admit plaintiff's exhibit 1257. Okay. All right, 1257. <laughs> I'll show you one more picture. Plaintiff's Exhibit 1258. And again, Ms. Hurd, this is you and Mr. Depp at the Mordecai premiere? Yes, it is. Move to admit Plaintiff's Exhibit 1258. No All right, 1258 in evidence. Publish. And that's the backless dress, right, Ms. Hurd? That is correct. You also told this jury about an incident in Australia in March of 2015. Yes, that's correct. You testified that after this alleged incident, you had cuts on your forearms, right? Yes, that's true. And you testified that you had cuts on the bottoms of your feet as well. Yes, that's true. And you testified that you had a bruise across your jaw from when Mr. Depp, quote, clocked you in the face, end quote. That's true. You didn't take any pictures of these injuries while you were in Australia, did you? I don't think, no, I don't think I took any pictures. You just took two pictures of Mr. Depp's writing on a mirror. Isn't that right? I believe so, yes. So you had your phone on you, right? At some point I did have my phone. And your iPad? I had my iPad, I believe. And you testified that you were also raped with a liquor bottle in Australia, right, Ms. Hurd? Yes. You testified you bled from your vagina as a result of that sexual assault. Yes. There aren't any medical records reflecting that you sought medical treatment for any of these injuries, are there? I did not seek uh, medical treatment after Australia, no. Not for the rape? No, I did not want to tell anyone. Not for the cuts? No. Not for the injuries to your face? I didn't need to. You also told the jury about an incident on December 15, 2015, right? Uh, where? I'm sorry. December 15, 2015. Yes, that's correct. 
<clears throat> you told this jury that after this incident, you had a broken nose. It certainly felt like it. Sir, do you recall giving testimony on day 16th in this trial? You were yes, on I oath, do. right? Yes. Did you have a transcript for the jury? Or did you hear what you Okay. All right, we'll get, we'll get it. I will do. Thank you, Judy. the witness, Your Honor. All right. Yes, ma'am. And would you like a copy? Scotch? Yes, please. Thank you. If I can please direct your attention, Ms. Hurd, to page of day 16, 4593, the jury trials transcript. Lines 8 through 13. On which page? I'm sorry. 4593. Yes. Starting on line 8. I thought I probably had a concussion and certainly thought, excuse me, strike that, let's start over. I thought I had. I thought I probably had a concussion and certainly that I had a broken nose. There was a blood everywhere, blood all over the pillows. My head was bleeding from the ripped out hair, chunks of hair on the floor, all over the place actually. So lines nine, that I had a broken nose. Do you re recall giving that testimony, Ms. Hurd? Yes, exactly. So you had a broken nose, right? That's absolutely what I thought. You told the jury that you had two black eyes after this incident, right? I did have two black eyes after that incident. And you testified that you also had a busted lip from when Mr. Depp punched you. That is uh, correct. From December, yes, that's correct. You testified that the lip wound kept reopening when you moved your mouth. That's correct. You also testified that you had bruising on your temple. That's correct and bruising on your chin. Correct. You also testified that your head was bleeding from where Mr. Depp ripped chunks of your hair out. I remember, yes. And that you had, quote, gross pussy, and quote, bruising around your temple. Uh, in my scalp, yeah. Now for this incident, you did take pictures. Correct? That's correct. And we will look at some of those in a minute, but I first want to talk to you about your appearance on the James Corden show. Sure. Can I close this? Sure. You appeared on the James Corden show the day after this alleged incident, right? I did. And that was December 16th, 2015? Yes, that's correct. Let's please pull up a clip of your appearance from that evening. If we could, Plaintiff's Exhibit 35. And for the record, we will only be playing a portion of this, so we will call it uh, Plaintiff's Exhibit 35A. All right, any objection? No. 35A in evidence. I grew up 
you know, in Texas, riding horses and... Oh, really? You know... Not shooting... a big ballet community out there in mm, Texas? No, 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 not so much. Shooting guns, yes, but ballet, no. <laughs> so I wanted to train for it, and there were some ballet sequences that, that um, we wanted to have the option to, to incorporate into the movie, so I trained forever, and I have two left feet. I'm the most klutzy person in the world, and I have no, um, what do you call Grace? Right. So I knew, Your Honor, I'm so sorry, but it's not published to the jury. If we may have it, oh, please sorry. published. Okay, thank you. Apologies. If we can please start that you over. Start it over, I'm sorry. Thank you, Your Honor. I grew up, you know, in Texas riding horses and... Oh, really? You know... Not shooting... a big ballet community out there in Texas? Mm, no, 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 not so much. Shooting guns, yes, but ballet, no. <laughs> So I wanted to train for it, and there were some ballet sequences that, that um, we wanted to have the option to, to incorporate into the movie, so I trained forever, and I have two left feet. I'm the most klutzy person in the world, and I have no, um, what do you call Grace? Right. So I knew, <laughs> I knew I had to train for it, and what they don't tell you, I mean, I, in, I crammed about three months of solid training in, and I'm kind of like working my way up from the floor and learning the technical aspect of ballet, and I've got these dances down technically perfectly, I'm learning all the movements, but the last thing we get to are the hands. <gasps> And I haven't yet got to that point, but everything else is working, and I'm acting it up on my face, and I'm selling the ballet. And I think I'm doing really good at this point, kind of nailing it. And so I send videos and, and images to my friends to like get encouragement and look for their support. And everyone shoots back, what's with the claw hand? <laughs> and I look and I realize like all that stress and fear of performing and doing this thing, it just kind of like, funneled out through the one thing that I hadn't yet, like, so what were your hands so doing? Would, so I'd be doing this amazing, you know, I'd be doing, a, like, a, a jump with a back bend, and uh -huh. you can see this, like, graceful falling, and my hands are like... <laughs> <laughs> and my face, though, is like, I've got that, you saw in the clip, like, this beautiful 1920s, you know, ma stage makeup on, and, ha like, ha flower crowns and all this stuff. Uh -huh. And then my hand, and my face, <laughs> and then my hands. <laughs> That was you on the James Corden show on December 16th, 2015, right, Ms. Heard? That was. Let's please pull up Plainfield's Exhibit 98. These are pictures of you on the James Corden show on December 16th, 2015, right, Ms. Heard? They look like freeze frames, um, like screen grabs, stills. They're not like a, it's not like a photo shoot, it doesn't seem. But on the James Corden show, correct? From that appearance, yes. Um, move to admit and publish Plaintiff's Exhibit 98. Any objection? Yeah. All right. And Mr. you could move the microphone and turn it on for you so Judy and I are having trouble hearing you. Sorry about that. All right, thank you. All right, 98 in evidence. Thank you. That's a photo of you opening your mouth on the right, right? That's correct. And again, an, a larger view of the same photo on the bottom. That's correct. With a split lip. You've seen pictures of it without makeup. Yes. So you had a split lip when you I were sure moving did. your mouth that way. I sure did. In those photographs. Absolutely. Okay. You did take pictures of your alleged injuries on, after December 15th, correct? And you showed those to the jury? I sure did, yes. Okay, let's please pull up Defendant's Exhibit 516, which is already in evidence. You testified that this is a picture of you after the incident on December 15th, 2015, right? It was. And if we could also please pull up Defendant's Exhibit 517, which is also in evidence. That's fine. Thank you, Your Honor. This is also a picture of you after the incident on December 15th, 2015. That's correct. If we could please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 409, which is already in evidence.
These pictures ended up in People magazine in June of 2016. Isn't that right, Ms. Hurd? That's correct. You gave these pictures to People magazine after you publicly accused Mr. Depp of domestic abuse, didn't you? I didn't personally, know. This was you protecting Mr. Depp after you got the restraining order against him, isn't it? No, this is him calling me a liar and me forcing to prove it, as I mentioned to you earlier. So you did give these pictures to People magazine? No, I gave these um, pictures actually to my lawyers and my representatives at the time. Um, so it's your testimony, Ms. Heard, that your lawyers and representatives gave these pictures of their client to People magazine in the middle of a contentious divorce? I certainly did not personally give it, no. You also have a medical record from after the December 15th, 2015 incident, don't you? A partial one, yes. You went to see Dr. Kipper's office a couple days later. That's right. He wasn't in the office. Can we please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 47, which is already in evidence? This is your medical record for December 17th, 2015, isn't it, Ms. Hurd? That's correct. And this record doesn't document any physical injuries on you, does it? I, I, I don't think so, no. I, I don't think I spoke to Kipper. I didn't speak to Kipper um, that day. And but you went I didn't, to uh, Dr. Kipper's office and were seen, correct? I went to, Doctor's Kipper, went to Dr. Kipper's office for a concussion check. Right. Okay. And this medical record is from that visit, correct? Partially, yes. Scroll down, please, if we could. The signature, Kipper, down below. This is the entirety of the medical record. Right, Ms. Hurd? Yes, what I meant by partial is I didn't talk about what happened to me. I didn't get into my injuries. I didn't get into what happened or um, ask for anything other than should I get some sort of scan done. Right, but this record doesn't document any physical injuries on you, does it? Uh, I'd have to read it in full, but I, I don't know. Well, let's do that. If we could please go... Well, under skin, on the second page, it reads, intact, normal color, moisture, hair distribution, texture, turgor, no signs of... Oh, this is going to be hard. Cyanosis? Motling jaundice. It also says I'm a well-nourished male. Right. I have no idea what that means. I, I think this medical record's missing a lot of things. Yeah, but it doesn't document any physical injuries. It doesn't seem to be documenting anything. Probably because there was nothing to document, right, Ms. Hurd? I disagree with you on that. You don't have any medical records reflecting that you broke your nose during your relationship with Mr. Depp, do you? Uh, I saw an ENT after my relationship ended. And you saw an ENT, it's your testimony under oath that you saw an ENT for broken noses that you sustained as a result of Mr. Depp? No, but the ENT told me I sustained objection. multiple fractures. No, I'm going to move to strike. I'll honor. sustain the objection. I'll move to strike. Okay, thank you. So again, just to try my question, there's no medical records reflecting that you broke your nose during your relationship with Mr. Depp. Is there a misheard? I don't know what made it in evidence, but I do know that I documented that um, visit and that everything was given to my attorneys. Ms. Heard, you never went to see any doctor or surgeon to treat a broken nose during your relationship with Mr. Depp. Yes or no? I never sought treatment for broken nose while I was with Johnny or after you were with Mr. Depp, as a result of any injuries you sustained as a result of Mr. Depp? Afterwards, yes, I did. And you didn't produce those medical records in this case? I don't object, Your Honor. She did. I did. Oh, I, I don't know. All right. They have not been produced, Your Yet Honor. They have not only All right, been if you would produced. Do, uh, come on, approach.
don't have any medical records reflecting that you required any dental work during your relationship with Mr. Depp, do you? Uh, I don't know. I don't, rec I don't recall. You don't recall one way or another seeking dental care for any injuries you allegedly sustained? Uh, you asked me about if I had produced records or if I had records, that's a different question. Did you ever see a dentist or an oral surgeon as yeah. a result of any injuries you sustained with Mr. Depp? Not about any injury I had from Johnny, no. And you don't have any medical records reflecting that you required any reconstructive work during your relationship with Mr. Depp, do you? I never required reconstructive work, so there would be no records. What you do have, Ms. Hurd, are pictures of Mr. Depp sleeping, though, right? The jury saw a lot of those. Yes. Okay. Ms. Hurd, let's take a look at Defendant's Exhibit 1090, which is already in evidence. You took this photograph, right, Ms. Hurd? That's correct. And you testified that this was taken in Tokyo in July of 2013, correct? Yes. So you decided to take a picture of Mr. Depp asleep on the floor? He was passed out. That's a yes. And I took a picture of him because he uh, wouldn't remember. He claimed he didn't pass out that way. And sometimes security would carry him like a baby into bed, get him changed, and he would be none the wiser. So I started taking pictures of it so that he knew that it was real, that it had gotten this bad. Let's take a look at Defendant's Exhibit 1091, which is already in evidence. You took this picture as well. Yes. And this is a picture that was taken in the Bahamas, right? It's one of them, yes. And this is a picture of Mr. Depp taking a nap on his tropical island? I believe he was on the nod, but as he would say. Sleeping on the nod they're, on his island? They're very different, in my opinion. And okay. yes, he is on the island. Right. On vacation? Uh, we were on vacation, yes. Okay. Let's also take a look at Defendant's Exhibit 1092, which is also in evidence. You also took this picture, right, Ms. Hurd? That's correct. I did. And this is another picture of Mr. Depp asleep in a chair? No, he was um, nodding off. Uh, sleep is different. When you're nodding off, you're high on drugs, didn't even feel the cigarette in his hand that had you know, been burning on his leg. Uh, it was cause for alarm for me, naturally, um, because I cared about him. Uh, it's your testimony under oath that Mr. Depp is holding a cigarette in this picture? He had been. seem to really like taking pictures of Mr. Depp while he's sleeping, don't you? I hated it. I hated it. Let's look at Defendant's Exhibit 1094, which is also in evidence. You took this picture of Mr. Depp as well, didn't you? I did. You decided to take a picture of Mr. Depp asleep with ice cream spilled all over him, right? He was nodding off, and um, I was worried about how bad the medications and the medication change and the drug use had gotten where he wouldn't even feel ice cream or a lit cigarette on him and it scared me. So you really. took a picture of it? Yes, I, um, I wanted him to get help and Johnny's surrounded by enablers who clean up after him. Objection, and protect Your Honor, him. I'm going to move to strike everything after yes that she took this picture. It's still responsive here on it. The question was, did you take this picture? All right, I'll sustain the objection. Thank you, Your Honor. This isn't a very flattering picture of Mr. Depp, is it? No, it's not. You wouldn't agree that this is, or you would agree with me that this is an embarrassing scene, right? Yes, I think it's a part of getting help, is looking at it, seeing it. But you sent this picture to one of your friends, didn't you? Uh, I don't recall. Um, if we could please pull up Defendant's Exhibit 252. We'll only be looking at the portion of this document. So if we could please call it Defendant's Exhibit 252A. Mm -hmm. 
2A. And for ease, we've gone ahead and redacted it. Yes, I was asking for support. That's correct. There's no question yet, Ms. Hurd. So directing your attention, I'm going to move to admit um, exhibit 252A. Any objection? Any objection, Ms. Bredo? Could you turn turn on could you turn on your microphone again? Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, I need to see it first because okay. I don't know what they redacted. Two five two. We redacted the identifiers and anything that's not misheard. Up or down, text right. messages. Consistent with hearsay. Maybe we approach. Okay. Mr. does this refresh your recollection that you did, in fact, send this picture to your friend, Rocky Pennington? Yes, I did. And you sent it to her on August 7th, 2014 at 11.24 p.m., correct? That is correct. So you sent Ms. Pennington this picture of Mr. Depp with ice cream spilled on him, right? That is correct. And you wrote, quote, this is what I've been dealing with, end quote. Did I read that right? You did read that right. That's correct. And this is you protecting Mr. Depp? That is me getting support from my best friend. This is you supporting Mr. Depp? This is me getting support from my best friend. I also need support. You weren't afraid the, the monster would get upset that you took this picture? This was um, opiate Johnny. This is a uh, different version of him. This is opiate on the nod, Johnny. And you weren't afraid that opiate Johnny or the monster, as you called him, would get upset that you sent this picture to your friend? Well, he's all of those things. He, of course he could get upset. Of course that's scary to me, of course. But didn't stop you from sending this picture to your friend, did it? Why would it? Mr. 
Mr. Depp's hand, right hand, is in his pocket, right, Ms. Hurd? In this yes, picture? that's correct. You also showed this jury pictures of cocaine. Do you recall that? Yes, that's correct. Let's please take a look at one of those. If we could please pull up Defendant's Exhibit 167A, which is already in evidence. Directing your attention, Ms. Heard, to a photograph. This is a photograph you took in March of 2013, right? That is correct. And this was taken at your apartment in Orange? Yes. And this is your breakfast table? That is correct. And it's your testimony that Mr. Depp left this breakfast table just the way you took it? That is correct. So this is what the table looked like after Mr. Depp had been doing cocaine? Uh, well, clearly he has yet to snort these lines. There are four lines of cocaine on this table, right, Ms. Heard? In this picture, I see four lines. There isn't any cocaine residue around those lines, right? Uh, I, not that I can tell, no. Doesn't really look like anyone's been doing cocaine off that table, does it? With all due respect, I'm not sure you know how that works. I'm asking if you do. You've testified you've done cocaine. I have. Doesn't really look like Mr. Depp or anyone was doing cocaine off that table, does it? Uh, I beg to differ with you on that. When you snort cocaine, typically it goes into your nose. And then it doesn't stay residue. on the table. There's residue from that cocaine when your lips and nose touch the table, right? Well, the tampon applicator next to um, the credit, I mean, um, driver's license that you see is a device that uh, I believe my sister had taught him to use in order to put the cocaine uh, in your nose. Mr. Depp is a pretty heavy smoker, right? He is. And, and that's a cigarette in the ashtray in the back there? Um, back right? Yes, it looks like one of his hand rolls. There's no other cigarettes in that ashtray, are there? I see one cigarette. The one that's not smoked? That's correct. There's no ash in that ashtray either, is there? Uh, not that I can tell in this picture. It's pretty clean. In this picture, it looks like it, yes. It's a pretty neat table, wouldn't you agree? Um, depends on what you would call neat, I suppose. And you sent this picture to your friend, Rocky Pennington, as well, didn't you? I sure did. And when you sent it, you said, quote, look at my morning, or something like that. Is that right? Yay for mornings. So you have a habit of sending stage photographs to your friend, Rocky, don't you? I had a habit of communicating with my best friend about what was going on in my life. You don't have any pictures of Mr. Depp actually consuming cocaine, do you? I don't think I have a picture of him mid-snort. No. You don't even have any pictures of Mr. Depp with cocaine. What do you mean by that? Holding cocaine, standing next to cocaine? Um, Sitting next to cocaine? I don't know. I don't know. Well, you haven't shown any of those pictures like that to the jury, have you? I don't know. I, no, I haven't. And you were never able to catch Mr. Depp with cocaine on film either, were you? I never tried. But you were able to catch him sleeping, right? Uh, I have seen him pass out in all sorts of places, yes. And you also captured a video of Mr. Depp in the kitchen that was played again for this jury today, uh, beating up some cabinets. Do you recall that? Sorry, say that again? You recall capturing Mr. Depp in the kitchen of one of his homes, beating up some cabinets? Yes. Slamming things around, yes. So you took that video of Mr. Depp in the kitchen, right? I did. I did. And you took it on one of your iPad devices? I took it on my iPad. 
You were deposed in August of 2016 in connection with your divorce proceedings from Mr. Depp, right? That is correct. And you will recall that the video of Mr. Depp in the kitchen was released online the day before your deposition in August of 2016, don't you? That's correct. You're the one who released that video. Incorrect. Isn't that true? That's incorrect. I flew in from another place at the time. I remember learning about it when I landed. So it's just a coincidence that the video you took of Mr. Depp was released the day before you were deposed in connection with your divorce from Mr. Depp. I absolutely had nothing to do with that. I wouldn't even know how to do something like that. You settled your divorce from Mr. Depp in August of 2016, right? That sounds right. And in connection with that settlement, you received $7 million from Mr. Depp, true? That's correct. And then 6.8, you exactly. Your settlement amount was $7 million. That's correct. Okay. And then you released a statement in which you claimed you would be donating the entire $7 million to charity, right? That's correct. You stated you would be donating half of the $7 million to the ACLU. That's correct. And you would be donating the other half to Children's Hospital of Los Angeles. That is correct. And you also stated, with respect to the $7 million divorce settlement, that money played no role except for the extent that you could donate the money to charity. Yes, that's correct. If we could please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 1259. This is an article entitled, Amber Heard Donates Johnny Depp Divorce Settlement to Charity. Read her statement in full. Is that correct? That's what the title says, yes. Directing your attention to the portion on the second page where it says, quote, read the statement below. Is that the statement you released, Ms. Heard? That is correct. Your Honor, I move to admit the statement and the article as redacted. Objection, hearsay. It's her statement. It, it, this is not her statement. This is some. This she is, just testified, Your Honor, that it's her it's statement. Her statement. Uh, may I see the full? Uh, Everything else is redacted. Um, okay, then I have no objection. All right, one, two, five, nine in evidence as redacted. The statement reads. As described in the restraining order and divorce settlement, money played no role for me personally and never has, except to the extent that I could donate it to charity and in doing so, hopefully help those less able to defend themselves. As reported in the media, the amount received in the divorce was $7 million and $7 million is being donated. This is over and above any funds that I have given away in the past and will continue to give away in the future. Did I read that correctly? That is correct. I don't remember that last line, but I have no, it doesn't stand out to me as wrong. There's nothing inaccurate in the statement. Not that I recognize, no. Mr. Depp donated $100,000 of the divorce settlement directly to the ACLU, is that right? Right at the beginning of the divorce settlement, he um, donated 100000 to each charity on my behalf or towards my contribution. So $100,000 to each to the ACLU and to the Children's Hospital. And in response, you publicly demanded that Mr. Depp pay the divorce settlement directly to you instead of the charities, right? That was always the agreement actually is for him to pay me directly. It was not his money as per the settlement agreement to give away and reap a tax benefit from. I said if he wants to do it and give to charity all of a sudden, then he should pay the correct amount and not try to get a big tax break for it. So effectively for his tax bracket, he should be paying double that amount to the charity directly. And if he wanted to pay the charity directly, he could. He could do that was fine with me, but he would need to pay the adjusted amount. Ultimately, the rest of the $7 million divorce settlement was paid directly to you, right? Over time, yes. And Mr. Depp didn't end up paying the rest of the $7 million divorce settlement directly to the charities you identified. That is correct. He paid the installments to me. You stopped that from happening, didn't you? 
I don't understand what your question is. I'm sorry. You stopped Mr. Depp from paying the charities that you had named directly. That is incorrect. I said if you want to pay the charities directly, pay the adjusted amount or pay as per our agreement in the settlement or in the divorce as per our agreement. You also publicly... And he chose to do the former, not the latter. I mean, the other way around. You also publicly stated that the $7 million divorce settlement should be paid to the charities immediately in full, right? If he wanted to pay it in the way that he was suggesting, yes. And, and you said publicly that the payments to the charities should not be drawn out over many years, right? I said that, I don't, I don't recall the exact words that I used, but basically that he shouldn't use this as an, a novel interest in getting a tax break, that if he wanted to do that and not pay me the settlement, that was fine, but he would have to pay the adjusted amount and not make it you know, a, a commitment he would not fulfill or try to avoid in some other way. And that's because you wanted the entire world to think that you were donating every penny of the $7 million divorce settlement as soon as you received it from Mr. Depp. Isn't that right? No, I was going to be receiving it in installments and I would be paying in installments the donations. In fact, you released a statement in response to Mr. Depp's $100,000 donations to the ACLU and CHLA, didn't you? I don't recall. Let's see if we can refresh your recollection. If we could please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 1260. This is an article entitled Amber Heard and Johnny Depp Row Over Divorce Donations. And if I could direct your attention to where it says, I believe it's on the second page. Her spokeswoman responded in a statement. The language Objection. that follows the statement you Objection, released. Objection, hearsay, right. spokeswoman, it's not her. Right. A spokesperson is an exception, Your Honor. You want to come forward? You released a statement Your through... Honor, may we approach again? Okay. Before we ask the next question, I'll just hand you a copy of this one. That's why I'm safe. Okay. That's exactly what I said. Your Honor, would you like to see one as well? No, I, that's all right. I, that's fine. Thank okay. you. Could you please turn your microphone on? I'm sorry, it was very hot. I'm sorry. Sometimes my sir, um, Your Honor, they gave me a redacted, but I don't have the unredacted to be able I, to see the full document. I plan to admit it or ask that it be admitted in redacted form. I'm taking away any hearsay, and I'm just trying to lay the foundation but, that this is a statement she released through a spokesperson. How would I know whether there's more to it that shouldn't be redacted, Your Honor, if I don't see the full document? Your 
Your Honor, the witness can testify as to whether this is a full statement or not. The, the witness can't do it. We, we have the right to be able to see the document. All right. Do you have a document that's not redacted? We can pull it up on our computers. Okay. Just give us a moment, Your Honor. All right. I can represent this is the full statement that's oh. reported. Okay. Give her an opportunity to look at the unredacted one. Thank you. May I approach? <laughs> yes. So, Your Honor, can we have a copy of this? Yeah, I'm, you, you can get a copy of that uh, Happily, la happen. later later yes. today. Okay. Right. right. I mean, I, I think she should be giving us copies of the full. Well, I understand. But we'll we'll take care of that. But okay. As of um, right now, can we continue? We can, Your Honor, but I have an objection because of uh, there's some quotation marks missing. Okay. Come forward. All right. So directing your attention, Ms. Hurd, where it says her spokeswoman responded in a statement. Your the Honor, language that follows. Your Honor, again, she can't read it. She has to show the it to The language her. that follows. Right. If you want to lay a foundation this, to that. Go ahead. You released a statement after Mr. Depp donated $100,000 to the ACLU and $100,000 to CHLA, correct, Ms. Hurd? I think so, yes. Okay. And the language that follows is the statement you released in response to Mr. Depp's donations, right? I don't know if this is this the official statement. I really, I have no idea. The statement that reads, starts Objection, at Your Honor. Amber Hurd. Yeah. That's the only thing I'm gonna say. Would you please read that to yourself, Ms. Hurd? Yes. Okay. Did you read all the way to the very bottom where the last word is supported? Yes. Okay. That's a statement you released through your spokeswoman after Mr. Depp made the donations to the CHLA and the ACLU. Correct, Ms. Hurd? I do not recall exactly what my statement was. 
I don't disagree with anything in the statement, but I just simply don't recall what the statement was we released. Is there anything inaccurate in that statement, Ms. Hurd? No. Okay. I'm going to move to admit. Objection, Your Honor, lack of foundation. I'll overrule the objection, 12260 in evidence over objection. Thank you, Your Honor. Statement reads, Amber Hurd appreciates Johnny Depp's novel interest in supporting two of her favorite charities the ACLU, American Civil Liberties Union for Domestic Violence, and the Children's Hospital of Los Angeles. This is great and unexpected news. And it continues. However, if Johnny wishes to change the settlement agreement, we must insist that he honor the full amount by donating $14 million to charity, which, after accounting for his tax deduction, is equal to his $7 million payment obligation to Amber. And it continues. We would also insist that the full amount be paid immediately and not drawn out over many years. Anything less would be a transparent attempt by Johnny's counsel, Laura Wasser, and Patty Glazer to reduce their client's true payment by half under the guise of newfound concern for charities that he has never previously supported, end quote. Did I read that correctly? Yes. Thank you. After this, you kept commenting about the donation of your divorce settlement, right? Uh, I don't know what you mean by that. Okay. You spoke about donating your divorce settlement on a Danish TV show, correct? Uh, I believe I said I had... Um, I, I believe I said I donated it to charity, but it was already printed or ar already commented on and stated in the press. I had already released that information in the press. I think I just confirmed it on that show. You appeared on a show called RTL Late Night, right? I don't recall it, what show it was. If we could please play Plaintiff's Exhibit 346, which is a portion of your appearance on this program. And we would ask that it be moved into evidence and any, ask for permission objection? to publish it. Honor, it contains, it has hearsay, it contains other communications with other individuals. Your Honor, if we may approach okay. very briefly.
So if we could please play and publish to the jury plaintiff's exhibit 346. Uh, 346 in evidence. Go ahead. There, there, and actually were all kinds of accusations uh, flying your way when you said all this. And then there was a divorce settlement. You got $7 million. People were saying this is all about the money. But then you did something that... Uh, twisted that whole argument. What did you do with that money? Seven million dollars in total was donated to, I split it between the ACLU and Children's Hospital of Los Angeles. ACLU is a human rights organization. Sorry, ACLU the, uh, is a prominent um, uh, organization, nonprofit organization in the United States. Yeah. It's called the American right. Civil Liberties Union, and they work on behalf of marginalized communities uh, on the ground and in legislative reform. Right. And well, more power to you because that's that's something that I've never I heard. I wanted of, uh, nothing. This interview was in October of 2018, right, Ms. Heard? I don't recall when it was. It was in 2018, right, Ms. Heard? I don't remember when this was done. This was after you had received the full $7 million of your divorce settlement for Mr. Depp, wasn't it? Again, without knowing when it was recorded, I have no idea. The $7 million divorce settlement was paid to you in full by February of 2018, right? That's correct. Let's take a look at Defendant's Exhibit 1458, which is already in evidence. This is the deal point memorandum from your divorce settlement, right, Ms. Hurd? Yes, that's what it looks like. And if we go down to the bottom of page four, there's a heading labeled Equalization payment, do you see that? Yes. And underneath that, it outlines a payment schedule for the divorce payments, correct? Uh, yes. Well, it begins to, and if we go on page, page five. So the first payment is scheduled for August 31st, 2016, and that's 200,000, correct? Yes, that is correct. Mr. Depp's accountant, Edward White, testified that he made that payment directly you got to turn on your microphone, Ms. Berderhoff. I'm not going to hear you. Objection to her testifying to what Mr. White testified to. That's okay. It's a, actually, it, he literally testified to it in right. court. I'll, I'll overrule the objection. Go Thank ahead. you, Your Honor. Mr. Depp's accountant, Edward White, testified that he made the payment directly to the ACLU and CHLA, correct? I believe so, yes. And then the rest of the payments were all made to you, weren't they? That is correct. And the final payment of $2.3 million is on February 1st, 2018, right? The final payment, yes. And you were here in court when Mr. White testified that the payments were all made on I'm schedule. Gonna, I'm going to object to her testifying to what Mr. White testified to. I'll overrule the objection. Go ahead. Thank you, Your Honor. And you were here in court when Mr. White testified that the payments were all made on schedule, right? I don't believe they were. Uh, he might have That's testified to That's not my question, Ms. Heard. My question was, you were here in court when Mr. White testified under oath that all the payments were made on schedule. I was here every day in court. I, I heard his testimony, yes. Okay. So back to October of 2018, this was before Mr. Depp sued you for defamation, correct? Yes, that's correct. He didn't sue you until after the op-ed came out in December of 2018, right? He sued me in 2019. And the op-ed came out in December of 2018. That is correct. So in October of 2018, you had received your entire $7 million divorce settlement. You would that, agree with me? That is correct. Okay. And you hadn't yet been sued by Mr. Depp? This is uh, October, correct. So in this October 2018 interview, you said that you had, quote, donated, end quote, your entire divorce settlement to charity, right? That's correct. And in fact, your exact words were, quote, seven million in total was donated to, I split it between the ACLU 
and the Children's Hospital of Los Angeles, end quote. Right? That's, that's correct. I made that statement as soon as I got a divorce and we reached the settlement. That's when I pledged it, right then. And you say this because you, quote, wanted nothing, end quote. That is correct. But you hadn't donated your entitled, entire $7 million settlement to charity at that point, had you? That's incorrect. Sitting here today, Ms. Hurd, you still haven't donated the $7 million divorce settlement to charity. Isn't that right? Incorrect. I pledged the entirety no, of Ms. the Heard, settlement, that, $7 that's million that's not my to charity, question. and I, Heard, I intend to fulfill Heard, those obligations. Heard, that's not my question. Please, what was try your to question? answer my question. Sitting here today, you have not donated the $7 million, donated, not pledged, donated, the seven million dollars divorce settlement to charity. I use pledge and donation synonymous with one another. They, but I don't, Miss Hurd. I don't use it synonymously. That's how donations are paid, Miss Hurd. Respectfully, that's not my question. As of today, you have not paid three point five million dollars of your own money to the ACLU. Yes or no? I have not yet. And as of today, you have not paid $3.5 million of your own money to the Children's Hospital of Los Angeles, correct? I have not yet. Johnny sued me. So as of today, you have not donated, paid $7 million of your divorce settlement to charity, right? I have not been able to fulfill those, uh, those uh, obligations yet. And that's because you did want something, didn't you? I didn't want anything and I didn't get anything. You wanted Mr. Depp's money. Didn't get it, wasn't interested in it. I loved Johnny, that's why I was with him. You wanted praise for donating the money, right? That's incorrect. You wanted good press. In general, one <laughs> does want good press, yes. You wanted to seem altruistic publicly. Wasn't my interest. Um, my interest is uh, in my name and clearing my name and at the time, I was being called a liar and my motives were being questioned. I did see it as important to clear that up. I wanted to make a statement to make sure that there was not any doubt that I couldn't be labeled these things just because Johnny was a bigger star and had more publicity reach. You wanted to remind everyone of your claims of domestic violence against Mr. Depp, right? No, I wanted to move on with my life. You wanted to make those claims seem believable. They are believable. They you were believable. You wanted them to be seen, you wanted to be seen, excuse me, as a noble victim of domestic violence, didn't I have you? never, never wanted to be seen as a victim. Nor have you, I ever called myself one. You testified under oath that, quote, the entirety of your divorce settlement was donated to charity, end quote, didn't you? That's correct. I pledged the entirety. No. Ms. Heard, my questions. Your counsel will have time to redirect you after. You testified under oath, quote, the entirety of your divorce settlement was donated to charity, end quote. That is correct. I pledged the entirety. I'm going to move to strike everything after yes. Uh, all right. No. Ms. Hurt, this uh, is it, really no. inappropriate. I, I'll sustain the objection and we'll just move forward. Thank you. Let's move forward. Next Thank question. You. Under oath, that statement wasn't true, was it, Ms. Hurd? I'm sorry, I don't follow your question. Sorry. You testified under oath, quote, the entirety of my divorce settlement was donated to charity, end quote. That statement wasn't true. It is true. I pledged the entirety to charity. The statement. When you say you buy a house, you don't pay Ms. for the Heard, entire house Heard, at one time. You pay it I'm over not asking, time. Ms. Heard. All right, next question, please. Thank you. That statement isn't true today, as you sit here today, is it? It is true. I pledged the entirety. But to you didn't charity. donate it. Unfortunately. You didn't donate it. It's a yes or no. I haven't been able to obligate, I mean, to fulfill those So that's a no, right, Ms. Heard? I, am, I made the pledge. I want to be very clear. I pledged the entirety. I haven't been able to fulfill those pledges because I've been sued. You had all of the $7 million 
for 13 months before Mr. Depp sued you and you chose not to pay it to the charities you pledged it to. Is that I, correct, Ms. I Hart? disagree with your characterization of that. Let's look at your sworn testimony from the UK. All right, yes, ma'am. Thank you. Ms. Vasquez, do you want me to close the shades? That would be okay. wonderful. <laughs> just, there's this light coming across. So I appreciate that. It's a probably helpful. good light. <laughs> Thank you, Your Honor. All right. This is uh, your third witness statement that you submitted in the UK action, right, Ms. Hurd? Correct. And this statement was made under oath, true? That is true. I'm directing your attention to the last page of that statement. That's your signature, right? Yes, it is. So you made this sworn statement on February 26, 2020. That's correct. And directing your attention to paragraph four, It says, quote, I remained financially independent from him the whole time we were together, and the entire amount of my divorce settlement was donated to charity, end quote. That is correct. Did I read that correctly? Yes, you did. The him you were referring to is Mr. Depp. That is correct. Most of the money that was donated to the ACLU and CHLA in your name came from someone else. Isn't that right? I don't know what you mean by most of. Well, at least $500,000 that was donated to the ACLU in your name wasn't paid by you, right? Uh, I believe Elon made a donation in my honor on one of the years. Yeah, and it didn't come out of your $7 million divorce settlement, right? No, nor did it count towards my pledge and at least $500,000 that was donated to the Children's Hospital of Los Angeles in your name wasn't paid by you either. Right, those were made at the same time. And it didn't come out of your $7 million divorce settlement. Nor did it count to my 3.5 obligation. Those $500,000 payments came from your new boyfriend, Elon Musk, right? Uh, he, I don't know if he was a new boyfriend at the time. You got him to pay part of what you promised to these two charities, didn't you? Incorrect because you wanted to keep at least some of the $7 million divorce settlement for yourself, right? You're very wrong about that. I think this, if your honor's okay, fine, you said this is a good stopping a breaking point. point. Okay, that's yeah. fine. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll stop here for the evening. Remember tonight, do not do any outside research and do not discuss the case with anybody. I know these days are a little longer, and I appreciate your patience and uh, your, your uh, taking care of everything here. Please take care of yourself tonight, okay? And we'll see you in the morning at 9 a.m. And again, again, Ms. Hurd, since you're still uh, on the witness stand, please do not discuss your testimony with anybody to include your attorneys, okay? All right, 9 o'clock tomorrow then? All right, we'll see you at 9 o'clock. Thank you. All right.